shouldn't open that now. It's not your birthday till Monday. Yeah, well, it's not really a birthday present, is it? It's more of a way tired on buying his way out of trouble. Why, me? Must be more scared than me than I thought. Have you seen what he's bought me? Oh, flipping that. You'll have to give it him back, Kev. You can't let him go spending that much on you. No, yeah, no, trouble is. Don't want to hurt his feelings, do I? Yeah, I suppose so. Right, how do I look? Ooh, great. Because I don't want to dress too casual, but I don't want to overdo it either. Well, you look fine. What do you reckon, Rosie? Yeah. I don't feel like breakfast. All right, love. What's up with her? I thought she'd be chuffed I might not be a dinner lady at her school. Maybe she don't want me to go back to work. Hey, stop worrying about Rosa. I'll look after her. You concentrate on your big day. Dead nervous, Kev. I really want this job at the bookies. If I could just clear all my debts, it'd be such a relief. So, you're going to walk it? I hope so. I ain't working on Saturdays. Me and Toya were going to hit the shops today and all. Well, never mind. Just think of the overtime and that big fat bonus. You can go on a huge shopping spree then. Yeah, I suppose. Are you all right, babe? Yeah, why? Well, you just seem a bit quiet, that's so. all. Is everything all right at the shop? Yeah, it's brilliant. It's all right. Oh, are you still speaking to us two then? Yeah, of course I am. I thought you might be busy hobnobbing with the in crowd. Hey, so who do you reckon you'll have in today then? <laughs> well, I don't know. Supermodel, some famous actor. Why? Just don't want me to keep you posted. <laughs> See you, baby. See you later. Oh, I wish I had a job like that. Yeah, I bet Karen does and all. Steve! Couldn't run us into town, could you, mate? Yeah, mate, I'll uh, just see if I've got any food, sir. Hello? An offer? Great, how much? 50 grand? Well, they think I'm stupid. Those flats are worth more than twice that. Yeah, well, bail hostel or not, at that price, I might as well give them away. Tell them no chance. You need a look, mate. Richard, Gail's been telling me about the car being stolen. That is awful, isn't it? Yeah. Still no word from the police? No, not yet. No, look, I'm ever so sorry, Audrey. I'm in a real hurry. I've just been thinking, why don't you have a word with Emma? Or I will, if you like. What for? Well, her being in the police, she may be able to hurry things up a bit. Look, the, the police are doing all they can. I don't see the point of dragging Emma into it all. Oh, well, it's just a thought. See you later. OK. Bye. You've got a bike. Yeah, but it's naff. I've got enough gears. Oh, and they're essential, are they, given the mountains we've got round here? Give it a rest, will you? And don't mention it to Richard. What, in case he snaps mad off like he did before? He didn't mean to. He's got a lot on his mind at the moment. Like what? Like work and things. Hello, Rosie. Hi, Emma. How's your arm? It's a bit itchy. Oh, you wait till Monday. You'll have that much to take in at your new school. You'll not have time to think about your arm. You looking forward to it? Yeah. Not. Why, oh, you're not scared, are you? A bit, yeah. You know when on that day of visit? Well, some of the year seven said that the old ones need your stuff. And the teachers are well straight. They put you in detention just for breathing. Well, that's nothing to what I've heard. <laughs> I got a brilliant commission from selling Giles Alexander that sofa. I'll be able to buy that dress now. Aye, cheeky cow. That commission would so be mine if you hadn't dubbed me in it with Jay. Uh, I mean, you knew full well Giles was an important customer. You just saw it to get me into trouble. <laughs> you don't need my help for that. Uh, and uh, what's that meant to mean? Well, I've seen Jay looking at you, wondering why he ever employed you. I can't say I blame him. You're hardly an advertisement for the store, are you? Standing there with your nicotine stained fingers and your clothes stinking of fags. Yeah? At least you won't catch me stinking of cheap perfume. You'll take that back. No, I won't, because you're a snotty nose, little. What's going on? You know, she deliberately landed me in it yesterday. Uh, Karen seems to think that I should have warned her that Mr. Alexander's an important client. I never said that. That's enough. I don't see why you're blaming Chloe. She could hardly have known what you were going to do. Just think if she'd. Do you want this job or not? Yeah. Then stop causing trouble and make yourself useful. You can start by cleaning out the stock room. Thanks very much, then, Blanche. Aye, true, I love. See ya. Right, well, I'm gonna get off to the bank then, Sally. Right. Hey, you, uh, you made Blanche's day there, you know. It's not very often she gets somebody's undivided attention. 
I didn't spend too long with her today, only I just... Oh, no, thought... no, of course not, no. I mean, fuck like Blanche coming here for a chat as much as anything else, you know, and the longer they stay, the more money they spend. But, you know, just whatever they tell you, just keep it to yourself, so... I don't let Vera know how much Jack puts on horses. Ah, you see, I knew there was a good reason for employing a local. <laughs> All right, what's this? You're gonna get the job here, eh? <sighs> yeah, I'm hoping to. Ah, good. Maybe she know how to keep proper books, then, eh? I like some. You have a good time at David's? Yeah, it's all right. Well, I've got some of what might cheer you up. While you was out, Mel and his man rang, wanting to know if you want to sleep over tonight as well. Oh. Oh, I thought you'd be pleased. I don't really mind. It's not bothering you, is it? Look, it's not your mum applying for this dinner lady's job, is it? Because if she gets it... No, it's not that. It's just I don't want to go to Weatherfield Camp. You are? You've been down to go there all year? Yeah, that's before I heard about the old ones treat you. Oh, and how's that? Rubbish. They push you around and knit your stuff. And they even told David that they stick you right down the toilet. All right. Well, I'll let you into a little secret, shall I? You were saying that 25 years ago when I started secondary. But guess what? None of it happened. None of it. Honest? Honest. They're saying that just to wind you up. The only difference between secondary and primary is secondary is bigger. So that means more trips to go on, more clubs to join, more friends to make. You're going to have a whale of a time. Dad? Yeah? Can I sleep at Melanie's? Of course you can. There you are, love. Now then, what are you going to buy your dad for his birthday? Hey, don't tell her. I like surprises, me. Hey, it's your birthday, Monday as well, isn't it, Vera? What are you getting? Well, there'll be no surprises there. I'll be lucky if our Terry sends me a card. Doubtless our Jack will get me some chocolates. That's if he remembers. I'd hate if that's all I got. Yeah, but that's what happens when you get to my age. I mean, I did ask him if he'd get me a new radio, cos ours is all crackling. But I might as well save me breath. <laughs> no, our Jack's more attached to his wallet than he is to me. <laughs> Enjoy that. Oh, thanks. I hope you've remembered I take two sugars. <clears throat> Yep, just don't see why I'm making tea. That new girls always make the tea. If you don't like it, you can always complain to Jay. Oh, by the way, Shane Phelan came in the Shane Phelan from Westlife? Of course, from Westlife. <laughs> yeah, he bought an iron bed. One from our most expensive range. And I was the one who sold it to him. <laughs> nah, did you get his autograph? <laughs> of course not. Asking for someone's autograph is just so uncool. It's the kind of thing kids do. Oh, by the way, Michelle. Brought in this magazine to show you. Oh. <sighs> you sure you can get Naveen's order out on time? It's got to be ready by Monday. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's no sweat. Good. I'd hate to let Dev down, him being a mate. Hi, yeah, it's, it's Richard Hillman here. Uh, listen, um, I've been thinking. Go about what I said before. Get back onto that buyer, see if he raises offer. How do I know how much? Just see what he'll go to. I have just got a text off Karen. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Guess who's in elevation? Only Shane Thielen from Westlife. <laughs> and always check and double check amounts. That way we avoid any mistakes. Right. Oh, and never keep more than two grand in the till. Give the rest to me. I'll put it in the safe. Okay. Okay. Hey, you're not offering her a job, eh? Right? What's it got to do with you? Nothing. I just hope you know what you're doing. I'd never employ her again. Not after what you did to me. You've told him about that, have you? Oh, trust me to be working. If it wasn't, I could have gone over there and seen him. Oh, come on. You don't actually believe her, do you? Why not, Janice? He's got a shop somewhere, hasn't he? Look, Fizz. I'm telling you. She's having you on. Come here, give us that more, pal. What are you doing? You nicked his database. It wasn't my idea. It was a fella I was with at the time. Not that that's any excuse. Right. I suppose that's it then. You won't want to give me a job now, will you? Oh, I don't know. It's just made my day, that I Sally. I say, Mike, thanks for the reference. Anybody who's got the guts to get one up on Baldwin, I admire them. The job's yours, Sally, if you want it. Chloe told me you'd been using your mobile in work time, but I thought, nah, surely not. I was certain you'd be on your best behaviour after this morning. 
I've only been using it while the store's been empty. Oh, so you know when a customer's about to come in, do you? What sort of message do you think it gives out being on a mobile? Depends what you're texting. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, no one explained rules to me about... Oh, you shouldn't need telling. It should be obvious. You're paid to work, not gossip. I could make it up to you now. I'll see to them. You can go and unpack some of the new stock. Well, go on, then. Yeah, where all of my new players hang out. Oh, yeah. So? Hey, I can't stop, but I just came to tell you I got the job. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant, Mum. Oh, yeah, I told you to walk it, didn't I? Tell you the truth, I can't believe it's happened. I have to pinch myself to believe it's real. Must be real, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, we could go out for a meal tonight and celebrate. Rosie's staying at Melanie's so we don't have to get a babysitter. Oh, sorry, childminder. But you, uh, you probably won't fancy it, will you? No, I don't see why we can't. Oh, great. I'll book somewhere then. Right, I'm gonna go and get some CDs to take to Melanie's. Mm -hmm. oh, do you know, I feel like a huge weight's been lifted off me. Do you know what I reckon, Kev? I think we should go away somewhere at half term. Have a proper family holiday. What do you reckon? <laughs> I think it sounds great. Well, I think we deserve it after everything we've been through. I mean, we can't push the boat out not till I've cleared all my debts, but I don't see why we can't have a little caravan somewhere now that we've both got two wages coming in. Mm, sounds good to me. Oh, I had a little chat with Rosie before. Yeah, I thought she looked a bit more cheerful. Yeah, well, it turns out she was worried at starting comp, wasn't she? So we seem to have sorted it. Do you know what? What? It's brilliant having you around again. Thanks for all your support today. Hello? Yeah. Hang on a minute. It's for you. It is. Someone called Lynette. No, 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 no. Tell her I'm not in. You tell her you're not no, in. No, I can't tell her I'm not in. If I tell her I'm not in, she's going to know I'm in, isn't she? Well, why don't you want to be in anyway? Oh, well, look, she wants to see me tomorrow and I'm seeing somebody else. So tell her that, then. No, 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 don't be stupid. I don't know about each other. Well, the more reason to tell her, then. If I was going out with somebody, I'd want to know if they were seeing someone else. Yeah, but you're not, are you? Right, all right. Don't rub it in. No, but just tell her I'm out, will you? Please, just this once. I don't see why I have to act as your personal secretary. Hello? Yes, yeah, sorry to keep you waiting. Um, I can't seem to find him. He must have uh, popped out to the wholesalers. Yeah. I'll tell him he rang. Bye. Oh, sweet. I bumped into Richard this morning, poor thing. I mean, it's not having much luck lately, is it? What with the flats and now the car? No, uh, no, I mean, we'll get the insurance on the car, but uh, bail hostel was a real blow. Mm. But he's feeling the pinch a bit, though. Oh, no. No, he's got it all under control. Oh. Well, I suppose that's his job, isn't it? Being good with money. Just as well, there. Eh? <laughs> Hiya. Thank please, Gina. Something different about you? Yes, I've had my hair done. <laughs> well, come on then. Quite so smart. Well, I'm taking Sally out for a meal, Anna. Celebrate her getting a job. Oh, she got a job? Yeah. Oh, that's great. So, how are things between you two? Never better, mate. Yeah? Right. Must be difficult, though, living together the way you do. Oh, nothing stays the same, does it? Hiya. Hey, hey, uh, do you want a drink in here? Or do you want to get straight off? No, let's have one here. And a uh, white wine for Sally, please. Thanks. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you, Martin. Anyway, enjoy your meal. See you. We will. Uh, oh, can I have a pint for Sarah on as well, please? Cheers, boss. No problem. Just wanted to say thanks for holding the fort today. And uh, I'm glad you came in. Present as well, eh? Uh, I'm not that generous. It's that radio you give me. Look, I don't want to seem ungrateful, but I can't accept it, Tyrone. Must have cost you a bob or two. Yeah, well. And besides. I've already got one. I don't need another one. But, on the other hand, I do know someone who does. You all right, then? Yeah, not bad. Good lad. Hey, are you all excited about Monday, then? Yeah, can't wait to be on a proper football team. We've fulfilled up loads more games than Bessie Street. Do they? Hey, there's more to going to school than playing football, you know. And they've got a proper strip. Mm. I suppose that's something else we'll have to pay for. Well, I can always help you out with that. I know how these things mount up. Oh, uh, thanks, Martin, but there's no need. 
boy. I can't believe he's going to secondary school. I oh, know. It doesn't seem two minutes since he was a toddler like Beth, eh? Give over. Hey, do you remember when he used to dress up as a Power Ranger? <laughs> I huh? do. Do you remember that doll he used to push around in a pram? What was it called? Katie. I love her. You, you did. did. Oh, you were dead cute. <laughs> I've had enough of this. <laughs> oh, bye-bye. <laughs> Gina, can I have a pint of please? What do you want, a cork? Yeah. Yeah, and a cork. I hope my cousin's going to be pleased with you, lot. Hey. Which order? Going well, is it? Oh, please, give us a break. We've already got two bosses. We don't need a third one. Yeah. Well, just remember, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have the order or that bonus you're looking forward to. You are right? Yeah. It'd be a lot better if he stopped sticking his order in. Yeah, won't we all? Just ignore him. <laughs> Tyler. Oh, hello. Is Shane not with you, then? Uh, and I wasn't lying. He was there playing his day. Yeah? Right. Do you are so jealous? Me? Oh, come on. Why would I be? Listen, everyone's entitled to their own fantasies. Well, I believe her. Did he speak to you? Yeah, actually. He did more than that. Right, he was looking at this iron bed, one from our most expensive range, and then, then he shouts me over, and you never guess what he says to me. What? Well, he... He wanted to see how firm the mattress was with two people on it. And so then he asked me to lie on it with him. Never. Got it in one. Well, did you? Yeah, of course I did. I mean, I, I was like that close, like this this close, like away from him. Oh, you lucky <laughs> guy. Mind you, I got his autograph on. Yeah? Yeah, it was not exactly the same as being asked to share a bed with him, though, was it? Oh, honestly. <laughs> Have you got yourself a problem there, Janice? No. I'm not the one with the overactive imagination. You know, I've heard about this. You know, um, people go up in life and then you may start to resent them. Mm. <laughs> oh, just ignore her. So what else happened? Oh, I think that's enough for one day, don't you? Uh, yeah. But I'll tell you what's happening Monday, though. What? I'm only going to the attic. The attic? That's where Beckham and that lot go. All right. <laughs> Can I come? No, sorry, Fizz. It's just uh, elevation stuff only. So I'm going to go with Jay and Chloe and that. You know, like my new mates. You're late. Hard day. Yeah. Mm. Where is everyone? Sarah's giving Bethany a bath, and David's upstairs trying his school uniform on again. He'll have it worn out by Monday. <laughs> I've uh, saved you some tea. I'll put it in the microwave. No, it's all right. I've gone past it. I'd love a drink, though. Ah, oh, well, I've got rid of one of the flats at last. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Well, not quite. Had to let it go for a measly 65 grand in the end. Well, at least it's something. Yeah, I suppose you're right. And uh, Martin called round to see David. Asked if he could help out towards his school uniform. He didn't let on about our finances, I no, hope. No, of course not. Anyway, told him there was no need. Good, because there isn't. <laughs> Do you know, I really enjoyed that. It's been ages since I went out for a meal. Yeah, I mean, I'll fancy a coffee. Uh... Oh, do you want to finish this wine we've got left? I was hoping you were going to say that. Do you know, I can't remember the last time I felt like this. It feels so good not to have anything niggling at me. Just for once to be able to look forward and go, yeah, everything's great. It's an all, though, isn't it? Not just the job. We made the right decision, you moving back in. Yeah. The future. The future. Joe hasn't got a brother, has he? No. Didn't talk about his family much. No. Cos I need a fella. If I have to spend one more night in on my own, I think I'll go mad. Don't know when everybody else has got someone. Deidre's got Ken. Shelley's just got back with Peter. You've got Joe and Deb. Well, he's got two women on the go at the moment. Oh, spare me the details, please. Well, he tried to get me to fob one off on the phone today. Uh, you didn't, did you? Yeah. Oh, you should have told him where to go. Well, I tried, but then he gave me that little boy smile, you know. Yeah, I do now. Makes you melt, doesn't it? You don't fancy him, do you? Give him over. Of course not. Hey, right. What about when Ail is built a coffee all over the knickers? Oh, don't. Baldwin's face. <laughs> hey, go on, what's this? Oh, it just <laughs> happened at work. Mm, there's no point in explaining it to you because you really had to be there to see the funny side. <laughs> what about with that song? But there's nothing to stitch, Mr. Carter. <laughs> Do you know, I feel a bit drunk. Yeah, well, never mind. 
sleep it off in the morning. No kids to wake us up. Oh, yeah. Feels a bit weird, them not being here. <sighs> Reminds me before we had them, you know, when you first moved in. We had Hilda then instead. Oh, that's right, yeah. Good old <laughs> Hilda. Hey, remember them flying ducks? <laughs> yeah. And the Muriel. <laughs> so, yeah. Some things don't change, though, eh? Still sleeping on the couch. Oh, yeah, I forgot she did that. Oh, yeah. I'm having no hanky panky in my house, <laughs> eh? Yeah, yeah. She even set up that old jug and basin on the stairs, didn't she? So she'd catch us if we did out. <laughs> forgot it was uh, trips over at herself and Spain that I <laughs> Tell you what, though. Never stopped us, did it? Oh, wasn't much good in them days. Frank, you want to, don't you? Yeah. So long as you're happy with it. Oh, of course, I am. So, back to being friends in the morning. Hang on, what are you saying? So we're just a one-off like us, so. Oh, yeah. Because we both want it. You know, it doesn't change out, does it? I see. Why did you think it was different? No, no, I mean, you tell me it's great to have me back, throw your arms around me, talk about family holidays. What am I supposed to think? I'm sorry, Kevin. I didn't mean it like that. No, of course not. You know what, Sal? I never know where to stand with you. One minute you're keeping me at a distance, next minute you're all over me. That's not fair. Well, I'll tell you what's not fair. Expecting me to live like this. Do you think it's easy treading around on eggshells all the time in case I, I make the wrong move and you might kick me out again? I wouldn't do that. Not as long as it suits you, no. But it all comes down to you in the end. Don't matter what I want. Oh, it's only Kev. Pull his strings, he'll jump which way you want. Well, I'm sorry, Sal. I've had enough. Thanks for your offer, but no thanks. I really don't fancy being another way you celebrating. Kevin! You've got loads of clubbing gear. You don't need to buy any more. Yeah, well, Jay said it was up market, so, uh, if you're not wearing the right labels, you ain't gonna get in. Any club will let you in on a Monday. Yeah, we have to want. It's exclusive. So why are uh, shop girls going, then? Because Jay's a member, and, uh, so most of his clients. Oh, and these would be people we've heard of, will they? Yeah. Name one. Well, I will when I get back. <laughs> so do you want me to pick you up, then? No. No, it, it'll be all right. Oh, I see. Wouldn't want the celebrities to think your husband is just a taxi driver. That'd be funny, wouldn't it, eh? <laughs> yeah, I think I'll just get a lift. No, I'll phone Robbie Williams. <sighs> Look, Steve, I might be late, you might be tired, so we'll just do our own thing, all right? Well, enjoy. Well, I will. Is that your present, Dad? Of course I do. I'm going to put some on now, eh? You look brilliant. It's a bit big. Oh, you'll grow into it. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> she always does. Right, come on, girls. Go and get your school bags and your pencil cases, both of you. I'm trying to talk to you all weekend. The kids get in the way. Yeah? The house is too small. House ain't a problem. Look, Kevin, I know I upset you and I'm sorry. You're always sorry, Sal. I understand why you're angry and every time I try and make amends, I... Shall I go now? It's a bit early yet. I don't want to be late on the first day. David's going early. Shall I go then? Um. well, why don't we all go, eh? Mum, I can dress myself, you know. Oh, yeah, your tie's crooked. First day at big school. Mind we don't flush your head down the toilet. My dad said that nobody does that. Oh, we all just do it to little ones. Yeah, but we're not little. You will be when you get there. You right, Karen? <sighs> not another new outfit. Yeah, of course it is. Got to be well dressed at our place. Mm, clean skirt, clean shoes. Sounds like school. Mm -hmm. It's nothing like school. Well, if it were, Carp, you'd be bottom of class, just like the rest of us. You're on the bottom of the dung heap, because that's where you want to be. So, yeah, I've moved on. Do you know, you get more stuck up every time we see you. I know. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> You're heading for a fall later. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but what if someone bashes my arm? Well, you'll just have to make sure they don't. Don't be nervous. Most of your mates are going to be there. Yeah, but I don't know which class I'm going to be in. I'm going to stay with David. Ever the gentleman? He'll be there if you need him. 
chill. It's not like we're getting married or all. Well, I won't marry you. Well, she's not going to cramp your style. Yeah, but we've all lads. Don't want a girl around. Oh, so they're both not lovely. She's so pretty. You're so handsome. Come on, give your gran a kiss. <laughs> oh, thank you. Here, let's leg it before they get cameras out. See ya. Uh, see Bye. you now. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. Right, ladies. Now, listen up. We've got to get this order finished, checked and packed by dinner time today, and we can do it. If we all make an extra effort, all right? What's it worth? The one thing we never have enough of, time. So, complete this order to my satisfaction and... I'll give you the afternoon off, what do you say? Hey, I say it's a deal. <laughs> right, then, let's get back to work, shall we? I told you you weren't so bad. Yeah, we have worked hard, though. Yeah, well, we're getting paid for it. Hey, boss, any chance of cancelling tomorrow, too? <laughs> Always one more, don't you? Yeah, well, just a whole day is better than a half. Little Miss Loudmouth doesn't know when she's well off. Joe, can I have a word with you? Yeah. OK, ladies, back on your machines. And remember, your country needs more knickers. Oh, I bet you dreams about knickers. <laughs> yeah. I may let them finish half an hour early now and then, but I never give my staff time off. Oh, come on, they've worked hard. But Janice is right. They're only doing what they're paid for. They've knuckled down. They're going to get Naveen's order completed on time. So why not pat them on the back? They're getting a bonus. What more do they want? A free afternoon puts them on our side, doesn't it? That way we've all won. Have we? Well, yeah. Listen, the girls get a couple of hours to themselves. Naveen gets his order early. Oh, and uh, we've sold him a bit of old stock and all. So it's thumbs up all round, isn't it? So you admit it was a good deal, then? Yeah. All right, I can see the benefits now. So what we're going to lose by letting the girls go? I mean, they'll have done the best work of the day anyway. Oh, well, you're running the place. That's what I'm getting paid for. Here we go. Posty brought these this morning. There's a gas bill there as well. Oh, well, our Jack pays that. Oh, look at this. The wrongly addressed. Look at that. Nine Coronation Street. Nine Coronation Street. Nine Coronation Street. That's where you live, isn't it? No. I reside at the old rectory. Nine Coronation Street. It's different altogether. <laughs> what did you put on yours? Vera. <clears throat> well, I wasn't posting it, was I? Anyway, I've got a prezzy for you. Off me and Jack. We knew exactly what you wanted. Oh, lovely. Jack is everyone's oh, dream. Oh, he always remembers the birthday. <laughs> Well, Jack doesn't have to fork out very much. There is low maintenance compared to Karen. Oh dear, what's she been squandering your money on now? Oh, clothes, makeup. She's got a cupboard full of stuff and she keeps buying things. Oh, thanks, Roy. You're welcome. What's this? That is a brand new radio. This is the same junk radio that Kurt gave me. He found it on a skip. You what? Oh, if you were our Jack, I'd smash this right over your head. That's settled then. Yeah? Oh, you'd better have a word though. I will. Karen! I want you to make sure you're on time tomorrow. <sighs> I'm always on time. Yeah, I've been so far. But we're going out tonight, so I'm letting Chloe and Michelle have a late start in the morning. We'll be in by about ten or soon after. So it's just you and me to open up tomorrow? Well, that isn't a problem. I mean, uh, late nights are nothing to me, so you won't even notice the difference. <laughs> are you going somewhere as well? Yeah. I'm going to the attic, same as you. Oh, who with? Uh, well, with you. Oh, I've bought myself a wicked new dress and I've uh, even got it with me, you know, so I don't have to go all the way home. I think there's been a misunderstanding. This is a private do. Private, yeah, I know, but I thought it was for staff. It is, but not all the staff. Oh, I see. Some other time, maybe. Well, yeah. Do you remember your first day at secondary school? Uh, yeah, I was wearing a second-hand blazer. And I didn't have any gym kit. <laughs> like me. Me mum didn't know a jibber from a jotter. A what from a what? <laughs> Don't ask. Anyway, David seemed happy enough. At least he didn't complain about having to walk. Yes, well, I told him what had happened if he brought that up again. <laughs> you know, I suppose we could buy a cheap car just to tie this over. Whatever you say. Delivered on time and to specification. I expect no less. Your reputation goes before you. I should hope so. Here's your check. Oh, uh, Joe can deal with that. Receipt. 
delivery papers, it's all in order. You can uh, just sign that. I've enjoyed doing business with you. Why don't we mark the occasion with a drink? Sounds good to me. I hope it won't be the last time we all work together. Oh, no, we take all the orders we can get, no matter who they come from. Don't think I'll join you for that drink, though. I want to get this check in the bank. The girls will be expecting a bonus come Wednesday. Like a man who looks after his workforce. Make sure you look up before you go, won't sure, you? Sure, no problem. Yeah, Joe! Are you sure you can handle this uh, responsibility? I can handle anything that comes my way, Dev. I'm sure the clever one. Seeing the Rovers later, then, Joe? Yeah, you might. Oh, come on then, girls, lead the way. We all know where you're going. Yeah, follow us, boss. You'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me a minute. Hello? Yes, double what we originally talked about. Price is fine. Anytime you like. Great. No problem at all. I'll call you later. Bye. OK. Anyone would think Baldwin had never sold a pair of nicks in his life. Yeah, you'd have a smile on your face if you just put a big check in the bank. Yeah. When did Joe say we're getting that bonus? Uh, Wednesday, as soon as money goes through. Well, I'll tell you, he used to Wednesday then, got. Yeah, I'll have it spent by then. <laughs> Me and all. <laughs> My girls are all right. They do as they're told. You treat them well. Oh, yeah. You've got to look after them. Hey, there's nothing you can tell Naveen about factory girls. You've been dealing with them for years. They don't do the job for love. They do it for money. Same as all of us. Not only money, that is self-respect, ambition. Those girls haven't got any ambition. Without the likes of me, they wouldn't move a muscle. <laughs> what, you think they should be grateful as well? For running the factory, yeah. I mean, uh, there's not much else in their life. Apart from Underworld, the only place they go to is here, the local boozer. Mm. Does that thing ever stop? <laughs> no. I mean, he's a big shot. Always in demand. <laughs> i tell you what we could do this afternoon. Please. Have a laugh. Well? We could crawl from underneath our dungy and suss out some expensive furniture. Yeah, and spot a load of A-list celebs. Oh, come on, Fizz. You don't still believe all that rubbish, do you? Yeah, of course I do. Everyone knows all the big shop shopping elevation. Right, well, we'll go and see if we can find a few. Mm -hmm. And a nice dolly dung heap at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if anyone deserves it, she does. Right, well, we'll make sure she gets it. <laughs> big time. <laughs> <laughs> Celebs in today, then. Yeah, Madonna, Prince Charles. Well, we've got that uh, Giles Alexander bloke, you know, the uh, record producer. Come on, let's go and chat him out. <laughs> Janice, just behave yourselves. You're going to get me into trouble. Why? I thought you were running this guy. Yeah, well, you thought wrong. Hey, I like that sofa. Don't do that. What's that? Giles is sitting down. Actually, Giles is lying down. Well, we're going to see if he's come. Yeah, well, it's bound to be, innit? I mean, it's Italian, that. It's the uh, finest quality fabric. Oh, yeah, the dead sexy Italians. <laughs> Karen, can you make us a cup of coffee, love? I could murder a drink. Well, actually, Janice, we, we don't really serve coffee to customers. Oh, you're serving coffee to Giles? Blimey! Have you seen the price of this lamp? 410 quid. I mean, you can buy them in the market. They don't cost more than 50. You can't buy these at the market, Fizz. Right. Have you got any bargains? Well, you'll find most of our furniture's competitively priced. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking for bargains, big reductions, cheap stuff. Summer I can afford. Summer that's going to fit in me flat. <laughs> no. Right, well, just make us a couple of coffees then, and then we'll go. <laughs> Oh, it's a bit lumpy. You sat on me hands. <laughs> I thought you'd gone home. Home? And where's home? Kevin, I'm sorry. I was in the wrong. What else can I say? We keep making the same mistake. Is there any point? Yeah, that's why we need to talk. I went to the garage. Oh, yeah, talk there. Tyrone's standing there. And I went to Rita's and then I've come here. <laughs> nice and private here. Eh? I'm sorry. All right, look, I'll come later when I finish work, OK? OK. I'd rather stay with you, but I'd best go join the others. What's Dev's cousin like? 
Same as Dev. Dev's just telling us why he doesn't answer his mobile. I like to get back to people at a time which suits me rather than them. It's not the most efficient way to run a business. My cousin admonishes me. No, I'll do nothing of the sort. Nevertheless, I'll take note and return to the office. It's been a pleasure working with you, Mike. No, the pleasure is all ours. Come on, I'll walk you to your car. You're very kind. And thank you, Joe, for the job well done. Yep, any time. I hope dealing with one of my relatives wasn't too much of an effort. <sighs> nope. Mm -hmm. a man of culture, not what you're used to. I met all sorts in prison. Yeah, not like Naveen. No, in fact, my former cellmates were rather more like you. You missed the old legs, then? What? Miss Greasy Slimeballs when I got you for company? Nah, don't think so. Is there an ashtray around here? I don't know. Is that one? No, I don't think so. Mind you, it'll have to do. Can you get all of this mirror? The price of everything. May I help you? No, love, you're all right, thanks. We're just looking. Okay. Grab this price tag, Jan. See how much he is. Did you have anything particular in mind, madam? We're just waiting on a coffee, actually. I'm afraid we don't serve coffee. Yeah, you do. It's our mate. She's getting us one. <laughs> yeah, Karen MacDonald. She used to work with us. We only serve refreshments to customers. We are customers. Not if you don't buy anything. Hey, I'm telling you. I'd buy this old place, mate, once I went fools. Well, perhaps you should come back, Ben. Uh, excuse me, there's no need to be snotty. Our money is as good as everyone else's. It would be if you had any. We're just going to drink this oh, and then we'll go. Would you take the coffee back, please, Karen? I've only just made it. Perhaps Mr Alexander would like another cup. Uh, no, this is our coffee. We ordered it. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Why? What have we done? For a start, you flick cigarette ash all over that china vessel. Ah, well, now that's your fault, because there's no ashtrays. We don't encourage smoking in the premises. All right, but that producer block over there is all right if he smokes. Mr Alexander's a client. So we can do what he likes? Up to a point, yes. Not that it's any of your business. We're just going to finish these drinks, and then we're going to go. You'll go now. Karen. Karen, tell him. If I can just show you to the door. Tell him we're mates. You just follow me. Uh, Karen, this is us. You know, Fizz and Janice. It's just this way. You're as snotty as he is. She's worse. We live in the same street as her, you know. So if you're going to chuck us out, you want to be chucking her out and all. Yeah, maybe you will. No, no chance. Snots, they stick together. We'll see you down the pub, eh, Karen? Bye. Treat, sir. And you wondered how I knew they had no money. So, uh, when did you hear? Well, I've known about it for some time, but a lot of my customers are talking about it. I mean, none of them wants to live next door to a bail hostel. Neither would I. Please, it's not as if there's going to be a criminal on the doorstep every five minutes. Oh, all sorts of people are on bail. Murderers, child molesters. That's the sort of talk that's lowering the price of my flats. Oh, it's not gone down by much, has it? Enough. Oh. Well, all my money's tied up, as you know, but look, I have got some spare cash in now. Oh, Mum, that's very kind of you. Yeah, it, it is, Audrey, but you're the last person I'd take money off. You deserve everything you've got. We're family. Come on, we sink or swim together. Well, so thanks again, but uh, the, the problem's cash flow, that's all. As soon as the rest of the flats sell, we'll be fine. Absolutely fine. Well, we say that we could go home early in our first day, but tomorrow we start proper lessons. Well, that'll be different now. You'll have all the big kids in now, won't you? Yeah, and you'll have to do some work. They only wrote the names on their exercise books today. And find our way around and get our timetable. Uh, see much of David? <coughs> no, it was with the boys. <laughs> I thought he might be. I met a new friend, though, Laura. She thinks boys are stupid, too. Yeah, well, you listen to her. She's right. Right, I'll get back to work. Shall I make you a drink? No, no, you're all right, thanks. I've got a couple of MOTs won't do in there. I said they can pick them up by four, but I'll come back then. OK. Let me explain something. This place is a business premises, not a playground. It's on the floor of this shop that I earn my living. I know. We don't have a large number of customers because every person who comes in spends thousands. I know. We can't display every sofa that we can source or every combination of every storage system. I understand. You don't. 
You think that when there are no customers, you can phone up your friends and have a laugh. It's just that when it's not busy, I thought that I could... Study catalogues, as you were told to do. What's the point in that? You've been told the point! <sighs> so that if, for instance, a client wants a dining table, you can discuss the aesthetic, the style. They don't want me to make their mind up for them, though, do they? They do want you to offer alternative ideas. We're a design consultancy, not a warehouse. The best furniture isn't knocked up in some factory down the road where your mates work. My mates work longer and harder than anybody in here. I'm sure they're highly skilled at what they do. Well, they are. But they don't turn out items that would find a home with us. Actually, they turn out underwear. You're not wearing none. Karen, I'm not interested in your friends. They don't belong here. What I'm beginning to ask myself is, do you? Hi, Richard. Hiya. I've folded up my tie shirt, my blazer's in the wardrobe. So now are you going to tell us how you got on? Not to say, really. Like the gym, like the science labs, like the playing fields. What about the teachers? All right. So you think you'll settle down? Yeah. If you want me, I'm playing football. Want to get in team, don't I? He's cool. <laughs> That's his style. No news is good news. I've got some, uh, some good news of a sort. About the flats? What else? Surveys through on the shelf, flat's fine, so we'll be getting some money. Good. 65,000, though, Gail. <laughs> the flat's worth so much more than that. It's a step in the right direction. Yeah. We'll be fine. You're early. Yeah, I saw the girls going out. Thought I'd try and come and talk to you on my own. What did you want to say? That no matter what our difficulties are, Sal, moving back here was the best thing. Even if we're not properly husband and wife? Yeah. I'm a member of a family again. I know what your first day at work was like. I know how Rosie feels about school. I'm not an outsider anymore. We can enjoy the girls together, just being with them. I enjoy being with you too, Sal. I know you do. No point otherwise. But it might be easier if we only go so far. I'd I don't want the complication of a full relationship. You're right. That way the family's safe and we know what to expect. No surprises. No surprises. <laughs> Just a calm sea crossing. Yeah, no storms, no gales. This is our last chance, Kev. We don't want to throw it away. We won't. I've uh, been having a little think to myself about what you said. And? Well, the trouble is... You just don't like me because I stick up for myself. Why do you have to see everything in terms of a fight? Because you make me feel out of place. I mean, you just look down your nose at me all the time. I don't. You imagine it. You think I'm thick? You're not the most sophisticated sales assistant I've ever employed. I have tried to fit in. It's you. You just don't even want me. You're used to a more combative atmosphere. What does that mean? One where you shout the odds at each other all day long. You have been so snotty to me since I started working here. I've been snotty because you've done very little work. You have to be told everything. You show no initiative. Do you want me to demonstrate how to sit on a chair? I want you to sell chairs by whatever means is most successful. You know, if I'd have sold that wardrobe to Janice, then you would have been all over me. If she'd have had enough money to buy a coat hanger to put inside the wardrobe, I'd have been truly amazed. Oh, would you? Yes. You know what? I should have listened to her. Because she was right. You just... Well, you're just a stuck-up little nobody. I'll restrain myself from saying what I think you are. I don't even need this job. Because I would rather be back at the factory. Because there ain't no snobs there, because we all go down the pub together, and we all have a drink together. And there is certainly nobody left out or ignored. Then perhaps you'd better see if they want you back. Yeah, well, I will. And I'll tell you something else. I will be so glad to get out of this place. Give me some of that, baby. No. Uh, what are you doing? Hmm? Well, why aren't you dressed? You're going to be late for work, aren't you? That is a long story. Why aren't I surprised? Give me some tea. No, get your own. I've just done two hours early switch. So, what's happening? Not been there long enough to earn a holiday, have you? I uh, jacked it in. What? I jacked it in. I told them where they could stuff their Italian soft-hired hand-sewn leather recliner. Don't believe this. I'm gonna 
minute. You don't even know all the details. I don't need to, I can imagine. You've got up somebody's nose and they've sacked you. No, as it happens, I'm sticking up for my mates. What? Well, Janice and Fizz came in. You know that snotty snob of a manager? Well, he was going to chuck them out, so I told him where he could stuff his job. So what did they say? They pleased, are they? What? Janice and Fizz. They just stood there while you threw your job down the pan, did they? Well, they don't exactly know, because I did it after they'd gone. Oh, right, yeah, spring to someone's defence, just as they don't need it and it's too late. Oh, this is very sensible. He chucked them out. Look, I was making them some coffee. C c c coffee? Yeah, because all the posh knobs there get coffee. And he thought that they weren't worth it, so what do you expect me to do? I expect you to keep a job for more than five minutes, that's what. I tried! Oh, yeah. What, like you tried at the factory? Now, that is so different. Oh, so you say. So you don't believe me? No. Well, why don't you try listening? No, why don't you try? I am sick and tired of you thinking a job is something other people do while you laze around on your backside all day. Well, where are you going? I'm going to go and get some breakfast with people who work. Here, excuse me, Mr Posty. Hey, love. This isn't our address. Hey? <clears throat> Look, you see that? That's our address. I told Norris at the post office, didn't he tell you? Do you know he's a waste of time, that man? You need to tell Thor what right to you. Well, how do I know that? I'm not a psychic. Look, when you change your address, you tell the post office. <laughs> you haven't changed your address, love. You've just added a name. <laughs> and I want it on the envelopes. Well, are you still Mrs Vera Duckworth? Oh, well, yeah, of course I am. <laughs> well, at the old rectory. <laughs> I thought you might have become Mother Teresa. Don't be so daft. <laughs> daft? No. Uh, look, love, if I were you, I'd just get some of your address cards printed and give them to people what might be in touch with you. Oh, I don't know about that. It could be expensive. Ah, you can do them yourselves at the machines on precinct. Can you? So, do you want these letters, then, or do you want me to send them back, address unknown? Yeah, yeah. Give us them here. And thanks for all your help. <laughs> and you? Have a nice day. Yo, Kirk. Have you been uptown yet? Listen, I want you to do us a favour then. Hey, have you got your Yes! What are you doing? Are you school? Yeah, she's a real grown up now. Mum! What does the time go at? Hey, Rosie, come here, give me a kiss. Mum! Pull your socks up. Don't forget David. Yeah, yeah. Tell your missus to keep well out of my way from now on. Hey? Yeah, stuck up cow. I tell you, you soon learn who your friends are around here. Uh, what are you going on about? We went to a posh shop and got chucked out. Yeah, and all she did was flaming now. Well, she got us a coffee. Yeah, and then we got chucked out. I mean, embarrassing, or what? I am not used to getting chucked out of shops, me. Yeah, well, I am, and it was still embarrassing. So what do you reckon to that, then, eh? You don't want to know. Oh, that told him. Told you what? No, oh, no. Well, I can take some, Matt. Yeah? Maria's having a ball in Canada. All right, how do you know? Well, she rang last night. Says it's great. Really gorgeous scenery. All right, I better know what scenery that is at all. <laughs> Still, it wouldn't suit me, all them mountains and green stuff. The cold trees, love. <laughs> I'm a lumberjack. Yeah, well, I... you can forget fresh air. It turns out they're clubbing it every night. Really good scene. Oh! Who's oh, that, love, Maria? Yeah, she's really settling in. Oh, that's good. Listen, I'm sorry I'm late. It's just the post, ma'am. They will keep you chatting. <laughs> so Maria's happy, then? Yeah. Oh, good. That makes me happy. Does it? Why? Because she's not going to come back. Now I can decorate her room how I want it. The old flat, you mean? What, you mean this flat decorating flat you keep on about? Yeah, why not? Nice one. <laughs> Hiya. Hiya. I was going to ask, how do you do that? All this? It's easy, I'll show you where. I thought you were going to call for me. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Another boring day, eh? I don't know why we bother. So you coming or what? No, you go on. Go on! I might as well wait for you. 
Mutter. Can I help you love, Pardon? No. Yeah, this. Shaving cream. One ninety nine, please. Shall I put in a bag Not for you? Fine. Hey, excuse me. I'm telling you, one more early finish and you're off the squad. There's plenty more drivers out there, Les. Watch. That's telling him. All right. What's well, got up your nose then? Apart from Speedy Gonzalez. What? The missus. Who told you? Oh, that's it. Well, maybe I read it in the stars. Or maybe whenever you used to have an argument, you take it out on Les. Yeah, tell me about it. So what's she done? Well, that's it. What? She hasn't. I thought she had and she hadn't. Looks like I'm in the wrong. Ah. Well, now you've got to do what a man's got to do. Well, apologise. Are you kidding? No. You be a man. You think she's still wrong. But you're being big-hearted. You're prepared to forgive her. And if that don't work... Well, you can always come back and sack less. Oi! Knock, uh, knock. <laughs> what do you want? Well, I'm just like... Well, I mean, me and the girls... No. What? Whatever it is. Ooh, let me guess. Can you have your bonus, sir? Says you can have it for lunch. That'd be magic, that would. What do you reckon? Same as governor. No. <sighs> hey, cheers, Bernie. Outside the main entrance at three. Steve. Listen, um, I'm sorry about the job, and I, and I know you don't believe me because of Joe and the factory and that, but... but well, I'm telling the truth, honestly. May you drink later. OK. Oh, hi. I did call out after you, but you didn't hear. Sorry. Your shaving cream. Here it is. All right, thanks. It's not the shaving cream? No. I was wondering if Des were here. Des? Des Allen? No, no, not here. Oh, well, a long shot any road. I met him the other evening, gave him a number, but I think he must have taken it down wrong. He seemed dead keen on ringing, but I've not heard. <laughs> what, they like it? Yeah. <laughs> so I hear? Oh, a mate of mine said she saw him here, looked like he were working. No, no, sorry. Des? Des? <laughs> <laughs> Those women are giving me a right earache about their bonus. Yeah, I'm onto the bank now. Just hang on, will you? Yeah, hello, yeah. Well, what do you mean? It should be in the account already. I just wanted to know how long it would take to clear. Um, Allahan International. Oh, great. So when can I draw on it, then? I've got bonuses to pay. All right. Thanks. What? You paid the check-in, all right? Yeah, and? It bounced. Listen to me, you misheard. Right? There's no way I said there's there, v, v, v. It was a noisy club, you misheard. Yeah, well, there's always the quietness of my flat to correct uh, any misunderstanding. Hey. You know how it goes. It didn't seem very important at the time. As I recall, we had other things on our mind. Which is how you lost my number. Uh, 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 uh. Took it down wrong. <laughs> yeah. uh, Mike! Just a man. In the back. Yeah. Sorry, Dinah. Davina. Davina! Sorry. <laughs> Business. Look, why don't you give your number to Sunita, mm -hmm. and I will call you. I will definitely call you. Soon. <laughs> Cheers, mate. You know, for a minute, I thought I had a problem. You have, son, you have. <clears throat> Your cousin has just given me a rubber check, so I can't pay my workers. All right, well, then leave it with me and I'll find out what's happening. Yeah, you better do that. Because if I can't pay the girls their bonus, she won't be the only woman you'll be avoiding. So I'm prepared to give you the benefit of the doubt and we'll say no more about it. Hope you're satisfied. I'm oh, sure what you're going on about, Jan. Her sort never do. True. Once they think they've gone up in the world. Uh, you're making a big mistake here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. My wife's on the door because of you two. You are? After you'd left, she went for the manager. Told him exactly what she thought of him. Did you? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Ah, so because of you two, my wife's got no job. 
so I won't go slagging her off. Well, we want to know. Yeah, well, why didn't you tell us? Hey. Yeah, this morning in that calf, why didn't you tell us when we were going on about her? <sighs> right, I see. So these two just prove what I said was right? Well, I mean... Yeah, no, I, you know I was innocent. You just thought you'd keep me playing the guilty party. <laughs> Listen, I've just got to go and have a quick word with Les, so... I knew you wouldn't let us down. Yeah, right. No, honest. On way home, I, I said to Fizz, she'll be causing a right riot in there. Didn't I? Yeah, well, I should have said something sooner. No, love, I mean... It doesn't matter, does it? You came through for us in the end, and that's all that counts, isn't it? Redecorate? It's not been done long. Ah, yeah, but it was done with old folk in mind, weren't it? I beg your pardon. Oh, I mean, really trendy old folk. <laughs> what she means is that we want to, you know, put our, our personality on it. Your personality on my flat face? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, come on, I'm really tasteful, me. Really? Oh, sorry, girls, you've just lost your arguments. <laughs> Well, I hope you don't feel too guilty about my wife losing her job on your behalf. Actually, I, I do feel a bit awful about her. Anyway, I'll uh, see you tonight, then, yeah? See you, John. See you, love. Bye now. So, uh, what's this? Ah, a bit of shampoo. Celebrate your rise to working-class hero. Yeah, well, you're going to have to work a lot harder than that. OK, thanks. So, what did he say? Well, he said he doesn't understand it and he's going to find out what happened. I told you, didn't I? Alahan's they're all the same. We should have had the cash up front. Look, you just hold your horses. Things like this happen. Have you ever heard of cash flow? We give him the benefit of the doubt for the moment. Today, I'm afraid. Hey, hey, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There's going to be no problem today. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Look, I don't know what's going on, but I know a man who does. Hey, sorry, sorry. Perhaps Mr. Alan here can tell you why you won't be on a bonus. My girls have worked hard here to get your order out. Your management agreement is your business. Yeah, well, I can't give them a bonus unless we receive payment. Now, perhaps you'd like to explain. Ladies, ladies. Now, there has been a slight problem. Look, cut the smoothie routine and just tell us, will you? My cousin has hit a cash flow uh, glitch, but it's been sorted. It's been sorted, and Mr. Baldwin, listen to me, will get his money by Friday. Now, if you'd be kind enough to pass it on to your boss. It's going to be nightmare, this. Yeah, it better. What the hell's going on? We've been told there's no bonus. All right, OK, it's being sorted. Now get back to work. Yeah, what's the point? Then go home. Are you all right? No. What's up? That's my business, if you don't mind. Listen, I'm sorry about earlier. It was probably my mistake. How about tonight? Tonight? Oh, maybe that sounds great, but uh, no, I'm sorry. I've got this meeting, haven't I? Have you? Yeah, it's like this independent traders alliance thing. Uh, I could go and do that uh, for you. <laughs> no, no, Sanusin, no, no. It's for, like, managers. Uh, look, Davina, I'm sorry to rush you, but what can I say? It's like the fates are against us, OK? But only for now, only for now. I will definitely, definitely ring you, and then we can really have a great, great time. Promise? Promise. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Serves you right. You're too cavalier in your approach to women. You're not going to phone her, are you? Well, possibly, possibly not. But she went out of here feeling OK about herself, didn't she? Bring your mum from our house. Do you reckon? Um, yeah, my little sister might be around, but we'll soon check her out. Right, cool. Yeah, I'll be probably going out. So? Nothing. Right, well, go on, then. Oh, <laughs> 
If you ever write to us, that's our address. Our Tyrone did them for me. Why would I write to you, Vera? Well, I don't know. I see you every day. Well, you know, if you do. <laughs> Are you sorted out your problem then? No. Uh, yeah. And you still remain top dog? Of course. I, uh, I think I'll be having another round for the army mates. Because there's only one Karen McDonald. There's only one. So Karen not working at elevation no more. No. Nope. That's a bit of a drag, eh? But it's making a dent in your income. Huh. Well, I don't know. I've spent loads of money because of that place. Probably end up being quids in. <laughs> yeah, but you don't end up uh, funding a social life now, do you? I mean, you happy for her to be a lady of leisure? No, I'm flaming not. <laughs> so what are you going to do about it? I don't know. I'm going to do something, don't you, Wally? Do we quite understand that with this? Uh, yeah. Yes. Well, listen. Now, as long as you're not too radical, right? You can redecorate. <laughs> yes. I'm not too psychedelic, madam. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm not one thing she'd know about psychedelic. It's a bit modern for her. Well, she probably remembers it from the first time round. First time. Yeah, it was a movement in the 60s. Andy Warhol in America and Peter Blake over here. Oh, get you! Well, I only know because I'm doing an art project this term. I'm not supposed to be this holidays. So it's due in next week. All oh, right, well, if you don't. Well, that's it, I haven't. And I haven't got a clue what I'm going to do either. Oh, no, perhaps. I'll help you. Uh, no, because uh, the last time you did anything creative, you ended up on the factory roof showing the work. All right, all right. No, this time, my decoration is going to be in the best possible taste. <laughs> I wouldn't mind, but when she's doing the big manager dress routine, she never admits the mistakes. So it's me what's got to come and get the milk, because she hasn't ordered enough. I'll, uh, see you later, yeah? See? Prime example. What now? The way you treat women. You could have been happily married by now. <laughs> well, I doubt it. Yeah? Why? Because you think with your mobile, that's why. Uh, look, I can be very sensitive, woman-wise. That's why I'm calling now. You calling Davina? Uh, Davina, no. This is Jacqueline. Jackie, hi. It's Dev. Yeah. Gotta go. I thought I'd come and explain about the check to Mike personally. No, it's not a good idea. Why? What, about 21 reasons, seen half of them going down to the pub. Best avoided, believe me. We're gonna go back to mine, we're gonna talk things through. Close up for me. Yes, Master. And if any other forlorn women should call? Well, deal with them. You're right. Well, you look like someone I know, but I'm not sure. Remind me again. Brad Pitt. <laughs> Some more. Look, I am sorry. It's been hell in there. I know I've been neglecting you, and I don't want to make up for it. That's if you'll let me. Possibly. Have you got in mind? Well, how about somewhat romantic to reflect my intention and somewhat expensive to reflect my guilt? Well, it seems they put it like that. But, but, yeah. Hang on a second, you love. Where do you think you're going? Mm. Well, that's your business, is it? It is when I'm owed money. Let me explain. No need. You do with Mike. Doesn't concern this gopher. It does when my workers are affected. Get lost. You don't. Hey, hey! What's going on? Well, just call off your hired hell. What are you playing at? Mike, I'm trying to find out from well, this. Well, don't. Get lost. Michael, let me explain. I feel dreadful. It's all right. You heard what I said. I'll talk to you later. I'm sorry, Naveen. I am too. Get off, you're <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I bet so. Uh, 
That's it. That's our new address. Oh, yeah, well, it's just a new address, you know, so that if you, if you write to us, that's what you use. All right. Well, you might do. No, no, I won't. Look, you might go on holiday and send us a postcard. I'm not going on holiday. In any case, who's this? Vera and Jock Duckwalk. Hey, Tyrone, come here. Just look at that. Oh, good. He promised me he'd follow them instructions as if his life depended on it. Oh, it's all right. It's not your fault. Well, you can't introduce your husband as Jock Duckwalk. I can if it stops that snotty Doreen what's-her-name from getting one over on me. He'll just have to get used to it. I'm not obsessed. He just caught us at a tricky time, that's all. I can't let that scumbag get away with it. And I thought you of all people would have appreciated that. In fact, you know, it's because of you that I'm coming down so hard on him. Really? Yeah, of course. I mean, he deserves everything he gets for the scabby way he treated you. Right. See you in my night in shining armour, are you? If you'll let me be. Yeah, yeah, whatever word for you. I don't know what little game it is you're playing, but you can stop it right now. Hey, I'm trying to protect your business. No, you're not. You're trying to put one over on Dev. Business is business, and when you drag your personal life into it, it's the business that suffers. And so do they. So leave your personal grudge alone. Or get back on the streets where I found you. I haven't a clue what I'm going to do. What about? My project for college. Visual arts. I've got to have it in for next week. Visual arts? Is that not like painting and stuff? Hey, you could do a portrait of me. I'll model for you. No, I'm an hopeless painter. Besides, if we paint anything, it's going to be this flat. Yeah, but it's hard work, that. No, we'll do your idea. We'll have a flat painting party. <laughs> Would it work? I mean, do you reckon we could get anybody to come? Oh, easy. People around here will go anywhere for a free drink and a peanut. I'll tell you what, I'll start inviting people. Cos, I mean, look at this, it's awful. How's it got like this, eh? People tearing strips off it, I'd say. Yeah, you could be right. Oh, is that the time I'm going to be late for work? They'll be tearing strips off me if we don't get my skates on. <laughs> right, I'll see ya. Yeah, I'll see ya. Morning. Morning. Mr Baldwin, when are we going to get our bonus for that big order? I haven't been paying myself yet, Janice. As soon as I get paid, you get your bonus. Hey, it's, uh, it's not a bad question Janice is asking there, you know. But a nasty feeling about this Naveen order. Always have had, right from day one. The only reason you've got a nasty feeling about it is that Deb bought the order in, not you. No, no, it's not like that. The feeling got worse when his cheque bounced, all right? Look, you keep going on about that, but these things happen in our business all the time. He just got his uh, cash flow timing wrong, that's all. See you, Norris. Yeah. <coughs> oh, good morning. I say, are you all right? You look as if you haven't slept a wink. Well, well spied, Norris. It's, uh, it's uh, insomnia. It's a terrible thing. Yes, well, I wouldn't know, would I? having a clear conscience. You do look as though you've been up all night like some tomcat. Oh, listen, no lectures, please. Yeah, you're not far wrong. I've been up all night, end up with this lady. Oh, I'm not here. But what if somebody important? No, I am not here. Hello? <clears throat> no, Mr Baldwin, he's not in yet. OK. <clears throat> well, listen, I could have spoken to Mike. You told me to say you weren't in. Who is it you're avoiding? One of your girlfriends? No, all of them. Because one woman did phone about ten minutes ago oh, and she was on, really Come on, I, I don't want to know about it, all right? Not until you made me some coffee, something, anything, just to bring me around. Aren't you getting a bit old for this sort of thing? Oh, no. Well, I, I don't think so. I've certainly had no complaints. Right, I'll get off to the cab office then. What are you going to do with yourself today? Don't know, I haven't really thought about it. Will you be going near the job centre at any point? No, I shouldn't think so, since I'm in no real rush to get myself a job. Oh, well, you never have been ever since I've known you. Well, that's me. Reliable. Me and you always know where you are with me. I'll tell you something else, though, Steve. I've decided I won't be settling for any old rubbishy job that comes along. No fun, is it? <laughs> well, your last job was funny, you know, the one you walked away from. Can we get one thing straight? You know, you going on at me and nagging me just to get any old job. It's not really going to change my mind. Oh, fair enough. Right, I'm off. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, considering you have 
walked out on your job, there's going to be no little handy gyro checks coming through the post. So I don't know what you think you're going to do about money, but... Uh... Well, that reminds me, actually. Can I have some? Yeah. Here you go. Senna. Can't spend it all on sweeties. <laughs> Here it is. You can try that. He's okay now. We could do with new machines. This one of mine's just about clapped out. Sure, it's the machine. Hey, you, cheeky devil. There's no wrong with me that a good service can't put right. <laughs> oh, right, that's great. See you later. Oh, Joe, I'm off. I'm out to lunch. Got to see the Spanish guy. Yeah? Business? Oh, so, yeah. He's a friend of a friend. He's over here for a couple of days. So, uh, we're going to get an order out of this or what? Oh, no, he's not in the rag trade. He's a property and law man in Spain. Oh. I need someone to ride shotgun on the holiday apartment. Someone that knows the regulations inside and out. Do you know what I mean? Well, anyway, expect me when you see me. Could be a long lunch. There's a lot of money riding on this Spanish deal. Yeah, well, I'm going to say there's a lot of money riding on this deal with Deb's cousin and all, you know. Look, don't keep on about that. Deb's handling it. That's what's worrying me. What's that? Wedding invitation. Anyone I know? Don't think so. I'll make mine from school, Nimi Patanka, mid-September. I'd like to go, but I don't know. Well, listen, there's no problem if you want a day off. You go, we'll manage. It's not that. The invitation says to Sunita Parik and partner. We haven't got one ever. Whereas you, I've got partners the way a dog has fleas. Well, you know, I don't know if I like that image, but you're not far wrong. They do keep me up to scratch. Come on. There must be someone you can go with. Haven't you noticed? No. You're too busy with your own private life. Whereas my private life's just about dead these days. Yeah, well, maybe you're a bit too choosy. Maybe I am. Yeah, look, I'm dead on my feet now. OK, I'm going to go home. I'm going to get a few hours kip. Well, if you slept at night like yeah, other people... I wouldn't have as much fun now. If anybody wants me, I'm at one of the other shops, right? If you say so. Yeah, I do. I'm at one of the other shops, only you don't know which one, right? Yeah, we had a check from a Naveen Alahan. That's A-L-A-H-A-N. H-A-N. Yeah, that's right, the one that didn't go through. Yeah, well, we represented it, and what I want to find out is if it's gone through OK. Yeah, if you would. Yeah, I'll hang on. Sorry, can you say that again? Insufficient funds? I'm gonna say. You saying the cheque's bounced again? Right. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll have to get back to you on this one. There you go. There you go. Ah. Uh, uh, do you like to fancy a party? Yeah, where's that? Well, it's at our place, me and Tyres. We haven't sorted out when yet, but uh, you're up for it, aren't you? Well, what sort of party is it? Well, I'll tell you one thing, there'll be plenty of stripping going on. <laughs> Whoa, nice one. Hey, down by. <laughs> oh, hello, Kirk. If fish start stripping, somebody will shout and get them on. <laughs> you cheeky get. No, it's uh, stripping wallpaper off walls. It's a special sort of party, you see. I mean, there's drinks and everything, but you've got to paint a door or whack a bit of paper on a wall. It's a decorating party. It is? Did I hear mention of a party? In the salon flat? Oh, yeah, but it's only a very small one. It's going to be more like a tea party, really. Mm. Well, as long as you and Toya remember to respect my property, right? Because I do like ladylike behaviour from my tenants. Hey, Audrey, there's nobody more ladylike than me when I want. He's right, is that? When we was in that caravan in Blackpool, she always went outside to bouch. Oh. I was well impressed. Kirk, you silly boy. Oh, you're oh, right. I'm oh. <clears throat> having a drink with Janice. All right, John. What are you having? Oh, my parent. Um, come on, I'll have a pint. Oh, yeah. Whack a pint in there for his place, Gina. Do you want right. a bit, Jim? Yeah, yeah, go on then, Steve. Go on, Gina, love. You've not forgotten it's from that off tonight, are you? Oh, is it? Oh. Oh, you have forgotten, haven't you? <sighs> not love. I could tell you I've had hell's own problems at work today, and I have. But you and I are going out, so get your glad rags on. What's wrong with you? Not as long as they're cheerful when things are wrong at work. No, no. These problems are going to prove that I have been dead right all along. Somebody else has been dead wrong. Who? I'll tell you about it tonight, all right? I'll hold it for that. <laughs> it's all right for you. 
Karen's driving me nuts again. Oh, yeah? And why is that, then? The being dead awkward we is over this bonus we've got coming. And we worked socks off on that big order. And we're short-handed. They didn't get anybody to replace you, you know. Oh, glad to be out there, John. <laughs> I reckon they need two machinists, at least. Don't look at me. I bet Steve's been on your back to get yourself a job, hasn't he? No, no, not really, which is surprising. Although, look at him and Joe Carter with their heads together. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if... Well, Steve asked Joe Soap there to give me my job back. I mean, he's bought him a pint, hasn't he? You know, soften him up. And he's had that. Keep this to yourself, right, OK? Not a word to anybody, including your Karen. Your pal down at the corner shop. Oh, <laughs> he's no pal of mine. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. I mean, I wouldn't be telling you this now if I thought you were any of my pals, would I? I think the bloke's working some sort of fiddle on this deal he's put out our way. Well, he's got one of his relations involved, hasn't he? Yeah, that's right, his cousin. So get this, we do the order, deliver the stuff, and his cousin only goes and pays us with a dud check. <gasps> Not just the once, but twice. Well, I don't like the sound of that. Yeah. And if we don't get paid, the factory is in big trouble. It won't just be your missus who's looking for work, I can tell you. Well, you're going to have to do something about it, then, aren't you? Don't worry. I'm going to. Just a half, Gina, please. Right, love. So is Norris today, then? Oh, you know, fair to Middleton. Well, it's a well-known expression round that way. Yes, love. Uh, find the best bitter, please. Oh, dear, oh, dear. In the midst of life, we are in death. What's happened? I've just had a phone call from a fellow square dealer. An old friend in butchery trade, Arthur Cobb. Dropped dead last night right in the doorway of his local pub. Oh, dear. Oh. Going in or coming out? Beg pardon? Are you going into the pub or coming out of the pub? About to go in. Ah, that's unlucky, yeah. Oh, you're right, I tell you right. You see, none of us know the minute. I mean, you're here and then, bingo, off to the great unknown. Oh, don't get morbid on us, Norris. No, it's not morbid, love. It's just that you reach a certain age and you start realising that you have to make the most of life while you've got it. Drink every drink, as though it might be your last. I'll tell you something, this is the last pint of drink in here. Something wrong with you? Dirty glass. Look, there, see? A definite smear. Might be lipstick, might be anything. Shelley, fresh pint for this gentleman. Right. I don't believe I've had the pleasure, have I? No, no, it's many, many years since I set foot in this pub. Brought round here, mind. Now I'm back. Nightingale Terrace. I'll just try out all the pubs within easy reach before I decide which one I shall be using. There you go. That's more like it. Cheers. Good health. Nightingale Terrace, eh? Oh, you, you'll be on our paper round, I dare say. You see, I, I, I work in the uh, local news agents. Uh, well, more on the post office side, actually. Uh, Cole, Norris Cole. Harry Flag. Oh. There was nothing wrong with that glass that I could see. He'd only sucked a third. Had it been three quarters, I'd have given him short shrift. Mm. No, you see, to me, cleanliness is the most important thing that there is. Well, the Bible tells us it's second only to godliness. Ah, well, if that had been me writing the Bible, I'd have put cleanliness top of them, too. Mm. Yeah. Hiya, Joe. What can we do for you? Well, it's your boss I'm after. Is he in the back? No, he's not here right now. Look, it's quite important. I've got to talk to him. Well, he isn't here, I've told you. Well, where is he? Come on, Celia, don't play games with me. He's at one of the other shops. I'm not sure which one. OK. Well, write the phone numbers down for us then, will you? I don't think Dev would want me to do that. Senator, I need to have them numbers. This is urgent. All right. There are six other shops. You'll take a glass with me, Norris? Oh, well, I, I, I've had my ration, really, but... Well, go on, then. I'll have a half with you. And a pint for me, please. Cheers, love. I'll just acquaint myself with the little boy's room. There you go, lads. Cheers. Buy your cream ready for this. It won't touch the sides. You'll not be driving taxis this afternoon, though. No, no fear. I've been on since first thing. I'm playing me for the rest of the day. Those toilets are a crime against humanity. Eh? Hey? 
the wash basin's filthy, there's no soap, the hand dryer's not working, and the floors are wash. Now, look here. You've already had one fill-up for free. A pint's one thing. Why, you have to in my toilets. I wouldn't entertain using your toilets. Too much self-respect. Now, see, they're not all that bad. They are, you know, Fred. Now, don't you start. This isn't the Ritz Hotel. They're filthy dirty, mate. My bathroom's better than your toilets. So it should be. There's only you mucking it up. Nobody complain till you come in here. Happen I've got higher standards, because I'm a cleaner by profession. Taking a career break at the moment, but uh, I'm a cleanliness consultant. Y you mean you shove a mop round other people's bugs, right? Only the airport, mate. Twenty odd years as a cleansing officer, in charge of, among other things, the VIP facility. What? That's when you realise that a royal flush isn't just something you get in a card game. Well, you'll have met quite a few VIPs in your time, then. Royalty, film stars, pop stars, footballers. You name it, I've rubbed shoulders with it. I met a few VIPs myself when the Commonwealth Games were on. Oh, yes, yes, I was fortunate enough to mingle with household names. <laughs> I was in the gents at Man City one day. Stood next but one to Liam Gallagher. Blimey, this lot should be in Hello magazine. Right, I'm going to work there. You asleep or what? No. Nope. Well, then what's your problem? You haven't spoken to me since we're in the pub. We all know why that is, though, don't we? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, you do? You were asking Joe Carter if he'd fix me up on one of his machines again, weren't you? No. Yes, Steve, you were! I saw you with your heads together after you bought him a pint. Oh, go on, take the missus back on as one of your drudges. Is that what you said to him? Because I'll tell you something, I don't like Joe Carter, so I'm not going to do it. And another thing is I'm sick of being a wage slave, and I'm sick of you trying to shove me into any old job. Uh, uh, who's shoving you? You got your last job, didn't you? Well, you could still keep hold of it. Yes, I did, and I'll get myself my next one, when I'm good and ready. OK, fine. If you want to sit around this flat all day, be my guest. If you want me to give you spends every week like a kid, fine. I've had enough. I'm going to work. No, you see, to me, clean is classy. A decent pub should have a shine to it. Polished woodwork, gleaming brass, sparkling ale. Call me a perfectionist if you want. That weren't first word that sprang to mind. But this pub, you see, I mean, look at you. It's dust and grime. It, it's not my fault. We're stuck for a regular cleaner at present. Since about Christmas, if I'm any judge. He's right, you know, Fred. The, the Rovers isn't what it was for cleanliness. I don't know why we drink it. What do you say your name were? Harry Flagg. Harry be name, Harry be nature. And you say you're a professional expert cleaner? I don't just say it. I am it. Right. I want a consultation with my manageress. This pub, it's a paradise for bacteria. I had that once. That bacteria. On holiday. I was never out the toilet for a week. Now then, Mr. Flagg. We propose to make you a little offer, a challenge, if you like. Tell him, shall we? We'll give you ten pounds and all the beer you can drink when you clean them toilets. Proper job, mind. Over your word. Gleaming. I only came in here for a quiet drink. Oh, we would hate to think you're all talk, Mr. Flagg. Toilets, eh? <laughs> right, you're on. But, uh, but I need to go home first. Hang on! I shall return. Good riddance. Excuse me, I've found him an excellent conversationalist. He'll not be back. I say he'll not be back. Cleaning consult at my backside. Tell you one thing. I bet he leaves a ring round his bath. Just look at him. We're out here busting a yeah, gut, dead, and he's sat on his backside on phone all afternoon. I know. It was all right for some, innit? Yeah, and he is all still yeah. waiting on that flaming bonus. Have you checked out the back? Look, do I have to spell it out? I'm trying to catch up with Dev Allahan. No, I'm not a friend of his. I'm a business acquaintance. Yeah, I know. I've tried all his shops, and you're the last one. So is he there, or isn't he? Listen, this is very important, so if the devious beggar's there, put him on the phone, will you? Hey? <sighs> your end up! No! Oh! Oh! What? Come to me! Come to me! Whoa, whoa! J just put your end down! Oh, what's going on? It's your lucky day, Sawyer. Oh, yeah? My beautiful chair. I've not got proper room for it. 
with that city I've got now, so I thought of you. Yeah, I'm just walking down the street and he shouts, Oh, you, just what I need, a beast of burden. You've always been a smooth talker, haven't you, Les? It's an heirloom, this chair, you know. I won't give it anybody else. Uh, yeah, I know how much it means to you. I can't take it. I want you to have it. Now, not after I've gone. I want no squabbling about who gets it. Well, what can I say? You'd have to say nothing. It's enough for me just knowing I'm doing you a good turn. I need a little cash for this evening's expenses. There's been people after you all day. Girls phoning up. One phone three times. I'm taking 50. Nah, second thoughts make it, um, 80. Oh. Picture of a man with his fingers in the till. Suits you. Not always your own till either, I bet. What do you want? You. I've been trying to run you to ground all day. You're not an easy man to find, are you? So now you've found me. What do you want? Your cousin's cheque. It bounced again. Oh, come on, like you didn't know. You heard what I said. I heard. Yeah. And I'll believe it when I hear it from Mike, not you. Right. Seems to me your cousin's has spent us a three-pound note. He's a thief! The only thief I know around here is you. Get out my way. He had no intention of paying for that order, did he? You're in this fraud Look, with him, I'm aren't you? I'm warning you, you just watch your mouth. Why? What are you gonna do about it? And what are you gonna do about the money owing to Mike? I'll discuss that with Mike! Why did you have to help him drag it up here? Well, he never have got it up here on his own. He'd have ruptured himself. Yeah, I could have lived with that. I cannot live with this chair. Oh, it stinks. Oh, look at all the stains on it. That one, that's where he parks his canalaga. That one? Oh, I don't even want to think about that one. Oh, he's burnt it over this fags. Do you know, it is a monument to Les, this chair. Hey, don't moan at me. If you didn't want it, you should have told him to stuff it. Yeah, we know it belongs on the council tip, but Les thinks it's beautiful. Couldn't hurt his feelings, could I? Listen, uh, you'll let us know if you hear anything else, won't you? Yeah, cheers. Bye. What's going on? I've had Deb screaming the odds down my mobile about you. Yeah? Well, it doesn't surprise me. He said you insulted him. Insulted his cousin. Called him a pair of villains. Right, what else did he tell you, Mike? Well, I think that's enough, don't no, you? No, I don't think it is, Mike. Did he tell you that his cousin's cheque bounced again? Well, no. No, 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 he didn't. No. Right. So he didn't say anything about his cousin's flourishing business empire. Look, what's this all about? I mean, what's going on? Well, I've been making one or two calls to friends in the trade, asking them if they know anything about Naveen and his business. Two different people have just told me that they hear his business is going to go bust any day now. That's if he's not bust already. Gordon Bennett. He's on the floor, Mike. So that order Dev so kindly put your way that you were so pleased about, well, you can write it off, can't you? Cos you're never going to get paid for it. It's going to cost you thousands, Mike. Thousands. Max, mate, I owe you one. Now, of course, underworlds are not in stuck. No, it's just, uh, I like to keep my ear to the ground, that's all. Yeah, and you. See you, mate. Who was that? Max, no. Seems he's heard the rumour that Alhans may go belly up too. Everybody knew, except us. Right, well, the warehouse is locked up and deserted. Well, it's Sunday. So? Sunday or not? If your company's in trouble, you're either working the phone trying to find a lifeline, or you clear your bank account, stash the cash and head for the hills. And I'm not talking the Lake District either. That's supposed to make me feel better. And what about Dev? Any word? Nah, vanished from the face of the earth. <sighs> Surprise, surprise. Because I'm making phone calls on a Sunday morning. Sharks, like Maxie Noel, can smell blood in the water. And uh, 20 ciggies in our love place. Right. <clears throat> a bit flush, I'm wet, to say you've no job. Might not have a job, but I've got an husband. There's no way Steve's give you that wallet. 
No, I've got an husband who happens to be having a lie in and uh, left his wallet in the kitchen, so I thought I'd take it for a walk. <laughs> I used to leave an empty purse out for less to rifle through. <laughs> it were years till he twigged. Oh, I'd be sniffing round after that bonus you've just got. Well, he'll be wasting his time, cos we haven't gotten out yet. Baldwin reckons he hasn't been paid for that order. <sighs> you got enough for bingo tonight, though? Yeah, just about. You? Uh, fancy coming? Bingo? No, ta. I might not have much for life, but I'm not as sad as you two. Mm. Come on. Now that Max knows the problem, my best bit is to get into the golf club bar and pretend I'm not worried. You've got a lot of front, Mike, I'll give you that. I wouldn't have got where I am without it. Now, look, you keep chasing that Levine. And if you can't find him, find out where Deb is. And then buzz me. I'm happy to talk to him on my own, you know. My business is at stake here. I'm not going to lose it by you two squaring up to each other. We'll see him together. You missed a bit there, Fred. <laughs> Look, top corner there. Sir. And they said comedy were dead. Oh, he's only teasing, Fred. If I'm doing windows, you can do toilets. And it'll right with seeing, too, especially the gents. And I'm not teasing. Well, I thought you'd got a, a Vogbrush specialist to do with that. <laughs> I tell you, Flag, we're all talky. Where I say all talk. Uh, why would you want to brag about being a toilet cleaner? Hey, don't knock it. You can sit outside the loos, just like them women abroad. You know, a little bowl, so people can chuck tips in it. Oh, we won't have to, because Fred will be paying us extra if he wants me and Gina to do the cleaning. <laughs> you right, baby? I uh, thought you'd still be in bed. Uh, someone's have got work to go to. Have you seen me wallet? Have you looked in the kitchen? Why would it be in the kitchen? <sighs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's by the kettle. <sighs> I thought I'd lost it. And uh, find his keepers. Uh, uh, I don't think so. Thank you. Have you had some of this? Uh, I have not. Uh, and anyway, it's not my fault I haven't got a job. Oh, right, so that's got nothing to do with you being able to start a row in an empty room. I've got principles. Well, principles are fine. But what are you going to do about money? Well, I'll just lend some off you. Me? Uh, and it's borrowed. You've got loads in there. Look, why don't you get yourself a job and I'll sub you until you get your first wage packet. I can't believe you've been so tight. Uh, listen, and stopping these would help. Well, if I stop these, then I'd get crabby and you wouldn't like that either, would you? Well, I'm just thinking of your health. Well, you'd think about your own health if I give these up. Come on, baby. I'm sure you can lend me 50. 50? You can get lost. I gave you 10 Friday. Here, you can have that. 20 quid? And how long is that meant to last me? Well, we'll just have to wait and see how your job hunting goes, won't we? That's two fifty. Out with Joe last night, then? Nope. Oh, I've not fallen out, have you? Don't think so. You don't sound too sure. Yeah, well, he cancelled on me at the last minute. Said he was working. First Saturday night off in a month and all. So, instead of a night in the town, I got a kebab and Bridget Jones's diary. Again. Oh, well, you can take your frustrations out on the gents in the Rovers. You do mean gents, as in blocks? I mean gents, as in toilets. Since when have I been a toilet cleaner? Oh, I'm doing the ladies. And I thought I had a glamorous life. Well, what happened to this bloke Fred we're talking to? You tell me, love. Oh, I'm so sick of blokes not turning up. I don't even get asked out, never mind stood up. No, tell a lie. I was asked out tonight. Oh, yeah? Karen and Janice have invited me to the bingo. <laughs> Oh, it's rubbish not having a boyfriend with this wedding I've been invited to. Sunita Parik and partner. Well, then I thought you had one. Which makes it worse. It's an old mate from school. All our friends will be there, and they'll be either married or engaged, except for one who catches the other bus and she's got a girlfriend. Oh, yes, see what you mean. Hey, why don't you come with? What? Do you mean, say that we're together? No, we'll give over, as in mates. Oh, well, you know, if it was me... I'd want to turn up with a serious piece of eye candy. Not some mate. Yeah, right, like that's going to happen. £3.18, please. So, mm. okay. Don't suppose you'd like to take me to a wedding? Hey. Um, easing enough trouble with Gina already. Don't ask. Oh, well, in that case, I won't. Know where your boss is? Oh, not again. Oh, uh, yeah. I saw him on Friday night with some woman. Looked like you were going away for a weekend. OK, see ya. All right. This woman. Do you know who she is? 
Kettle can't keep track. It's in a flipping game, you know. Just as well, cos I'm sick of Piggy and the Flame in middle, OK? Well, if you do see him... Oh, believe me, I can't wait, if only to tell him to leave me out of it. And that goes for you too. Thanks for nowt. Morning. Is it? Dump him the pig. What are you going on about? Problem page. No, you're just loving. Well, can't you read it to yourself? No, problem pages only work when you read them out loud. My best mate snubbed me last night. How about my flatmate's about to strangle me? Oh, I can't see that one. Oh, give up. It's Sunday morning. Yeah, and that pizza's been there since Thursday. Look. I'm doing my art project, right? I can't even draw a straight line. I don't know where I'm going to start. So just give us a chance to think, eh? No probs. Right. So what, what did he want oranges for, then? <laughs> to wear. Yeah. No, no, I'm working, not reading. Working. Mm. Yeah. Well, according to Peter Barlow, we went off with some woman Friday night. Yeah, well, maybe he's still with her. Nah. For my money, he's holed up with a bean. Hey, looks like our luck's changed. Afternoon. It's Sunday. What's the difference? Where the hell have you been? Well, if you really need to know, I've been having the um, perfect weekend. Have you seen your cousin? Naveen? No, why? Oh, come on. What do you take us for hey, that one? I take you for nothing. I deal with Mike. What's the problem? You really don't know, do you? Of course he knows. Naveen's going bankrupt. No, that's not possible. Yeah, extremely possible. And if he goes bust, I could, too. And that pal is down to you. Weekend still perfect. Ah, that's better. The beer's right. Gas is today. Ooh. Are you sure I can't do the ladies? Oh, will you settle for an hour's overtime instead? Overtime? If I'm going in there after a month, blaming danger money. Same again, lads. All right, cheers. Any sign of Karen getting a job yet? Oh, we should be desperate soon enough. How are you reckon, dear? Six, mate. I only gave her 20 quid. Not keeping him fags past Thursday. Who does he expect you to survive on 20 quid? Like I can't get money out of Steve any time I want, if I put my mind to it. Yeah, but I don't know why you don't just get a job. I'd be bored out my tree if I was at home all the time. I will get myself a job when the right one comes along. For now, it's daytime telly and uh, window shopping. <laughs> Cheers, girls. Oh, now, grovelling, that's a good sign. <laughs> too big. Looks like you're guilty or something. Oh, now, that's good. That's very good. <laughs> oh, we're working. <laughs> oh, on Saturday night? Look, even a bloke don't believe you. I've got a break in five minutes, so you can try and convince me then. But I'll uh, put these in water. Gain now, shall I? You remember, Harry. Afternoon, ladies. Oh, I'm a first flowers and now a toilet cleaner. It gets better and better. Uh, I thought you said we wouldn't be seeing him again. Nay, 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 nay. I said we'd be lucky if we saw a man of his calibre again. Oh, <laughs> silly me. Hello, my gear. 
I'd have been back sooner on in me uh, super soccer with horse to combat, as it were. Yet the stuff people try to dispose of. Yes, well, you're here now. Do you want to get started? No time like the present. They didn't call me flag of convenience at the airport for no. Flag of convenience. <laughs> Working me, then? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Yeah, on a Saturday night when the factory's shut for the weekend. Listen, mate, I was working because your cousin dropped us right in it. And when I say in it, I mean deep. Dev. Set us up with another cousin, Naveen. Ah, Naveen. Doing so well for himself makes Dev look like a failure. Right, trouble is, he's now. If a woman called Julia rings, I'm not here, OK? No, it's not OK. I'm sick of this. I'm sorry? If, if it's not one of the harem, it's Joe Carter. I'm a shop assistant. I stack shelves. I take the money. I make you cups of tea when you're doing the chat to some girly on the phone. But I will not cover for you anymore. Get yourself a secretary. I pay you. You do what I tell you. If that's the way you want it. Stuff your flaming job! Seven nights a flipping week, ten o'clock at night. Oh, and it's no wonder I don't have a life. Hey, who gave you a home when your parents were ready to put you on the first flight to Mumbai for an arranged marriage? Yeah! To a bloke who'd probably treat me just like you do. The only difference being you haven't expected me to breed half a dozen sons so far. Darling, that would never happen if only be frightened that they'd turn out like their mother. You're a complete git, aren't you? Yeah, and you're not my type either. What makes you think you're mine? Wait, please, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Suddenly realise there'd be no one behind this counter? Anita, please, stay. Why should I, Dev? I'm sick of being treated like mum. OK, OK, look, how many times do you want me to apologise? Just once, if you mean it. Yeah, I mean it! I'm just up to here with stuff! <sighs> it's this Joe Carter thing. Yeah, have you ever noticed how things go wrong when you try and do someone a favour? Like you give a girl a flat to save her from an arranged marriage and... Next thing, she's screaming at you like you're some chauvinist pig. Yeah, my point exactly. I've got my cousin, Naveen, in the rag trade. I've got my friend, Mike Baldwin, in the rag trade. So you put them together? Yeah. And now Naveen's checks are bouncing like they're on a bungee rope and Joe Carter's revelling in it. Well, he is not going to win. Not this time. Oh, you're having a laugh, aren't you, mate? Sorry, friend, there's a hazard to uh, health and safety in there. Oh, well, yeah. Les Battersby's been in there. You get used to it, we have. Harry! Harry, we can't be having this. I mean, for all to have a, a do the... Uh, you know. Problem, Fred. Gents, trap three, leaking valve. I mean, you notice the wet floor? That's all them blokes that can't aim straight. And then they go on and met with me drivers. As a professional, I'd advise a complete suspension of services pro tem. But we're in the middle of a session. Fred, do you want me to ring a plumber? On a Sunday. If we can find one, he'll charge an arm and a leg. Fred, Fred, your limbs are safe. I haven't spent years down among the yule bends without knowing a bit of plumbing. Stopcock. Pardon? <laughs> oh, yes. What, wait a minute, can I go to the ladies then, or what? Uh, oh, will, 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 you, will you stand on guard, make sure nobody goes in? I just don't know what I'm going there when there's a bloke there already. Yes, but you never know, you might have some... I'm not standing here while in. you argue, shit. Uh, listen, well, if, if Steve's done, is it all that family bit? Yeah, but don't be leaving the seat up. You're not at home now, you know. Hey, you won't find out down there, I'll tell you. I've checked. Been like a little bank to me, that has. Whenever I've needed change, a quick dig round. Mind you, there's been stuff down there you wouldn't believe. Right, dinner is served. He's had you. Hey, uh, Fizz has been telling me about this arty project you're doing. Yeah, didn't she also tell you that I need peace and quiet? Why don't you do one of them murals? The dead rockers. The king, of course, John Lennon. Hendrix. Yeah, that sounds oh, well, I love this chair, you know. Like a throne to me. Oh, Kingless, ruler of all I survey. <laughs> or at least it was when it was in our house. All right. Not when Janice were around. She reckons she were always the boss. She'll tell you how to. Then why do you think they call the one in charge the man of the house? And that were me, weren't it, Sawyer? Oh, 
Got us out of a right mess today, Harry. I say, right mess. It's a pleasure, Fred. Pleasure. There's flowers in the ladies. Hey, Somebody left a bunch? No, oh, no, in a little vase. Oh, I would have been happy with clean, but flowers. Not a patch on that bunch you got, but uh, I like to make a little personal statement. Oh, isn't that sweet? Mm. Well, I hope you're not going to make a similar statement, ain't gents? Pineapple chunks. Good ones. You could dab them on for aftershave, near enough. Well, it'll be an improvement on most of the men round here. <laughs> so do I qualify for that free ale, then? Well, um, <clears throat> seeing as how you've made such an impression, what do you reckon to a full-time job? And I'm not just talking about bowls, bends and basins. The bar could use a touch of magic and all. Smashing boss. Well, in that case, welcome to Rovers. <laughs> Still not answering. You know what the problem is? Yeah, Levine's not answering his phone. No, Gina. And what's she got to do with anything? Since you two split up, you've been trying to prove your God's gift to women. Oh, there's nothing wrong with a bit of ambition. I'm serious. You've changed. Yeah, so maybe I don't want serious anymore, but I failed to exactly. see... Exactly. What... You failed to see. You don't pay attention, not even to your own businesses. The old Deb would have known Naveen was in trouble. Yeah, well, how? How? Baldwin didn't know, and he's in the same game. Uh, yeah, and you're in the same family, so I'm sorry, Dev, but she's right. You've been too busy trying to put one over on Gina's new bloke. Look, this has got nothing to do with Joe Carter. What did you say earlier? He's not going to win this time? Hello, Allahans. No, Mr Allahan isn't here right now. Can I say you called? Julia. <laughs> no. Of course I'll tell him. All right. Bye. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> She's on your tail, boy. <clears throat> Naveen. Yeah, well, you took your time. Shut up. I need to see you. It only encourages him, you know, having that thing here. Hey, but have you noticed, so it's only him who can get comfy in it. But what do you expect? He spent half his life with his bum welded to it. From first downstairs fag in the morning till falling asleep in it last thing at night because he's too drunk to get upstairs. Mm. No! What? Leave it! Hey? Well, it's been staring me in the face all this time. My art project. You are? The chair? Well, if that what's the face can get away with an unmade bed. Yeah, but weren't that supposed to say summer? Yeah, well, this says summer. It says uh, that your world class skyver spends his whole life boozing, smoking, and snoring all in that one square metre. Uh, you are having a laugh, aren't you? And do you know what it says even louder than that? That I'd have to worry about my art project. All I have to do is turn up with the chair, the can, the fag ends. I don't even have to swear over a title. It's called what it is. Les's chair. Oh, <laughs> cheers, Artoya. <laughs> Tom, are you still going to the bingo tonight? Yep. Why, what are you doing? Somewhat glamorous and not sad. I thought I might give you a chance to change my mind about what a good night out it is. Oh, that's great. Hey, Karen. Sunita's going to come with you. Sit yourself down, love. Is that still all right? Yeah, well, <coughs> <to the> Saddles Club. <laughs> Saddles? Yeah, the Bingo Brigade. Hey, decent jackpot tonight, Jan. Be handy that, won't it? You can't afford to go to Bingo. I've only given you 20 quid, and that's supposed to last you the week. Hey, I can get Karen one or two cards. I mean, after all, it was me and Fizz that got us sacked in the first place. Right, we should have lost the job anyway, even if you want for used to. <laughs> it all got the sack. Well, all right, then. I can help cheer her up. You know what it's like? No job, no money. It's nice to have mates, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Baldwin. Oh, hello, Phil. Don't often hear from you on a Sunday evening. All oh, right, uh, Max Knoll. Well, I'll settle up with you at the end of the month, like I always do. No! Underworld's fine. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It is about time you had lunch. On me. OK, mate. See you. Bye. Phil Jackman. I've been doing business with him for 20 years and suddenly he's concerned I'm going out of business. Nice of him to be concerned. The only thing he's concerned about is the seven grand I am. And the trouble is, 
He's got reason to be. So putting the word about at the golf club didn't do much good, did it? Times like these, you realise who your friends are. Oh, don't you just? Uh, you'll have the money by the end of the week. <laughs> Where have we had that before? No, I've been to see Naveen and it's all in hand. Where is he? He's sorting things. Oh, sorting things? What, as in uh, a passport and a bag of money? All you're doing here is buying in time while he stashes away as much as he can. Mike, all I can ask is for you to trust me here. You can't afford to, Mike. It's not just money that's at stake here, Alahan. It's the factory. Mike's business. People's jobs! Now, it seems to me you're the only one round here who doesn't get hurt by what's going down. But if I had my way, pal... You're gonna listen to this idiot? You have my word. It'll work out. And as for you, pal, be very, very careful. All right, quit it, the pair of you. Pointing the fingers getting us nowhere. I want this whole mess settled, right? Now, I don't care who does it or how. Just do it. Right, I don't care what you say. That is not art, right? Painting and sculpture and clothes, that can be art. But that, that is a chair. Fizz, you have to open your mind. You have to look beyond the chair. You are off your head, you are. Well, look at it properly, right? What do you say? Well, I can see a really disgusting stain down there. And what do you think it is? Have we got any more marmalade? No, that's a lot. Oh, it might be curry, but I'm not sniffing it. And how do you think it got there? Well, I don't know. Maybe Les was watching the footy, eating a curry, and somebody scored a goal and he jumped up and spilled his dinner. Oh, is that what happened? Well, I don't know. It might have. But see, you've just made a story up to go with that stain. And you could make another one up to go with the fag bones and, and that rip on the side. And before you know it, you've got Les's life history in a chair. So? So, that makes it art. Or at least that's what I'm going to tell my art tutor. Can you help me out to another brew? Yeah, go on. What is he doing here? Oh, he's come to see if we've heard from Maria. <laughs> he's come to get a free breakfast and try and catch a glimpse of me in my undies. Hey, don't flatter yourself. There's not much of you to see. <laughs> right, I'm going to go. You'll have to see to him. ta -ra. See ya. Are you enjoying that? Yeah, thanks. So who's coming to this park tonight? Have you invited any students? I've invited some mates, but... I'm... Oh, students, me. I've already come on with students. I've got an inquiry in mind. Why are you in our flat? I'm just checking to see if there's any mail for our Maria. Well, we forward all the mail to Canada. You wish you might have sent me a postcard or something. Yeah, and if she did send you a postcard, why would she send it here? Oh, well, yeah. Good point, that. Good point. Kirk, go on. Can I set me toast? Yeah, yeah, go on. Doing? I'm preparing a detailed company profile for the bank, along with a four-year projected business plan. Mm. Sounds impressive. Guess what this is? The bill from the florists. It's from the bank. The remortgage. They're giving us seventeen and a half thousand. The fools. <laughs> that is great. When's the money come through? Oh, I always knew you couldn't wait to get your hands on me cash. It's gone straight into my bank account. Let me have some. That is fantastic. So will this sort out all our problems? Pretty much. And when's your next meeting with the bank? Tomorrow. And I think Keith's going to be suitably impressed. Do you know something, Mrs Hillman? You have saved my life. Greg, you ask him. Go and sit back to um, Mr Carter, um, could I have a word, please? Yeah, sure. What is it? Uh, some of the girls have been asking about the bonuses for the Alan order. We were just wondering if there were any sign of them coming through. As soon as Alan pays for his order, you'll get your bonus on it. Why might that be? <laughs> your kiss isn't good as mine. I've already apologised twice. What more do you want, blood? Yeah, I know I said you'd have it first thing, but you'll have it by the end of the week. Well, I'm sorry. It's the best I can do. Yeah, OK. Bye. Those girls are asking after their bonuses again. Well, they can forget about that. I've had regular clients complaining about late delivery, suppliers screaming for their money, and a cash flow with a hole in it where Allahan's checks should be. So why don't we do something about it? Oh, well, Deb said he'd sort Naveen out. What, and you believe that? Well, I haven't got much choice, have I? Look, our stock is sitting in Allahan's warehouse. Now, if he's going bust, we're not going to see a penny of that. Do you think I don't know that? If you've got a better idea, you tell me, because I'd like to know. I'll tell you this, if things don't get sorted out soon, we'll all be looking for a job. Yeah, well, thanks for using streetcars. Bye. Will you put that down? Why are you not using it? It's not a plaything. 
Oh, uh, don't forget Fizzy's party tonight. It was a party on a Monday night. It's a painting party. It was a painting party. Chance to get ratted on a Monday night. I thought you were skint. I was. And then, as if by magic, I wasn't. Where's this come from? I want it at bingo. And seeing as it was the girls that had to put my steak money up, I thought I'd buy them a rook load of booze and pay them back. Mm -hmm. Have a good time. Uh, you're coming? No, I'm not. Yes, you are, because you are my husband. And I love you. And I might need someone to carry me on when I pass out. See you later, baby. See you later. Son, I was wondering, could I ask you a massive favour? You can always ask. Would you be able to babysit Ben tonight? It's just Norris has let us down again. Yeah, I reckon. Really? Oh, you're a star. Do you want to come round about seven? Yeah, no problem. Great. Right. Thanks, See you, Sam. Later. See you later, yeah. He's not here. <clears throat> Maybe I'm not making myself clear. This is very important, Sonita. He does work from this shop, doesn't he? He pops in and out. So where is he? I don't know. OK. How much? You what? I know you're loyal to Dev, and I respect that. But I guarantee you he will not find out that you told me. Here's 20 quid. All right, here's 25. You trying to bribe me? OK, there's 45 quid. All you got to do is tell me where he is, OK? I don't know where he is! I don't tell lies, right. I never tell lies! All right, right. OK, I believe you! <laughs> Look, just... Just tell him it's really important, OK? Really important that I speak to him. You all right? Yeah. <clears throat> Joe Carter's looking for you. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm still looking for my cousin. You know, it seems that like I'm the only person that didn't know who's on the verge of bankruptcy. I guess Mike Baldwin didn't know neither. No. Oh, if uh, anyone... Um... I know. Yeah. Sit down. What are we meeting there for? Because I want a private conversation, and I can't do that with my mother in the house. Well, what's she done now? It's not her. It's me dad. He wants to come to a christening. Oh, no, he don't want to bring his fancy piece with him, does he? No, I said he can't. And what's he said? I've never interfered with any of your boyfriends. Don't try and tell me you can come to my own grandson's christening. And have you told Doreen? No, not yet. Uh, do you know who else? No, thanks. Strong tea, please, Vera and a bun. I haven't forgotten what your mother did to my son, you know. I could sue her for damage, for compensation. She's going through a difficult time at the moment, actually. Yeah, well, so am I. A an apology would be nice. You know, civil behaviour costs no, you know. Yeah. Tina Bone coming up. It's a painting party. You get drunk and paint plays at the same time. You could do me and Emulsion, don't you think? Yeah, if you like. Well, so can we go then? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course we can. Listen. You don't know what Dev is, do you? Why would I know what Dev is? Well, because you were engaged to him, weren't you? Uh, yeah, a long time ago. Right, so you don't know where he goes when he don't want to be filmed. Dev never discussed work stuff with me. I think he thought that my opinion didn't matter. I don't know, have you tried the shop, the flat? Yeah, listen, I'm going to get off. If he does come in, give us a bell on me, movie, will you? Yeah, OK. Tell him. Uh, don't ask, because I don't know, all right? Please, hi. Now then, how's the decorating going? Uh, oh, Hayley, get the drinks in. Oh, come in, I'll be in a minute. Oh. Hi, hi, Hayley. Well, I haven't heard any noise, so that's a good sign, I suppose. We'll be tasteful, though, Fizz won't. Oh, Audrey, could I do anything that's not tasteful? Hmm? <laughs> any joy? Mm, I'm going round there now, and he's not answering his phone. Something's up. I'm speaking of the devil. Where the hell have you been? I've been calling you all morning! I know. Calm down. Everything's under control. Really? So how is it everyone I talk to tells me you're going bust? What, you believe them? Dev, we're family. Yeah, and my boy is my friend, and your checks, son, keep bouncing. I've been working on it all morning. You're right. Things are tight. But I've got a buyer. <laughs> you got a buyer? Yeah. From the underworld stock. I am so close to this deal, so close. Never mind close. Pay Mike his money. Get him off me back for 24 hours and everything will be cool. I promise. What? I just need a little more time. Listen to me. I've already got his sidekick coming around on the hour. No. Time's up. Pay the man. I can't. Not till I've sold the stock. 
You can do it. Mike, trust you one day, that's all. I want to see your books. Sure. No problem. We can set up something soon. In the meantime... No, no meantime. I want to see everything. I want to see it now. Okay. He's such a bully. We'll take my car. It's faster than yours. Listen, if Carter or Baldwin... Uh... You're not here. Oh, you big time. Hey. Hey! I want a word with you. Sorry. We're busy. Stuff to do. He's going, bust, and we're getting ripped off here. Listen, I don't talk to you, I talk to Baldwin. So why don't you keep your pretty little head out of this while I take care of business? Bye-bye. What do you think? Well, it's a nice idea, but... But, but what? Well, we have had a family portrait taken once before, remember? I know, but it will be different this time. And guess what? I've spoken to the photographer and he can come to the house. What, come here? Yeah, he'll do a full family portrait in your own living room. Be like one of them magazines with all the celebrities, won't it? You know, the Hillmans at home. You're not <laughs> going to take no for an answer, are you? If I have to, I will shove us all in one of them photo booths in the post office. Well, I think it's a good idea. I've only got one problem. What's that? I can't let you pay for it. Richard, that is the point. I want to do something for you. You don't need to. Yes, I know I don't need to. I want to. Why don't you let me buy it for you as a present? No, I don't want to receive a present. I want to give a present. Well, how about we split it 50-50? How about you shut up and let your mother-in-law do something nice for you? <laughs> She's bullying me. <laughs> oh, don't look at me. I've got no control over her. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. Good day at school. Yeah, fine, thanks. You're early. I thought you got football practice. It were cancelled, showers a bust. Oh, dear. OK, well, you can lay the table. Your nan's stopping for tea. Mm -hmm. OK. All right, I'll give in. You can pay. Do you know, I knew you'd picked a good one. We don't do vans. Look, all I need is a man and a van for an hour tonight. I've got 200 quid if you can make it happen, Steve. Well, what's the job? Just got to go and pick up some boxes from my warehouse. What's in the boxes? Does it matter what's in the boxes, Steve? Well, it might be something heavy. All right. It's knickers. Oh, it's quite light, then. Yeah, very light. Very easy job. Very easy money, pal. Mm. Why don't you use Baldwin's van? It's busy, isn't it? What, all night? Yeah. Uh, this wouldn't have something to do with your deal with Dev, would it? All right, put it this way. If you can do this for me, you'll not only be doing me a big favour, but you'll also wipe that smile off Dev Allahan's <laughs> smug face. Hmm. Not a bad perk. So can you do it, or what? Well, I'm supposed to be taking Karen out tonight. Oh, it'll only take an hour. I'm taking Gina out, I know, you know. What time? Eight o'clock. All right, I'll do it. Right. Good man. Listen, my Moby's on there. Give us a ring when you get the van, OK? Mm. Uh, 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 just one more thing. This wouldn't be in any way illegal, would it? <laughs> Trust me, Steve. It's all above board. See you later, OK? Do you want cheese and your beans on toast? Oh, no, I can't eat cheese for my tea. I'll have nightmares. Yep, that's that dumb. What are you doing with that? I'm getting rid of it. I like being number four, me. Number four, Coronation Street. It's got a ring to it. Oh, all right. But I still think it improved the tone of the neighbourhood. I'll get it. Mum, I wonder if I could have a word about the christening. Oh, yes. What are you wearing? I mean, we don't want to clash. You know Lynn at work? Well, she went to her granddaughter's christening last month and the vicar thought she was the child's mother. <laughs> I don't know how, we must have been short-sighted. But we should definitely coordinate our outfits. It's Vera. Hello, love. How's baby? He's fine. What do you want? Uh, well, I couldn't help noticing that you've took your nameplate down. My, she's fast. So? So, like I said to them two, yeah, I'm ready for an apology. Really? You'll have a long wait. Now, come on. It were you that defaced my sign. Only after you deface my sign. How many times do I have to tell you I never touched your flaming sign? <laughs> 
What's wrong with your mother? There's <laughs> nothing wrong with me. I never started this. Ashley, Ashley, put that sign back up. I'm not having this woman talk to me like that. Oh, come on, calm down. Look, I'm still waiting for an apology. Well, you can wait outside till hell freezes over, for all I care. Are you going to let her talk to me like that? Well, she is my mum. Yes, but she don't live here, does she? She does now, and you'd better get used to it. I was looking at some cars today. Nothing too flash, but we need some new wheels. You all right? Yeah. How's school going, then? I mean, are you enjoying it? Making new friends? I'm trying to watch this. Oh, all right. <clears throat> Hello, yes? Yes, I know. I haven't forgotten it. Look, it's after six o'clock, and you're phoning to remind me about a meeting that I already know about. I've never missed a meeting at the bank, and I don't like being treated like this. So if you don't mind, I'll get back to my family. What was all that about? I thought you were watching this. Packed girls have been moaning again. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I worry when they're not moaning. Is that cheese stop about not getting the bonuses, you know? Well, I might have a little plan that should put a stop to that. Really? Yeah. You give me the names of the chief moaners and, uh, well, I'll just sack them. Hey, uh, no, that's not fair. I'm not getting them into trouble. Don't worry, I'm only joking. In fact, I've got a feeling those girls should be getting their bonuses very soon. Will you and Fizz come over to our flat and help me carry the booze over? How much booze have you got? Well, too much for me to carry. Otherwise, I wouldn't be asking, would I? Hey, guess what, girls? Joe said we'll be getting our bonuses dead soon. <laughs> Oi, what have I told you? Do not believe anything Joe Carter says. Come on, let's go and get the booze. You're in a better mood tonight. Yeah, well, that's because I'm looking forward to spending the night with you. What time do you get off? Uh, Press says I can leave about ten. Mm. Perfect. Should be back by then. Be back? Where are you going? Oh, I'm going to sit on. Hello, yeah. Good man. Yeah, I'll be there in a minute. Just got to run a little errand. Uh, listen, I'll see you later, all right? Hi, Gina. Um, a white wine and a beer for Norman, please. He's just giving babysitter last instructions. All right. <laughs> Mike, I'm embarrassed. Look, I had no idea Naveen was in any kind of trouble. If I had, I would never have put you two together. So you're embarrassed? Well, I'm owed a lot of money. Look, I've been through his books, top to bottom. Yeah, it's bad, but it's not that bad. He just needs a little more time. No way. Time is money. He already owes me a lot of that. And I set the deal up, so I shared a responsibility. Just give him 24 hours. If you get your money back, I guarantee it. And what happens if Wonderboy doesn't come across with the money for the third time? I covered the debt personally. What? You mean you pay out of your own pocket? Every penny. And that's how confident I am. Right. Well, I've got nothing to lose. Well, like I said, the whole thing's an embarrassment. Let's make it go away, eh? You've got a deal. What's in the bag? Been to the gym. Mm -hmm. Where are we going? Don't worry, I'll direct you. You know what I like best about you, Ben? You're a good listener. Trust me, that's a very rare quality in a man. Of course, it would help if you could talk, but, hey, nobody's perfect. I've been invited to a wedding. There's this bloke at work. There his name is. Have you met him? Well, he's really, really nice. I was hoping he'd take the hint and offer to come with me, but... He's always so wrapped up in his own business. Hey, would you like to come to this wedding with me? I'm sorry, does that sound desperate? I don't want to put you off. In fact, I'd really like to do this again sometime. Yeah! Would you? I'd take that as a yes, then. You look tired, eh? Am I boring you? Do you want to go to bed? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey. I wish somebody would carry me up the stairs. Hey, don't tell your mum and dad I said that. Hey, come on then, chicken. Yeah. 
My art tutor's coming down tonight to look at my chair. I don't want you getting paint all over it. What's his name then, this art tutor? His name's Paul and you can keep your paws off him. Oh, fancy him, do ya? No, I don't fancy him. I just want to pass his course, that's all. All right, well, if I get off with him, I'll put in a good word for you. Tell him how artistic you are. Hiya. Here we are, ma. The serious night here yet? Uh, I hope you brought a bottle, cos I'm not supplying all the booze. Better than that. Five litres of one coat emulsion. So finish. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, 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 what's going on? What do you mean, what's going on? Well, you're going to break in. Steve, I want to get what belongs to Underworld. It's not been paid for, just getting back what's ours. Well, you never said anything about breaking in. I've got a criminal record. Yeah, well, so have I. So let's get this done and get out of here. No, we? no chance. This is too risky. You lied to me. Steve, 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 we really need to do this. No, thing. you need to do this. I don't. I'm going home. You don't get out my way, I will thump you. It's folk like Vera Duckworth bring down house prices in a street like this. Oh, Mum, just leave it, eh? I'm serious. You should get a refund on your council tax. I suppose it's killing Emma today, <clears throat> so they'll set for listening. Oh, good. Will your family be coming, Ashley? Yeah, Fred and me Mum. My real Mum can't make it, she sends a card. Oh, dear. Well, it's probably for the best. I think she's just being diplomatic. I spoke to my dad today. He asked about the christening. Why? He's not coming. Is baby Joshua's granddad? I don't care what he is. He forfeited any right to be part of this family when he took up with that floozy. Yeah, but we want it to be a special day for baby. Have you told him he can come? Well, kind of. I said he can't bring Donna. Oh, right. So you're on his side. I'm not taking anybody's side. Why not? Why aren't you on my side? Mum, he said he'd behave himself. Well, he can do what he likes. I don't care. I won't be there. Oh, Mum, come on. You don't mean that. You can buy a new frock and coordinate outfits. Maxine, I have my pride. I'm not going to make a fuss, but if he's coming to the christening, I'm not. It's as simple as that. Steve. Hello. Steve, I'm paying you to do a job, right? So, keep the money. No chicken out on me now. I'm not going back inside for you. Give me the keys. Neither of us is going anywhere. We grab the gear, we're gone. Two minutes. Oh, oh come on, mate. We're nearly there. Get down. Stay Get down. Down. Because of you, I'll flame and kill you. because I think we're going to run out here. Um, maybe some lager and a uh, bit of vodka, yeah? Yeah, 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 bye. Hey, come on, you. Grab a brush. Uh, not really dressed for painting, Fizz. Yeah, well, I've got some old clothes you can put on. I know, mate, but you keep them. You know, uh, you paint, I'll party. <laughs> Oi, Picasso! I think you missed a bit. You know, if your uh, art tutor fancies doing a tasteful life study, I could always pose for him in the bedroom. If you ruin this for me, I'll have you stuffed and mounted. <laughs> Lass, uh, what are you doing here? Kirk said you were having a party. I brought some cans. Can I come in? Yeah, of course you can, uh. though. I don't know if it's really your scene. Is this all there is? No, oh, we're only just getting warmed up, Les. Hey, grab yourself a brush. Start expressing yourself. <laughs> I can express myself fine for me, thanks. What 
Oh, good idea. We don't want to get paint on my chair. Hey, Kurt. Hey, you've missed a bit. Listen, I went. What? I am not hanging round here, mate. Come on, Steve, we need to do this. Listen, if Underworld goes bust, think how many people are going to lose their jobs. Not my problem, mate. Give me the keys. All right, I'll give you 300 quid. No, 400. Look, if you don't give me them keys, Joe, I'm going to smack you. Please, Steve. Listen, I wouldn't be doing this if I thought there was any other way to save the factory. All right, I'll give you 500 quid. We'll be home in half an hour. 500 quid? Yeah. All right, I'll do it. Good luck. Hi, love. How's it going? I brought you some turf to clean it brushes. Yeah, fine. I didn't know you were coming. Well, you're busy, Matt. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is, yeah. Les is here. Oh, yeah. We sort of invited himself. Are you doing all right? Yeah, don't worry about me. Yeah. It's hotting up now, isn't it? Yeah, listen, can you do me a favour? What kind of favour? Can you try and get Les out of the chair? Oh, is he not part of the artwork? No, he's not. My tutor's on his way. Well, I'll do what I can. Well, it's well, Oh, we'll do your best, yeah? Oh, and uh, try and keep him away from your mum and all. Well, I mean, if you want to show him that much, why did you invite him? I didn't. Kirk did. Oh! Are you paying, Jen? No, I'm not. You're drinking, are you? Now, these students are doing my head in because they bring this cheap cider and then now they're drinking all the good lager. Well, the young, aren't right they? No, the cheap. Wes? <laughs> uh, Wes? Are you going to sit there all night? I don't know. Sounds like a plan. But you're supposed to be painting. I'm the foreman. You carry on with the good work. Hey, I reckon you need a bit more blue up there. Here, do you want me to do that? No, I can manage. I take it you've checked there's no alarm. <sighs> Steve, why would anyone alarm a warehouse full of knickers in case anyone was stupid enough to nick them? There's no alarm. I'm... <sighs> See? No alarm. Right, come on, let's get this done. Oh, uh, got you these. I suppose you've got a stocking mask in there as well, have you? Sorry, mate. Right. Start looking for the underworld order. All right. What's it look like? Boxes. Boxes, right. Wonder what she's doing now, eh? What who's doing? Maria. Oh, I don't know. Rounding up some huskies. <laughs> don't think I'll ever meet a girl like that again. Of course she will. You know, I was thinking of packing it all in over here and going to Canada to fetch her back. Oh, Ty, I've told you. She doesn't want you. She chose the mountain. Save your money and get the next round in. Yeah, well, in a minute. I knew you could do it. Yeah, but not if you'd been there. Mike wouldn't trust you as far as he could throw you, mate. It doesn't matter. You came through for me. Hey, Gina, two brandies, large ones. Where's lover boy tonight? Can I find him a drink? Yeah, we'll be here soon. Get a drink. Are you? Don't let me down, right? I put myself on a line for you here. This deal is in the bank. I can sell the Underworld stock and make 30% profit. That'll pay back Mike and get me out of the sticky stuff. You know, I should charge you commission. I'll tell you what, once I'm rolling again, we should work together more often. <laughs> no, working with family's dangerous. What do you mean dangerous? It's dangerous. It's more dangerous not working with family. Five, six, ten. Keep a change. It's a 20 pound note. I know. Have one yourself. I don't want a drink, thanks. I'll let you change. Nice girl. Cheers. <laughs> what do you look like? Hey, you've got to come over the road. It's great. The place is full of students. What, boy students or girl students? Girl students? Really fit girl students. And it's wall to wall with women and there's only me and Les there. Hey, I like them odds. What happened to you? Hey, come on, sup up. We are going to a party. This man is in dire need of some stimulating female company. Come on. Have you ever thought of putting labels on your boxes? Huh? Or maybe using different coloured boxes. Look, just keep looking, all right? Hey, over there. 
is it. And that should be about 20 of them. Yes. I'll tell you what. I thought we had it back there. Yeah, well, let's just get out of here before they come back, shall we? Okay. Paul, it's really good here. Yeah. Annie must be dead busy. No problem. I can't stay long. Can I have a look at this chair? Uh, let me get you a drink first, yeah? Oh, thanks. Do you want this or not? Hiya. You all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'll let Troy have my chair. Right. Careful! Oh, all right, hold that. Right. You want to help them along in life when you can, don't you? You could help them do some painting. You seem to be doing all right. Come on, sit here. I don't think so, Les. I thought I'd made myself clear before. <laughs> yeah, clear as crystal. We could still sit together. Hey, Janice, you all right? Yeah, I love you. Hey, do you mind? We're talking, thanks. Uh, Janice, have you seen Karen? I think she wanted to ask you a favour. It's very important. Right, love, thanks. I'll see you later. Yeah. <laughs> what did you do that for? Do what? Eh? No, Les, will you come and have a look at this for us? Look at what? This wall, we need a bit of artistic advice. You what? Yeah, to tell you the truth, some of these students, they do better at painting by numbers. But you, you look like a man who knows something about decorating. Will you just come and give them a few points? I tell you what, I'll get you another can, eh? Oh, all right then. Uh -huh. This is it. Oh, am well. <laughs> <laughs> So it should be uh, exhibited properly, yeah. Preferably in um, a, an empty white room on a small plate. Right. Um, <laughs> the can and ashtray are part of the work. Oh yeah, yeah. They're uh, they're integral to the whole piece. I see. You know, last year one of our more imaginative students tried to pass up a pile of bricks as their art project. Really? What uh, uh, did they pass? No, they didn't. So tell me. When I look at this, I see a scabby, dirty <laughs> old armchair with a few stains on it. What do you see? How many more? That's your lot. Ah. Right, we've got to start to go to the off licence, and it get some booze for the party. Yeah, we'll have to be quick though, I'm picking up Gina. There you go, the party's on. Yeah. You're going to us a decorating party, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you make a good scene, my friend. Actually, I've got a confession to make. What? That's my first robbery. Really? Well, I'd have never guessed. I'm very impressed. Yeah, thanks. Right, let's get going. Oh, hang on a sec. What about the paperwork? What paperwork? Receipts, delivery notes. They'll have a record of when the order was delivered, won't they? And if we've got them, there's no evidence that the order was ever here. We haven't got time for that. We've got to get going. Don't worry, you stay here. Joe! Well, I'll go. Two seconds. You start the engine. Do you want tea? Yes, please. I wonder if Ashley would like a biscuit. Mum, we don't have to be like this. Like what? I want you to come to the christening. Do you? Well, then, you'll just have to tell that cheating, adulterous pig of a husband of mine that he can't come, won't you? at the office, sign some stuff out. Oh, right, well, should I come over to you, then? Because Preston hasn't gone in a while. No, er, uh, no, I'll come pick you up, like we said. Actually, that won't be long. Oh, right, OK. Oh, and uh, Dev's here and all. Dev? So what? Well, you said you wanted to see him about something, didn't you? Oh, yeah, Um. Listen, that's pretty much sorted itself out. Look, I can't talk right now. I'm in the middle of something really important. So, listen, I won't be long. I'll come over as soon as I can, all right? Bye. Thank you. 
stain tells a story. It's still just an old chair to me. Well, I think we have to look beyond the chair. Beyond the chair? Yeah, it's, it's like, a, it's, it's what the chair represents. And what does it represent? Modern man. Modern man? Yeah, you know, a, a guy who, who just sits in his chair all day long on his own. Too lazy to move? Yeah, he's lazy, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's got no job, he's got no, no meaning in his life, he just... He just sits all day and then smokes and drinks. Who, who's that bloke there with that soya? Maybe he's a mature student. His days drag on and on. He eats rubbish takeaway food in there and, and watches racing on the telly, wishing that he had enough money to make a bet and change his life. We're talking about slob culture. Yeah, exactly. Slob culture. That, that's exactly what it is. It, it, slob culture. <laughs> hey, hey try a love. Is there any more lagers about? Yeah, just a minute, let's Just wait there. Look, I'm sorry. I've really got to go. All right, I'll, I'll see you. Later. Call me tomorrow. We might be able to get the department minibus to bring it in. <laughs> Great. Thanks for the beer. Yeah, see ya. Hey, 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 yeah. Uh, what, what was all that about? Oh, nothing. He's just one of his shooters. He's not after you, is he? Because I'll have a word if you want me to. No, Les, it's fine. But let me get you another beer, yeah? What, what? Oh. What's up? What's going on? I've fallen down the stairs. <clears throat> Wait a minute. It's stopped. What does that mean? Please, we get out of here as quick as we can. Come on, get out of here! and leave us alone. <laughs> I panicked. You were going to save your own skin and dump me in it. I didn't, though, did I? Come and rescued you. Yeah, why? Guilty conscience? I don't know. Maybe more stupid than a lot. Well, that'd be tough, wouldn't it? What'd you say? Get down! I said get down! Come on! Coming! Mum, can we talk about this? Talk about what? The christening. I've said everything I'm going to say, and as far as I'm concerned, that's an end to it. You know, first thing tomorrow, I think I will buy a new nameplate for this house. Mum. How about the manor? It'll only cause more trouble. More trouble? Let's not forget who started this. I don't see why we should let Vera Duckworth win. She hasn't won. She's still got a sign up, hasn't she? I've a good mind to go over there and rip it down. Mum, please. I suppose I can understand you siding with your father over the christening, but why you think you should stand up for Vera Duckworth? Nobody's standing up for Vera Duckworth. No, then how come she can deface my sign and get away with it? She didn't deface your sign. Ashley. I did. You what? I never liked it and I never asked for it. Just thought you'd let me take the flaming thing down. I don't believe this. 
did you know about this? Well, does it really matter? Of course it matters! You let me think Vera had done it. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. You've made me look a right fool! Oh! No wonder Vera thinks I'm off my trolley! I always thought you had a nasty streak to you, Ashley Peacock. They always say you have to watch the quiet ones. I won't forget this. Mum, will you just shut up for five minutes? I she didn't mean to do it. You're just very difficult to talk to sometimes. Me? Don't be ridiculous. Ask anyone who knows me. They all say I'm very easy to talk to. Yeah, well, that must be wrong then. I've lived with you all my life and sometimes you can be a right pain in the neck. I just wish... wish sometimes you'd just think for five minutes. There's more important things in this world than some stupid nameplate. Like your marriage and your grandson's christening. It's getting late. I think I'll go to bed. What are you doing? That's all I like I'm doing. I'm trying to get me top off. <laughs> trying to get me top off. <laughs> you can't paint the outside. Of course I can. That is exterior grade masonry paint. Yeah, Kurt, right, I'm going to paint the whole street red. Oh, you know, or magnolia, whatever, whatever colour that is. Well, come back inside. Come on. Come and see the fire. It looks really good. No, you need to leave me alone. I need to express my artistic vision. But you'll get into trouble. So? Don't be such a wuss. Hey, you can help me. Let's do something spontaneous. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, Kurt, that wasn't what I was expecting. I like it. Well, uh, we can do it again, if you like. Not in the street? Well, uh, it, well, there's no one in at Leslie's, and I've got my key with me. OK, but well, I'll be giving you marks for artistic merit. <laughs> Right, come on, lead the way, pink boy. Ooh. Right, just got to make a quick phone call. Why don't you strain yourself, will you? Stack them boxes near you, won't you? Brother's return. Hey, it's me. Where are you? Pub's closing. Yeah, I know, I know. Listen, I don't know what it is, but my guts are killing me. It must have been something I hate, love. I know. I'm really sorry. I feel as sick as a dog. Well, where are you? I'm at home. Would well, you want me to come round? No. No, no, I'm in bed already. Listen, I feel like death warmed up. I need to get some sleep, really. You got the party, eh? Yeah, well, I want to go with you. I know. I'm sorry, I'll make it up to you. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Bye. Well, you're a good liar, ain't it? Yeah, thanks. I should know. That's about myself. Ah. Be finished. Yep. It's all inside, and it be stacked. Good. That's your drink. I'd kill for. Mike's secret stash, innit? Hey, what about Karen? Did she expect you at the party? Yeah, well, I should be plastered by now. Anyway, I'm not in the mood to go to a party. How's the leg? Well, so... You don't want me to take you to casualty? No. It's not that bad. Thanks, you know, for everything. Yeah. When do I get my money? I don't carry that much on me, Steve, funnily enough. But I'll give it you tomorrow, I promise. Well, I trust you. I suppose Mike will be happy when he finds out half his scotch is gone. Nah, he won't mind, especially when he sees I got his order back for him. You don't know what this means, do you? I have saved the factory tonight. Mike was wasting his time with that dev. Naveen was never going to pay for his order. He's going bust. And he was going to drag us down with him and all. I can't wait to see that look on Dev's face when he finds out. This isn't over, you know. What do you mean, it's not over? Well, what if the police saw the van? What if they took down the registration number? What if there was a CCTV in the warehouse? The cops know the warehouse was robbed tonight. And your mate, Dev, has probably got a good idea who it is. So we could probably still go down for this. Hi. Hey. 
I was wondering if you've heard from that cousin of yours. You've got nothing to worry about, Michael. Has he got my money? He'll be at the bank first thing. <laughs> What's he going to do? Hold it up? No, but his little cash flow problem's been sorted. You can guarantee that, can you? Listen, not only am I going to guarantee it, but I'm going to go around to his warehouse at lunchtime, I'm going to pick up your money personally, and I will bring it back to you as soon as I get back. You sure? My word of honour. Well, I'd like to say it's been good doing business with you, Dev. I know, come on, don't be like that. Naveen's had some problems, I know, but uh, they've been ironed out. All's well that ends well. Let's hope so, shall we? Well, state you came in last night. Must have been a good one. <sighs> well, if you'd have bothered turning up, then you might have found that out. Yeah, well, I said I'm sorry. <laughs> it, disappearing all night, Steve. For all I know, anything could have been going on. I'm sorry. Right, come on, get up. Off me out and on your feet. Looks like we'll have to start again in here. Can't live with it like this. Fizz, come on, get up. I want this place sorted before you go to work. Fizz! Oh, you all right? Morning. What time is it? <laughs> Cleaning up time. Is she getting up? Who? Fizz. She's not in there. Right, it's her bedroom. Hey, did you and her end up her? No. It makes no odds to me. Yeah, well, she's not in there. You can check if you want. So what time did she get up, then? She didn't sleep here. I did. On my own. Hey, do you reckon she went home with someone? Must have, eh? Oh, and, uh, you were jealous and you wanted to be close to her. <laughs> You're joking, so... aren't you? Further away, the better. So you crept into her bedroom, snuggled up into her sheets and cried yourself to sleep. <laughs> Not in a million years. I tell you, whichever poor fellow woke up next to that this morning, I feel sorry for him. Hey, that's my mate you're talking about. Yeah, well, whoever it is, he won't hear the last of it. What are you waiting for? There's someone there! Oh. Morning, Richard. Curly, look, uh, I'm sorry, I, I know it's early. What can I do for you? Um... I wondered if you had any news on the bail hostel. Uh, apparently the planning committee had a meeting last night. Come on, Richard. I have a weekly surgery in the library, 7.30 Thursdays. I, I know, I know. I'm, I'm sorry to bother you. But, you see, I'm seeing a client this morning. It would be good to be able to update him. And uh, you only live on the road. So it was convenient? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. But I do need to know. Well, there's been a few more uh, complaints apart from yours, so I'm going to have to review the application. Really? Yeah, now, if you don't mind. Wait, 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 you mean it might not go ahead? No. Well, how long will the review take? Well, uh, six months, probably. Now, if you don't mind, I really have to go. Morning, Richard. Morning. Everything all right? Yeah. Manager will wait six months. Well, six months extra interest for him, isn't it? You know what bank managers are like. Well, after everything I've done over the last couple of weeks, he'll be eating out of the palm of my hand. Um, what happens if the bail hostel does eventually go ahead? I think we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. He's going to ask. It's no problem. He's going to want to know, are you going to repay the debt? What do you think I haven't thought of that? So what are you going to say? It's all in hand, Gail. I'm supposed to be your business partner, not just your wife. I know. So what are you going to say? Well, if the worst comes to the worst, Kellett Holdings will have to pay the debt off. Can they afford to? By the end of the winter, they will. The winter's the best time for Kellett Holdings. What do you mean? Most equity release schemes tend to mature over the winter months. Mature? You know. Oh, I see. I mean, it's a sad fact of life that the mortality rate tends to increase the worse the weather gets. So we should have at least a couple of schemes maturing over the next six months, which means less outgoings, more income. It's never hit me before. I'm the director of a company that thrives on people dying. You are the director of a company, Gail, that provides a service. Kellett Holdings gives cash to people in their twilight years, money that would go straight to the taxman they can spend on themselves. Now, what's wrong with that? 
Well, nothing, I suppose. Can't take it with you, can you? Just didn't realise how much me and Archie Shuttleworth had in common. You don't mind going out the back way, do you? No, no, we shouldn't be seen together. That's what I thought. Yeah, we don't want people gossiping. That's why I think we should keep this quiet. Oh, yeah, dead quiet. Yeah, it should be our secret. Yeah, don't even tell your mate. I won't. No need to lie. I'm saying nothing. Right, see ya. See ya. Vera, don't, don't start. I've only nipped out for some bread. I've got the time. I think there might have been a misunderstanding about all that nameplate business. What do you mean? I may have been a bit hasty <sighs> with my accusations. You won't? I may have jumped to conclusions. Conclusions that I now realise were a bit unfair. So you admit that it were you that were in the wrong? I know it wasn't you who vandalised the nameplate on our house. And... I'm sorry. Morning, ladies. Morning. Morning. Hey, Vera, can you tell I've not even been home yet? No. <laughs> Go away. I must look around, stay. Got lucky last night with this gorgeous student. Real hunk he was. <laughs> Very nice, love. No, nice isn't the word, Vera. <laughs> so, who were it then that vandalised it? Uh, we're just some kids. And I've apologised now, so could we just forget about it? <sighs> Doing? I'm going for my breakfast. We look like a couple now. Well, I didn't know you was going to be there when he opened the door. Couldn't you have waited for five minutes? I'm hungry. Right, stop walking. You stop walking. Oh, great. If he guesses there's something going on between us, everyone in the factory will know. I'm pretending I'm waiting for a bus. <sighs> yeah, right, Joe. Right. Oh, what's up with your foot? Never mind my foot. Aren't you going the wrong way? Ah, uh, I've been a bit of a dirty stop out. Had a night of passion with a hunky student. I tell you what, Joe, some of these students, they know a thing or two. Best I've ever had, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Actually, I'd rather not know what you mean. Make sure you're not late for work, all right? I'll be there. Hey, did you mean that? What? Best you've ever had. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Me too. What? Best you've ever had? Yeah. Oh, should we do it again? I will if you will. What are you doing tonight? You've got some explaining to do. Yeah, well, I don't get it. I mean, if Vicky needed a favour, why didn't he ask one of the other lads to do it? I mean, how come you had to do it? Well, they were all busy and I, uh, I owed him one. All right. Good pie last night, weren't it? Yeah, if you say so. Yeah, well, now you owe him one, so he can cover your shift on Saturday night and you can take me out. Well, I'll ask him that. And don't be doing that again, right? <laughs> don't worry, I won't. Right, who helped you? No one. You mean you were on your own? Yeah. You're telling me you broke into a warehouse on your own and stole 5,000 dozen pairs of knickers? I didn't steal them, I got them back. Well, why didn't you tell me? I wanted to keep you out of it in case something went wrong. Keep me out of it? They're on my premises now. It's your property, Mike. No, they are not. I'm getting paid for them today. Come on, you were getting paid for it yesterday and the day before. You had no intention of coughing up for it. Well, we'll never know now, will we? Look, you're just out of jail. I gave you a chance. I put my faith in you. And what do you do behind my back? You break into warehouses. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't get on the phone to the police and hand you in. <laughs> Your morning? Weird. My tutor likes Leslie's church so much that he wants to enter it into the uni art exhibition. Oh, nice one. Yeah, it's up for a 500 quid prize. Can you believe it? Uh, no. <laughs> I'll tell you what else I can't believe either. The muscles on this student that I copped off with last night. Dead fit he was. Oh, what was his name? Oh, you don't know him. Well, if he's a student, I must do. I invited them all. Yeah, I didn't ask his name. <laughs> you didn't ask his name? I tell you, I wasn't looking for commitment. It was a one-night stand. So did anyone else cop off? Oh, the lads reckon Kirk did. Oh, did he? <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine copping off with Kirk? Ooh. <laughs> there he is, lover boy. Hey! Here he is, cutting 
Nation Street's Casanova. <laughs> you were making some noise last night, weren't you, lad? Come on, Kirk, spill the beans. Don't just spill. How was she, Ed? Who was she? A student. Dead yeah. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> what was she studying? <laughs> the Karma Sutra, by the sounds of it. Go on, lad. Hey, great party, weren't it? Yeah, for you, maybe. All I got was a stiff neck. Say, nah, could have been worse. Tyrone ended up with his. <laughs> no way! No. I wouldn't touch her with a ten-foot bars, oh. Paul. <laughs> oh, could oh. you imagine it? <laughs> <laughs> this shows expenditure set against income. I've included my wife's earnings there, and as you can see, it balances out quite comfortably. Right. Uh, now, as far as reducing the debt's concerned, I've, uh, I've sold the car, which is one of the things you suggested, if you remember, last time. I'm selling one of the four flats at a reduced cost, just to tide me over. Now, that sale's going through. Uh, that should net another 65 k You'll find all the documentation in there. And my wife has remortgaged her house. And as a result of that, now, today, I can give you a cheque for £17,500. That's the full amount of the equity released by the remortgage. And that's how serious I am about working with you on this, Keith. That's how committed I am. Well, I'm sorry, it's not good enough. It's not good enough by a long way. All right, is there Steve Edward were you about covering his shift? When? Saturday night. <laughs> you must be joking, I am sick of covering for him. I think you owe him one. Oh yeah, and when was the last time he covered for me? Can't you remember? Er, uh, no. Why don't you try last night? Last night? Yeah, you know, your auntie's surprised 60th. Oh, yeah, you know, now you come to mention that. it. Yeah, I did forget about it, yeah. But I thought you were sick of covering for him. Look, Karen, don't involve me. No, you, know. you know what, when you see him, just pass on a message. What? Tell him I'm going to kill him. You spent £12,000 on a wedding. And my honeymoon. When you had a debt of 350000 I had an asset of 480. I didn't know about the bail hostel at the time. And, well, you should have done. Anyway, it might not matter. Probably won't go ahead. If it doesn't, I'll make a big profit. Yes, and if it does, you'll make a big loss. I'll be able to keep going until the council do their review. Yes, you can survive on what you and Mrs Hillman are earning. Yeah, so where's the problem? The problem is I can't see from any of this how you're going to reduce your debt. I've reduced it by nearly 90 grand in less than two weeks. Yes, with a series of one-off measures. I've remortgaged my own home. I've sold the family car. Do you know what that meant to me? Yes. I'm but... selling one of my flats at a loss. What do you want, man? Blood! I want to know what you're going to do if the bail hostel gets built. You're supposed to be a financial advisor. Advise me. What's your contingency plan? I'm expecting a big growth in income over the winter. Why? I've got a big contract in the offing. Kellett Holdings, old client of mine. They've asked me to do some consultancy work for them. And how much will this contract be worth? Five figures, some, at least. Well, why is none of it down here? Well, we're still talking about it. Oh, so it's not definite, then? Oh, yeah, it's definite. How can you be so sure? I have a good relationship with a company director. Who is? A woman called Gail Platt. She won't let me down. And when will we see the benefit of this big new contract? Year end at the latest. It's all if, buts and maybes, isn't it? The bail hostel might not go ahead. Kellett Holdings might not give you a big new contract. They will. Well, they'd better do. Because if you don't get a serious injection of fresh funds by the end of the year, you'll be finished. You'll lose the ridings, you'll lose the home you're living in now. You'll be bankrupt, Richard. Oh, aye. Scarving again, are we? Did you tell Karen you were covering for me last night? Why? You should have told me and all. You've not told her, have you? Well, I didn't know, did I? Oh. Well, how's she taking it? Er, uh, she said she was going to kill you. What's happened to you? 
to his back? What's he suffering with? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's nothing. Yeah, I was, uh, I was running for the toilet in the middle of the night. I tripped over my shoes. Listen, I'll tell you about it in a minute, OK? Tell you, Mike's not very happy about what happened last night. Yeah? Well, he's not the only one. He's still only 500 quid for that. I know. He's training to call the police. Oh, well, this just gets better and better, doesn't it? I thought we were supposed to be doing him a favour. Yeah, we were. It's just he don't see it like that yet. But he will do, OK? Yeah, well, I still want paying for it. And then he went back inside because of you last night. Yeah, I know you did, Steve, and you will get it. I've been looking over my shoulder all day, Joe. Look, Steve, no one knows you were there, OK? And if the police start sniffing around, don't worry. I'll protect you. Oh, well, that's great, isn't it? Who's going to protect me from your wife? So how did it go? Did you have him eating out of the palm of your hand? Of course. There's risk-takers like me that drive the economy. I mean, banks realise that. That's why they support entrepreneurs. <laughs> Lucky for us. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to wait and see how the bail hostel review goes, and in the meantime, wait for one or two of the equity release schemes to mature over the winter. Well, knowing bank managers, you'll be praying for snow and power cuts. <laughs> <laughs> but... What happens if none of them do mature? Well, I've got a couple of months breathing space now. A couple of months to come up with an alternative business plan. And that's what I'll be concentrating my efforts on over the next few days. Flash your side down underneath. Look, before you say anything, I'm sorry. So you've seen Vic then, have you? Yes. And I'm really sorry. Come on, then. Let's get it over with. I mean, what is it you're sorry for? What have you done? I've done something really stupid. Well, if you were with another woman last night, Steve, then you're dead. I was with Joe Carter. I was doing him a favour. And why would you do him a favour? I don't know. Because isn't he the one that got me sacked? Well, I thought it might help get your job back. And there was 500 quid in it, so... Right, well, what, what kind of favour? Somebody ripped off Underworld. It was a big order. They never paid for it, so we broke into the warehouse. You broke in? Yes, we broke in. We got it back. All right, so in other words, you stole it? Well, that's a matter of opinion. I mean... Steve, in, in the opinion of the police, did you steal it? Well, let's put it this way. If I get caught for it, I'm going back inside. Idiot. <sighs> Stupid idiot. Yes, I know. I'm going to strangle Joe Carter when I get my hands on him. I love you. Gina! I'm busy. Where's your jailbird boyfriend? I said I am busy. Now get lost, Deb, because I'm really not in the mood. Yeah. Emily! Oh, hello. <laughs> How are you these days? Never better, Richard. Fit as a fiddle. Good, good. Glad to hear it. I'm thinking about booking a winter holiday, actually. Oh, yeah. Well, somewhere sunny. I've got a bit of extra cash to play with, thanks to your son-in-law here. Me too. Do you know, you're a long time dead, so uh, spend it while you can, that's what I say. <laughs> let me get these, Richard. No, 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 no. L let me get them. What, what are you having? That's one fifty, please. Come on, anyway. get Emily's out of that. Oh, oh thanks, Audrey. And a uh, gin and tonic, uh, dry white wine for Gail, whatever Richard's having, and one for yourself. Oh, thanks. Uh, Black Ah, uh, yes. Look at his face, Emily. <laughs> You're so old-fashioned, Richard. Come on. I'm a woman of independent means. Me, You of all people should know that. I do not need a fella to buy me drinks. <laughs> I've been looking for you. So? You found me. You broke into my cousin's warehouse last night. I don't know what you're telling me. No, you know, all right? You want to go, do you? Hey, hey, pack it in, the pair of you. I am sick to death of you two. If you want to fight, take it outside, because there's people trying to have a quiet drink in here. There'll be no fighting in here. We're going to sit down, have a drink, and discuss our differences like gentlemen, all right? All right? Now, get over there. Three last scotch when you've got a minute, please, Gina. Right, are you sure this is safe? Les will be in the pub till last orders. Are you sure? He's always in the pub till last orders. Well, unless he's working. Either way, we'll have the house to ourselves. <laughs> In the football. Oh, what are we gonna do now? What about that? Oh, Kirk, it's Mindy. Shh. There's a clean sheet hanging on next door's line. What about if I cover the couch with it? Go on then, Romeo. <laughs> oh. oh. 
I won't be a minute. <laughs> Anyway, oh, yeah. you've got your change. Oh, dearie me. Another one of my senior moments. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Gina. It's easily done. Well, it is by me, honestly, Emily. Do you know, I think I'd lose my head if it wasn't screwed off. Well, you've always been a bit like that, ma'am. I don't think you can blame it on age. Uh, touch wood. Huh? Oh, you don't even joke about it. It's my worst nightmare. The friend of mine from church, mm. Jessie McLennan. Oh, she used to have such an active mind. She lived alone. Totally independent, but no. I mean, she still comes to church because her son brings her, but he doesn't know where she is <gasps> or what she's doing. If, if it wasn't for him, she'd be totally helpless. She couldn't survive. Well, I don't think I'm that bad. Well, yet. Oh. <laughs> I gave you my word. Which is worth what, exactly? Oh, Joe, yeah. just shut up, will you? I told you that you'd have your money today and then you go and pull a stunt like this. I didn't know anything about it until I found the stuff this morning. You found it? Yeah, it was there when I opened up. So you admit you've got it? Oh, I've got it all right. The question is, have you got the money? You think Naveen will do business with you now? That's a no, is it? That's a no! See? He's not even got the money, never has had. I'd have it if it wasn't for you. And his cousin never had any intention of paying for that order, which is why I did what I did. Well, that's a confession, is it? That's a boast, man. Look, will the pair of you keep your voices down? Did you actually see the money? I don't need to see it. I trust my cousin, you should trust me. I do. Yes, yeah, so prove it! Sack this low life. Get rid of him, once and for all, or I'll go to the police and I'll do it for you. sheet doing draped over that tatty couch in your backyard. I don't know. <laughs> well, it was hanging on my line yesterday. So? Yeah. So, it was on that yeah. couch this morning. Have you and Les been using it as some kind of throw? They haven't touched your sheet. Well, how did it get there, then? The wind must have blew it. Hasn't been a breath of wind for days. You could have flown a kite last night. You not only live in a world of your own, you've got your own weather now. It was blustery. No, it wasn't. In fact, it was a good trying day. Do you think I'm stupid? The pegs are still on the line, all six of them. Well, I'll have a look. If your sheet's there, I'll Is bring you... there all right? Well, I'll bring it round after I've been to the shop, then. What's up, Fizz? Go out to yourself, boy. What, me? No, can't wait to see the back of place, Joe. So, have you come up with an alternative business plan? I've, um, I've got the germ of an idea. And is it going to sort out our financial problems? You've got nothing to worry about, oh. Gail. Except a bail hostel and a mild winter. Hey, hey, don't start talking like that outside, you know. Bad for business. My lips are sealed. But seriously, do you have a plan? Well, I'm working on something. I just need to test its viability first. As long as I can leave it in the safe hands of my financial advisor. You can. Mm, don't worry about a thing. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Mum. I've just got some more information about some... Oh, sorry to bother you, Richard. Mother-in-law's are. Uh... Audrey, I couldn't be more happy to see you. Come in, sit down. Thank you. Well, another day, another dollar. No sign of the cops. And I'm still in a job. It's got to mean something. Don't count your chickens. Hey, Mike, you and me, man to man, you know I did the right thing getting that stock back, don't you? Do I? Well, if you were going to sack me, you would have done it by now. If I was going to sack you, I'd have a replacement lined up first. All right, listen. If there were going to be any comeback in this break-in, well, it would have happened by now, wouldn't it? The cops would be banging on that door, and we ain't heard a dicky bird. Still plenty of time. The Allahans were ripping us off. They know it, and you know it. Dev would never rip me off. All right, maybe. Just maybe Dev wasn't in on it, but that cousin of his, Naveen, he was never going to pay for that order. And I don't regret a single thing I did. That's the police. You'll regret it. All right, all right, I'm coming! Oh. What do you want? Maxine upstairs with the baby, is she? She's gone out with him. Oh, right. I'll do tea then, shall I? Where have they gone? <coughs> She's gone to see Derek and Donna. Oh, poor little thing. We'll have to give him a good bath when he gets home. She's gone to tell Derek that if he goes a christening, then you're not going. She shouldn't have to do that. I know. 
You should have done it. It should be you telling him he can't come. She's not going to tell him he can't come. We want him there. She's going to ask him if he'll talk some sense into you. Him talk sense into me? Doreen, could you not just pull up with him for half a day? Why should I? Because he's Maxine's dad. It'll break her heart if he doesn't go. My dad's going. He's in pub now organising kitchen as we speak. It'll end in tears, Ashley. We want all the grandparents to be there. Letting Fred help with the catering, I mean. You'll end up with pork pies and nowt else. You could help him. I could. And you could say you were going. You're going to your grandson's christening no matter what. And that nobody, especially the likes of Derek, can keep you away from that church. I think it'll make you look stronger. People will admire you for it. Maxine would love you for it. What are you doing? I'm off to the Rovers. Like you say, Fred needs a hand. So why is he still here? Why haven't you got rid of him? I never respond to threats to him. I run my own business in my own way. Yeah, and what way is that, Mike? The bent way? No. Now, if you sit down... So why are you still employing an ex-convict? Sit down. A self-confessed no. thief. I'm no thief. Why is he still working across the road from my shop? Unless you mean women, because that's what this is about, isn't it? What? Gina. No. I've got her. You want her? No. No, this is about you ripping off my cousin. I don't think so. No one's ripping anyone off. Why don't you both sit down and we work this out? OK. So you reckon that, despite all his bouncy checks, this cousin of yours now got the money to pay for what he ordered? You know, you would have had the money in your account if this fool hadn't gone jumping in feet first. Yes, so you keep saying. How do you think this makes me look? I set a deal up. I recommended you to my cousin because I thought we were friends. We are friends. Yeah, after this, I'm not too sure. Naveen feels like I betrayed him, and I tell you right now, Mike, I feel the same about you. All right, listen. This is the situation. We've got merchandise. Naveen wants it. We've agreed a price. You say he's now got no money to pay for it. Well, if that's true, that's great. Let him get his money, go to the bank, come here, stick it on the table. Then he can take his merchandise home with him. Jobs are good and everyone's a winner. But if he ain't got the money, well, why don't we just forget about the whole thing? Now, what is wrong with that? Are you going to get rid of him or not? I'm thinking about it. You know, you're judged by the company you keep, Mike. With him around, you can't be trusted. How long and if you we don't get rid of him, him for good, then I will. And that's a promise. There's no need for this, Dev. See that? I called his bluff and he threw in his hand, didn't he? Truth is, he doesn't know if Naveen's got that money or not, Mike. The truth is, you're too cocky for your own good. We're back to square one now. Don't worry about it. He won't do anything. He's all mouth. Police and formers usually are. And I tell you this, if the cops do come knocking, don't expect me to back you. <sighs> oh, good gracious. Are you staying for tea, Audrey? Uh, no, love, no thanks. I just popped in to tell you about the photographer. Uh, it's no trouble. No, honestly, I'll get off. But uh, you could ring me a taxi, please. I haven't got the car. Just as well. I've got nothing in. Oh. Well, I could always go to the chippy. Uh, no, thank you. You have to watch your figure when you get to my age. Oh, you couldn't get that, could you, Audrey? Oh, your wish is my command. It'll be David. <laughs> Forgotten his keys. Oh, no. <laughs> Hi, sweet. Hi, uh, Oh, well, where are you? Oh, yeah, uh, one for mm. 8 Coronation Street, please. Uh, Grassmere Drive. You should have a really big Audrey one. Roberts. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what you're doing here. I've come to tell you about Sunday. Oh, what's happening Sunday? Your grand's got a photographer coming round. Going to take a family portrait of us all. Taxi will be five minutes, Audrey. Oh, thanks, Richard. No problem. Hey, why don't you sit down while you're waiting? <sighs> I think I will. <laughs> there you are. How did it go? Brilliant. You'll never guess what's happened. What? Don has left him. For good? Yeah. Well, what happened? Well, I don't know. He won't tell me why. But he did keep asking after my mum. Wouldn't it be good if your mum and dad got back together? You just want to get rid of her. I'd want her to be happy. Yeah, you want her to go? Yeah, well, it would be nice for the house for ourselves again, wouldn't it? Yeah, brilliant. Where is she? Let's tell her. She's in pub. She's helping me dad to organise catering. How come? Because I think I persuaded to go anyway. Doesn't matter what Derek decided to do. 
Mm. Mm. My hero. Mm. Mm. Just think, my mum and dad getting back together on our baby's christening. Wouldn't that be a dream come true? Not much. No, I have to say, I think Doreen's right. Thank you, Harry. It's political correctness gone mad. Like it or not, vegetarians have to be catered for. Can you not see, man? It's there in black and white. Salad. They expect more nowadays. I do know that from when our Maxine doubled. If we go to all the trouble and expense of Thai, tater and tofu cakes, end up there, it'll all in a bin. How about stuffed vine leaves? What? It's a Greek dish. I know what it is, Doreen. Food is my forte. I've sampled some of the finest restaurants in northwest of England. But I don't think there'll be much call for that kind of fur at a Weatherfield christening. It's a, it's a small family do at our Ashley's. Oh, well, I think you should raise your sights. It's not just a small family do. It's our grandson's christening. She's got a point. OK. Stuff vine leaves. But let that be an end to it. Oh, I better help compile this list. She'll sulk if we mess about with it too much. Pity too many cooks here. Eh? I had that Ainsley Harriet in my toilet once. What? Not his toilet. One at Thurport. He used to clean them. Lovely man. Very hygienic. Which is good to see in the chef. No, no, Karen, I've had a bad day, all right. And believe me, it is about to get worse. I mean, what the hell do you think you're doing dragging my husband into your robbery? He told you about that? Yes, he has told me about that. Well, listen, it wasn't a robbery, and no-one else knows about it, so I'd keep quiet if I was you. Keep... Not robbery or not, he could still go to jail. Karen, it probably won't even get reported. The bloke we nicked the stuff off, he's a rip-off merchant, OK? And even if the police do get involved, no-one knows Steve had out to do with it, do they? So relax, it's OK. It's my neck that's on the line here. Yeah, I mean, it probably won't get reported. What's going on? Is it not obvious? It's just a routine inquiry, Mr Baldwin. Oh, yeah, what about? Do you know Mr Naveen Allahan? Yeah, he's one of my customers. Is he all right? Well, he was the victim of a robbery on Monday night. <laughs> What's going on? Joe Carter, my manager. DS Woodhead, PC Tamworth. I thought you'd gone home, Joe. Yeah, well, I saw the police going out the front. Just wondered if there was a problem. Well, apparently, Naveen Allahan's been robbed. Oh. Better cancel the taxi till we find the keys. Gail, yeah, I definitely put them in my bag, I remember. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am, they're not there now. <sighs> You're always having a go at me for losing my key. We've heard you apologise. David, shut it. I hate it when this happens. Well, retrace your steps back to the salon. You might find them in the street. <sighs> David, go with your gran. Help her look for her keys. I'll lay the table. You want to be more careful, gran. Well, I'm absolutely baffled. I mean... Where could they have got to? Oh, come on. You know, the police start interrogating him. And, I don't know, offering him some kind of deal. He will drop you right in it. Oh, no, he won't. Steve, why do you think you can trust him? That's the guy who gave me the sack. He ate my guts. Well, we get on all right with him. I don't even know why you agreed to help him in the first place. Ashley, Maxine, have you brought us a little visitor? Well, same as all she's trusting we're going to be discussing. <laughs> thought we'd better have. <laughs> I thought we could take him through to the park. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hand it over and move it to me. I'll there. Take him no, no, for come you, on, Maxine. come to your granddad. No, come on. No, come, I'll come take to him your granddad. Come, for come. You. What's this? You see? Said I'd bring it round. No, what's this? This mark on it. Oh, a cat must have sat on it or something. It's a footprint. You can see the tread on it. Oh, in the place, are you? What are you going to do, a forensic test? There's three of them. Two pointing down and one in the middle pointing up. I can see what's been going on here. Give it here and I'll get it washed for you. No, you won't. I'll wash it myself. I won't trust you to brush your own teeth, let alone my best bed linen. Keep away from my washing in future.
Gran! Have you found them? Yeah. Oh, where were they? Have you just put them there? No, that's what I found them. Just dangling. You better watch it, Gran. I think you're losing your marbles. Oh. <laughs> Ever had any problems with Naveen Alahan? Well, I take people as I find them. I haven't got any time for the rumour mill. What rumour mill? Look, I hardly know the bloke. I mean, if you want a character reference, all I can say is he's been all right to me up to now. I mean, I've only just started doing business with him. He's only just been robbed. Oh. Did he lose much? Enough. Still, as long as he's insured, eh? This deal you had with Mr. Hallahan, 5,000 dozen pairs of knickers, is that right? Yeah. Any idea who might want to steal ladies' underwear in that kind of quantity? Oh, you think they were stolen, do you? Well, that's what we're investigating. Oh, um... What's wrong? Well, it's, 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 it's a bit awkward. Why? Look, I'm not a grass, all right? Have you got something you want to tell us? You make an enemy in this trade, and next thing you know, your factory's burnt down. And if you're hiding something from me, next thing you know, you'll be arrested. Well, it was probably just uh, an honest mistake. Tell me what you know. Well, you know this uh, order that you said was stolen? Yeah, what about it? Well, see ya. What's it doing here? It's not due to be delivered till Monday. Are you sure? Yeah. I've got some documentation in the office if you want to see it. Joe, do us a favour. Get the Allahan file out, will you? It's in the pending tray. You see, what probably happened is they broke into the factory, right, and uh, took the place apart. Left his paperwork all over the place and he didn't know what was what. I mean, uh, it's easily done. I mean, just because he made a mistake with this lot, doesn't mean to say that the, what the rest of his claiming isn't kosher. You think? He's probably perfectly innocent. And if the rumours are true, perfectly convenient as well. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't get you. You lost me. You have heard he's on the verge of bankruptcy, though. Look, um, I don't want to get anyone into trouble. Have you heard that rumour, Mr Baldwin? Well, let's put it this way. I was intending on making him pay cash on delivery. Very wise. Well, thank you for your help, Mr Baldwin. Mr Carter. That's all right, any time. Sorry to bother you. No bother. Wild horses wouldn't keep me away from that christening on Sunday. Well, it looks like Donna's not going to be there. Especially if your dad's coming. I can hold me head up high. It's him who should be scared to show his face, carrying on with that red-headed floozy. She's left him. She's what? She's left him. Is this true? There. Yeah, Donna's a goner. <laughs> well, I can't say I'm surprised. The man's impossible to live with. So, Derek's on his own now. And for the rest of his miserable life, I hope. Oh, come on, Mum, you don't mean that. I've been talking to him. I think he wants you back. Do you know? Well, I might not want him back. Oh, I mean, you know, if you think about it, anyone could have walked by, seen these keys, and the whole salon would have been at their mercy. I want to tie him ranching out with a piece of string. That'll do a trick. Oi, enough. We all get a bit forgetful when we get older. I might just forget your pocket money this week if you don't stop getting on it. Oh, your it's OK, Richard. He's quite bright. I am a silly old fool. Hey, we've all done it, ma'am. Oh, sure. Cos I remember locking the door and then Emma were shouting at Kirk, you know, Maria's brother. They were having a row across the road about the weather for some reason. So I must have been distracted, left the keys in the lock. Oh, what an idiot. <laughs> what happened? Have they gone? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Mike handled them like a dream. Well, what did he do? He's got them all believing it was an insurance swindle. So you got away with it? Yeah, it looks like. Well, don't think that this lets you off the hook, Carter. Because it doesn't. Well, not with me. I took a big risk for you. Yeah, I know, and I'm grateful. Yeah, well, you owe me big time. Yeah, and I got it here. 500 quid, right? You think that's enough, dear? What more do you want? You can give Karen the job back. Get on. Yes, you can. Steve, if we were desperate for stuff, 
If we hadn't just lost a big order, if I wasn't still in the doghouse with Mike, I still wouldn't give her a job back. Well, they've got to get round to somehow. Yeah, well, you're going to have to try something else, aren't you? Is that right? That's all no, who's coming? No, no I'm mean, need a crate of tonics from the cellar. Well, can you not go and get it yourself? We're discussing a christening here. No, I can't. You better... Won't be a minute. Mum, about Dad. What about him? Do you really not want to get back with him? Infidelity. Betrayal. These are things it's very difficult to forgive. Not impossible the way, Doreen. I mean, if, if you go back with him, then he'll appreciate you more and uh, he'll love you more. And everybody makes mistakes. You two sound like you're desperate to push us back together again. No. no. We just want you to be happy. I mean, do you still love him? I still have some feelings for him, yes. Right, so if he apologises... If he grovels. If he grovels on hands and knees and works really hard, I might just considered talking to him again. I'm really looking forward to this christening. Me too. I'm the proprietor. I shouldn't be sent on wild goose chases by fired hands. I didn't know who was going for him, did I? I couldn't stand here supping and watch a lady bump every beer crate up them cellar stairs, boss, even if I had clocked off. Oh, <laughs> I could do with a few more gentlemen like you round here, Harry. <laughs> Aye, and you could do with a bit of a clear out in that cellar and all. I'm busy in back organising a christening. There's only me stands between congregation and tofu cakes. Has he paid you that 500 quid yet? Well, he's just giving it me now. Right, we'll hand it over. You can have half of it. I really don't think you're in a position to argue, Steve. Well, I was going to use it to pay off some of that stupid couch you bought. Oh, you mean the sofa? You mean the sofa that I don't actually get to use? No, I don't think so. So just give me the money. And if you think that I'm going to waste one single penny on debts or bills or food or anything practical, then, boy, have you got another thing coming. Uh, last scotch, please, baby. OK, love. You were brilliant back there. Do you think by sucking up to me you're going to get back in my good books? Oh, well, I'll turn that OK in the end, eh? Oh, you think it's over? Hmm. Well, yeah, Dev tried his worst and failed, and he talked us out of it. I don't think those police were down to Dev. Well, who else could it have been? He grassed us up like he said he would. No, I don't think so. They arrived too sharpish. I think it was just a routine inquiry like they said it was. Well, either way, I'm sorry about what happened. I know I took a gamble. No, I took a gamble. I gambled that someone like Naveen, hard up for cash, would bump up his insurance claim. So I uh, used my head and printed out a phony docket just in case. But if I'd have thought for one minute that Naveen had told him the truth, then you'd be on your way back to jail. So in future, I buck my ideas up if I was you. Alternative business plan of yours. <laughs> we don't have to talk about that, do we? Well, I was wondering what it is. Oh, it's... You wouldn't be very interested, Gail. It's very boring, believe me. But... It will work? Yeah, I think so. When will you know for sure? When are you going to do this viability test you were talking about? The wheels are already in motion. <sighs> you don't hang around, do you? Can't afford to. So... We are going to be OK. You are going to get it sorted. Yeah. Where there's a will, there's a way. There you go. One more sip for Mummy. Just trying to make sure that he has enough to eat so he doesn't cry in the middle of the service. What a idea. Not only ball at church down. I hope he's not going to be too traumatic for him. Max, it's only a christening. I know, but, I mean, they're not the most child-friendly places, churches, are they? Oh, why don't you phone Vicar? Ask him to put some postman pack pictures on the wall and get the organist to do wheels on bus instead of hymns. That's a good idea. Max, how are you joking? Uh, well, maybe I'll take a few of his toys just in case he gets upset, just to comfort him. What is she doing up there? She's been in that bathroom an hour. Hey, you should be encouraging her. The more effort she makes, the more she's going to lure him back. Yeah, well, I won't saw my breath on that sculler. Why not? Now Donna's out of the way, there's more chance of them getting back together again. After what he's done, think about it. Either he'll have to do a load of grovelling, which you can't see, or she'll have to swallow a load of pride, which you can't see either. 
Yeah, oh, they're going to realise that they can't live without each other. She'll be back home by tea time. At last! Oh, no, I'm not finished yet. I've just come to ask Maxine if I can borrow her creme d'elegance. Yeah, it's upstairs on my dressing table. Thanks, love. <sighs> I won't be long. I have to stay at home. We're having okay. a family portrait done. Why? Absolutely. Aid. Can't you think of anything else more interesting to take pictures of? I mean, it's not as if you're going to forget what each other looks like, is it? Listen, I can come out later where he's going to be. I can meet you. Oh, no, don't worry about it, cos we don't even know where we're going to be, do we? No. Oh, we'll see you later. Right. David, there's a very smart, very clean shirt okay. out on your bed. No, it's not. It's naff. I'm not wearing that. It's a family portrait. I'm not having you looking like a slob. Shows how much you know about what's cool. Right, that was the photographer. He's going to be half an hour late. He's got a flat tyre. You're in a chirpy mood. No, just my usual happy-go-lucky self. Like I told you, things are looking up. Oh, shouldn't your mother be here, by the way? When's she coming? <sighs> Probably forgot where we live. David. Look what happened the other day. Spent ages looking for them keys and they were in the door all along. Did you say the photographer's going to be late? About half an hour. And how long's he going to be here for? I don't know, a couple of hours. Oh, great. Well, I'm sorry, it's such an ordeal. What have you got to do that won't wait a couple of hours? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. I don't see why we have to have a stupid family portrait anyway. It's not like we're going to forget what each other looks like. This will make a good photo. Smile. <laughs> you know, I think you're right. Maybe it is a bit too soon for them both to put what's happened behind them. Got them on speaking terms. That'll be a start. Maybe we should give Cupid a little helping hand. Oh, just leave him to it, Max. Don't get involved. I am involved. I'm their daughter. Yeah, we'll learn sort things out by themselves. Besides, we should be thinking about Josh now, not them. Yeah, but you can't blow a golden opportunity like this. I mean, we might not even see each other for months. Yeah, you're right. Give them all the encouragement we can. <gasps> oh, Mum, look at you! Will I do? <gasps> You're more than do. You look fantastic, don't you, Ash? Irresistible. Do you think so? Oh, that hairdo takes years off you, doesn't it, Ash? Decades. Oh, thank you. Dad's going to be blown away. Hey, I hope you don't think this is all for his benefit. No, cos... No, no, I might just... not have much money, but I've got my pride, Maxine. I know. You will still sit with him in church. I mean, you see, when I mentioned it to him, he seemed really keen. When was this? When, um, he rang this morning. Oh? Oh, well... I... I suppose, as grandparents, we should sit together. You know, he was all for coming round here and taking him to the church himself. <laughs> he seems like a very unhappy man. A man that seems like he's learnt his lesson. A man that's desperate for forgiveness. What are you doing in here on a Sunday? Hey, well, I uh, told you I wasn't afraid of hard work when you took me on, didn't I? Well, it's not as if we got an order to get out. Yeah, no, I'm just uh, clearing out my desk so I can hit the ground running tomorrow. If you're trying to sweeten me up, you're wasting your time. Yeah, but I can take it you won't be dispensing with me services, Mike. Haven't decided yet. Well, come on, Mike. You can't just keep me sweating like this, you know. Well, what do you think I was doing when the police were sniffing round? Yeah, well, you've got your mate Dev to thank for that, haven't you? But they could do me now as well as you. Oh, no, no, no. If it came to it, I'd tell him I acted completely without your say-so. I've taken the flat before, Mike, and I'll do it again. It doesn't matter. I lied to the police. That makes me an accessory. Yeah, technically, Mike. Yeah. I don't want to hear any more excuses. I want you to promise me that you'll never pull a stunt like that again. Yeah. You've got my word, Mike. Good. Now go home and stop trying to creep round me. It's getting on my nerves. Is it money there? Ah, just family, really. Hey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is that child wearing? Mm -hmm. oh, it's the same clubber that some pop stars kid mm -hmm. wore for their Christmas. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hello, Mum. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Hiya. Okay. Uh, this is Kelly and Emma, the godparents, and their little baby, Ben. Oh. This is Beryl, uh, Ashley's mum. Oh, hiya. Uh, pleased to meet you. How do you do? And that was my little soldier. <laughs> this is <laughs> Cotton <Sauce. laughs> Oh, my daddy. Would you mind holding him for me a minute? Oh, of course I will. <laughs> oh. Hey, hey, hey. It's a proud day, is this? I say it's a proud day. I know. Well, well I, I didn't want to say out, but... Um, 
Actually, I'm a bit disappointed. Eh? Bobby's middle name. I know. Maxine put her foot down. No composers. Sorry, Dad. Oh, Dad! I'm so pleased to see you! I wouldn't have missed it for the world. I think I know somebody else who's pleased to see you as well. Oh, I. Yeah, she even asked me if I thought it was a good idea you sat together in the church. Did you? Yeah. Between you and me. I think she's really missing you. No. Don't just stand there, then go and talk to her. Now, before we have this photo done, can I just check, please? You are still happily married, aren't you? What sort of question is that? Well, the last time we had a family photo done, let's just say uh, Martin and Gail were going through a bit of a rough patch. Oh, I see. I mean, the last thing either of them wanted was to stand and play happy families. Well, uh, no problem so far, Touchwood. Oh. Oh, you have made Gail so happy, Richard. Well, the whole family, in fact. Well, I intend to carry on doing so, Audrey. Although I might have to fall out with you if you keep insisting on paying for these photos. Oh, it was my idea. It's my treat. Are you sure? Oh, Richard, come on. I'm not short of a bob or two, am I? Well, you of all people should know that. Audrey, your money's the last thing on my mind. <laughs> Photographer's here. Oh, Gordon. Oh. What have you been doing, eh? Hey? You look at them. Tell me what they're doing. Well... They're not doing anything. What makes you look happy? Well, Mark, just leave them to it. You've done your bit. Let's concentrate what we're here for. Get the camera out. What? Camera in the bag. Get the camera out. <laughs> Smile. Come on. Cheers. <laughs> All this takes me back to your christening. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> still see you now in your little blue and white outfit that you're at two city knitted. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley. I hope you don't think I've been maudlin, dragging all this up again on today of all days. Ma'am, what's the matter? You do still think of me as your mother, don't you? Of course I do, don't be daft. And I always loved you as if you were my own son. I still do. Well, I'll always love you as if you're my real man. That's the most important thing. Come here. Smile, Beryl. Let's go see it, Ricky. Mum, Dad, can I have a picture of you? Uh, yeah. Look, look, stand a bit closer, then. Oh, go on, Dad, put your arm round her. Can everyone start making the way to the church now, please? Be ready for us. Uh, milk and two sugars, was it? Yeah, please. Look at my hair at the back. Oh, that's lovely, Look, Just flick it up at the back. OK, but nobody's going to see that. I know that. Mm. I'll just cover that bit up there. Look. Is that how it's happening? Oh, lovely. Don't mess it up too much, because I've got the shade. You've done it, I know. I've got the shade. Yeah. So just do it. And I'm doing it. Oh, damn, I just remembered something. What? I, I promised to drop a form off to a client. I should have done it this morning. Oh, on a Sunday? Yeah, he's going back to Birmingham this afternoon. I'll have to go round. Well, what about the photo? Well, I, I can hardly afford to turn away business, Gail. Oh, look, tell you what, look, why don't I ask Gordon if he'll do some of me and Gail and then me and the kids? I'd love that. Well, it's going to take me 10 or 15 minutes to set up here anyway. There you are. Oh, great. Well, you can do the whole family when I get back. Well, it'll only take me about half an hour. Oh, we're going to be here all day at this rate. I'll be as quick as I can. Mr Carter, and what can we do for you? Hmm? Some stockings for your head, perhaps? I'm afraid we're all out of bolt cutters. I just going to tell you that your little stunt didn't work. The police, they didn't find a thing. Right, and you think I called them, do you? Come on, Dev, I know you did. Look, you broke into my cousin's warehouse. You really can't start complaining if the police start sniffing around besides your name. You must be on a list of local criminals. I took the necessary steps to retrieve some that belonged to my boss. You know, I think all that time that you spent in prison has given you this really warped view of the world. I think businesses that are going down the pan shouldn't take other people's stock. Listen, it was being sorted. 
right? I was sorting it legitimately without your help, and that's what really bugs you. You know, that sign behind your head says it all, doesn't it? What are you talking about? Well, you take the cash before you hand over the goods, don't you? Maybe... Maybe it's time Mike did the same. Cheers. Parents and godparents. The church receives Joshua with joy. Today, we are trusting God for his growth in faith. Will you pray for him? Draw him by your example into the community of faith and walk with him in the way of Christ. With the help, help of God, God we, we will. will. Um, the water's not too cold, is it? Excuse me, wife. She's an hairdresser. He'll be okay. Don't worry. Joshua, Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly as a disciple of Christ against the sin of the world and the devil. May Almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness, restore in you the image of his glory, and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. Amen. Mike, for the record, I didn't call the police. I'm glad to hear it. Oh, I was tempted, I admit. Only because I thought he'd get Carter off the scene, but if I land him in it, I land you in it, and this is caused enough bad luck between us. Yes, it has. Surely you can see what a liability he is. Some people think I should be grateful to him. I could have lost a lot of money. No way. There's no way you were going to lose out. I admit it was all taking a little bit longer than anyone wanted, but you know, to be honest, I thought you'd have a little bit more faith in me. I haven't really got much faith in anyone. If I've learned anything about this, it's don't mix business with pleasure. You believe me when I say I wasn't stringing you along, don't you? Do you believe me when I say I didn't know what Joe was up to? Yeah. But I can't believe that you still employ him. It's all right, you've got your stock back. But you lost your buyer in the process. And now? What are you going to do with it? Come on, darling. Oh. Keep smiling. Well, I would if Bethany had stayed still. Nearly done. Nearly done. That's it. Come on. <sighs> Sorry. Richard's been gone a long time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh, here, put this in your pocket. What is it? It's a little summer for our Joshua. It's a savings account I've opened up for him for when he's 18. Don't open it now. She was a bother, but thank you. Ah, I dare say he'll be glad of a bob or two when he's 18. He'll be glad of a bob or two. Neil, it's really good here, but he should sell. Gay bob. All right, champion. In fact, I'm very impressed by how well our Maxine's organised the whole day. We might have made a mess of our marriage, but we didn't do too badly as parents. Oh, I wouldn't call our marriage a mess. Time is a great healer, especially if accompanied by a bit of groveling. Who's meant to be doing the groveling, me or you? Oh, come on, Derek. I think we both know where this conversation is leading. Hey, Newsflash, Mum and Dad have been talking about three quarters of an hour now. Well, that's more than any of us could vote for. Yeah, I do, right. I tell you, she'll be back in the bags before we get into the buffeter rolls. They're getting on like a house on fire. <laughs> Don't you dare talk to me like that! Calm down, woman, you're causing a scene. The idea of you telling me not to get me hopes up. Who do you think you are? All I said was that just because I'm single again, that doesn't change anything between you and me. Just because you got off with some half wit bimbo, don't make your Julio Inglés. What's going on here now? Nothing, nothing, darling. We're just... just incapable of spending more than two minutes together without what? starting a fight. Yeah, we were just getting on fine. No, we weren't. We haven't got on fine since the mid-70s. Why do you think we split up? And your interfering didn't help much. I'm only trying to help. By telling both of us that the other wanted to get back together again. I wouldn't have you back if you were the last man on Earth. What? Are there a bloke queuing up at your door, are there? Look, I'm sorry you two have got marital problems. And there's no one more than me that likes to see you get back together. But this ain't the time or place to be having a row. This is my son's big day, my son. I'm not going to let anybody or nobody ruin it, OK? Well, that one needs opening. Yeah, sure. 
If you need someone to talk to, I'm, I'm here. Hmm? No, I'm, I'm fine, thank you. Is it something to do with Naveen? No, yes and no. You know, I feel like I've bent over backwards to make everybody happy and now I've just had it thrown all back in my face. Surely not. <sighs> my boy was a friend of mine. Well, why don't we shut the shop and go and have a drink? Well, we can't. Why not? No, we can't. You go and have a drink if you want. I want to have a drink with you. Come on, Dev. Your empire's not going to come crashing down just because you shut the shop for half an hour. Anyway, it's dead. Yeah, go on then. Why not? Right, well, thanks for coming, Dad. Oh, I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, well, wonderful. Oh, lovely. Sir. All right, my name is John Shiver. <laughs> He's not looking. No. Was it my fault his little floozy dumped him? Yeah. No. Then why take it out on me? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Ashley, if I'm speaking out of turn. No, it's all right. It's all finished now. I'm sure I didn't mean to upset you, Mum. He's dedicated his life to upsetting me. But at least now everyone could see what a pig he is. Don't get upset. Well, it's time the solicitors knew it as well. I mean it, Maxine. The gloves are off. Why don't you go and have a lie down? All right. Ash, why don't you leave that and come sit down with me here? Not much chance from getting back together now, is there? No, I think she's preparing herself for a long battle anyway. Not too long, I hope. I'm really sorry about today. Yeah, sure am I. I'm sorry for making such a fuss. No, you were right. I was just dead proud of you when you stuck up for Joshua. My son. That is my son, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not just saying that, trying to kid myself. But he is my son. Same way as I'm Beryl's son. I mean, don't matter what people say, she's the one that brought me up. She did everything for me. It's one to turn to, not Kathleen. Same way with Josh. I'm his dad. And only daddy knows and he ever will know. I just hope he hurries up and starts calling it because I can't wait. Right, nice big smiles oh, and yeah. really good. Oh, and... Hi. Hi. Right, here we are. Here we are. Yes, and lovely. Oh, oh sorry. I don't think I was looking One more, one more then. Was he in? Yeah, just caught him. We're ready for you. Oh, great. Where do I go? Uh, in between me and me mum. Oh, Richard. My two favourite women. Oh, and Sarah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's it. Now then. Nice big smile. Lovely. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm not going to get into all the gory details. Oh, no. go on. No. Not fit for the ears of a humble shop girl, oh, eh? I didn't mean it like that. Oh, I know. I'm just worried about it. <laughs> yeah, and I appreciate your concern. Believe me, I need all the friends I can get at the moment. Well, you're not exactly short on female friends. I should know. I have to lie about where you are when they phone up. Yeah, I'm looking for the right girl. Got to take the job seriously. <laughs> Come on. I've had enough. Mike. Oh, oh. I'm not asking for the pay rise, Mike. Good, because you wouldn't get one. Well, at the end of the day, we did get the gear back. Yes, I know. And you said if we lost that order, then he had sinkers. I did. So what I did was, all right, a bit drastic. But at the end of the day, it's all turned out, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Except I'm out of pocket. There's no way Naveen's going to pay for that stuff now. So I'm left with a stock room full of stuff and no customers. No, I suppose when you put it like that... So... You better get your thinking cap on, haven't you? You wanted another drink? I wanted to get back to the shop. Perfect compromise. Are we allowed to consume our own intoxicating liquors on the premises? Oh, well, listen, I'm not suggesting that you get hammered, honey. <laughs> so long as I can still work the till. <laughs> Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. I never thought of you as being lonely until what you said in the pub. Oh, I'm not saying I'm bored exactly, not like we have seven shops and a little black book the size of a telephone directory, but, yeah, I mean, I get lonely sometimes, don't you? Well, I haven't got seven shops and the only little black book I've got is the rent book. 
Uh, come on, come on, things ain't that bad. Oh, it makes it worse, you know, me not having anything to do with the family anymore. I mean, there's people around here I'm friendly with, but no one I've exactly clicked with. You need a man. You know, this wedding I've been invited to. No. Best mate from school. I love a wedding, but I've no one to go with. All right, so go on your own. What? And sit there, surrounded by couples? I'll go with you if you like. You? Sure. I mean, if you need an escort, it'll be fun. Listen, I hope that's not the wine talkie, because I'm going to hold you to well, it. Well, you can. You can put on your glad rags and we'd have a really good time. Brilliant. Oh, no, hang on. The keys. Oh, ma'am. Oh, it's all right, got them. <laughs> <laughs> bye, sweetheart. Bye, bye, ma'am. Thanks bye, a Richard. lot. Bye, Audrey. Oh, see ya. <laughs> Very nice of me, ma'am, to pay for those photos, you know. They want to come cheap. She's a very generous woman. You know, the older I get, the more I appreciate having her around. I think we're very lucky to have her. Yes, we are. Very lucky. Right, I wanted two eggs. Oh, he did. Okay. Take that. Tell you what, mate, give us a call back as soon as you can, will you? Yeah. I owe you one. Cheers. Good news. Maya wants me to shift some stock, and I've got a mate who might just be able to swing a deal our way. Looks like it could be a good week this week. Why don't we prepare for breakfast, then? No problem, sweetheart. You do realise I don't have to be in work for another hour. I could still be in bed. What, all on your own? Now, where's the fun in that? Yeah, well, if you were a real gentleman, you would have brought me breakfast in bed with the papers. Is that what Dev would have done? What did I say that for? I don't know, I'm sorry. I wish you wouldn't do that. Look, I know, I know, I'm sorry. Yeah, come here. Come here. I won't do it again, promise. Warm parma ham, radicchio and sun-blushed tomatoes in a lightly char-grilled baguette. A bacon butty by any other name still tastes as sweet. Yeah. Save up in a new deli across the road from the flat. Mm. Nice? Mmm, very nice. You haven't forgotten about this wedding, have you? Wedding? What wedding? Are you winding me up? Yeah, but only because it's so easy. You know, I wish you wouldn't do that. I'm not daft, you know. No, I know, I know, and I haven't forgotten, and we will be the stars of this wedding, baby. We will outshine the bride and groom. You do realise people might make assumptions if they see us together. You know, jump to conclusions. That's true. I mean, you're a good-looking girl, and I'm a handsome man. Well, maybe we should work out what we're going to say if they should ask. OK. Well, if they ask me, I'd have to tell them that you are the most important woman in my life. Does that sound OK? Yeah, that sounds fine. And if they ask you? Um, I shall say you're the man in my dreams. You know what, that sounds like we've got that one covered. Has anyone seen Bethany's red shoes? Uh, they were in the kitchen. Oh, I'll put them in the hall. Oh! Do you know, do you think it's wise spending a lot of money on a clapped-out old banger? I mean, if you want a car for a few days, you can always borrow mine. It's not an old banger, is it? No, it's not. It's a nice, clean, second-hand car at a fair price. And when the insurance money comes through on ours, we can sell this one and buy a new MPV. Hey, we could upgrade to one with a climate control and a CD changer. I thought it was only blogs who got excited about CD changers and climate control. You shouldn't let me read the brochure. Well, I suppose you know what you're doing. So, am I going to buy it? Yes, buy it. Great. We're back on the road, then. Right, you ready? Yeah, come on. Hey, Nick, just a minute. Who fancies going out for their tea tonight? Bit of a treat, save you the trouble. Oh, fine, by me. Um, I'm all right, thanks. I've got loads of school work. Oh, all right. How about you, sweetheart? Shall you and me go out for a tea? Yeah, if you want. Uh, well, don't sound so excited. <laughs> I'll pick you up after school. And what about football practice? We're uh, doing it at dinner time. They've got uh, another match on at end of school, so... Right, come on, then, before we're late for school. Oh. Bye, sweetheart. Where the hell you been? It's only just gone half past. I've been in since eight. I won't be in all morning, though. I've got four meetings before lunch, and then tonight I'm going to Scotland. Well, listen, I think I've got a buy for the Allan order. Aye. Well, it's nothing solid, but I'm playing on a hunch. A hunch? That stuff should have been sold like yesterday. Because of you, we're carrying too much stock. We've got no cash flow. Can't survive like this, you know. All right, all right. Well, I'm on the case, aren't I? Right, see you later. Hello, Wonderworld. Yeah, Jeff. What do you say? 
Okay. Do you tell her we're flexible on price? No, listen, uh, tell them we'll knock off 15%, all right? <sighs> OK. Bye. You wanted to see these? Yeah. Everything all right? Nope. Not unless you want to buy the airline order. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, it could drive someone to busting, thanks. <laughs> Not that I took any of it from here. I mean, I buy all my undies from that place next to market. Not that I think there's anything wrong with what we make yeah, here. Yeah, all right, Ailey, Ailey, that's enough, OK? Sorry. So. They don't want the Alan order. Well, they want it, they just don't want to pay for it. Well, you can't make folks do things that they don't want to do. <laughs> well, I don't know. Twist someone's arm hard enough, you could get them to do just about anything. Tell you what, get the lads in packing to put that Alan stuff on the van, will you? And let me have those. What do you want them for? Bait. You hold the fort. I'm going to go see a man about some knickers. <laughs> Calm down, Max. You don't need to get wound up. It's my first day back at work, Ashley. I'm bound to get wound up. It's a huge milestone for me. I wouldn't leave my baby for eight hours. I will be back at dinner, though. We'll be fine. It's not the first time I've looked after a baby, you know. <sighs> I know, but you sure you're all right, you know, after the christening and everything? Oh, how many times do I have to tell you? I'm fine. Are you sure? People get divorced every day. It's no big deal. It is a big deal. Maxine, go to work. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Go. I just feel so guilty abandoning my son, you know. What's he going to think of me when he grows up? Oh, don't worry, he won't remember. Do you think he might repress the memory? He's five months old, Maxine. Can you remember me leaving you to go back to work when you were five months old? I don't know. Why did you? See? He'll never know. Oh, do you think we're doing the right thing, Gash? Of course we are. I want him to respect me, not for somebody who just, you know, feeds him and cleans his bum. They're right, you know. It's hard for a woman to have it all. <laughs> Go away, they're not open yet. Oh, it's me, Fred, it's Peter. Well, seeing as it's you, <clears throat> no doubt this is personal and private. I'll go and put kettle on. OK, Fred. Why shouldn't you be at work? Do you know we were talking last night? Right, yeah. Well, what do you think to Mexico? Uh, I don't... I don't know Mexico. No, but you know what it is, don't you? Um, Central America? Yeah. Well, what about that for a fortnight? <laughs> yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah, great, OK. <laughs> I'm going to look into it. Hey, hang on. Are you serious? Yeah, of course I am, love. I mean, we've not had a holiday, have we? Not together. Oh, I thought you were messing about. Do you, do you really want to go to Mexico with me? Of course, yeah. Unless you want to go somewhere else. No, no, Mexico's great. It's just I'm a bit stunned, that's all. Mm. No one's ever asked me to go on holiday with them before. Apart from my mum and dad, but caravan in Skeggy's not quite Mexico with you and me, is it? Oh, no. I hope not. <laughs> anyway, uh, better get on, love. See you later. Bye. Hello. Oh, hello, mate. How are you? What are you up to these days? Yeah? OK. Oh, you better chuck in a couple of bags of crisps for all. Hey, is there going to be any celebs at this exhibition today? It's Uni Art Project, not the Tate Modern. Yeah, but there's going to be press there. He said it on the leaflet. Hey, and you're an artist. They're going to be wanting a picture. What are you going to wear? I don't know. I'm decided. Um, did I hear right? Have you got a piece of work in an art exhibition? Uh, yeah, yeah. Taya is going to be the star of the show. She's a major conceptual artist. <laughs> You should come. All the top knobs are going to be there. Well, I'm impressed. Oh, it's nothing really. Yeah, it's not open to the general public. It's just a bunch of uh, student projects. Is it just a coffee? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a shame. Sit down. I'll bring it over. Yeah, right. Thanks. And well done again. What did you tell him that for? You want as many people there as possible. No, I don't. I just want to pass my course. That's all. Uh, you know you're not going to stop me from coming. I wouldn't even try. But just keep a lid on it. All right. Oh, I don't understand you. If it were me, I'd be bragging about it all the time. I'd be shouting it from the rooftops. <laughs> shouting what from the rooftops? Uh, the factory girl's cake order. would be quicker than coming over. You could use the phone. Dial up and order them. Then they could be ready when you come to pick them up. Oh, that's a good idea, is that? Oh, I don't know. You batters, Biz. You're so creative. <laughs> Say 5.25. You must be joking. I don't even know why I'm talking to you. Why would I ever want to do business with you again? Well, that's a good question. Have you got an answer? Yeah, because you got no choice. Wrong answer. Take your van and clear it off. You're wasting my time. Hey, come on, come on. You and me, we're businessmen. We can sort this out. 
You robbed my factory! You wouldn't pay for your order, pal. I was ready. You never gave me a chance. Hey, listen. You and me, we come from the same mould, eh? I don't think so. Yeah, of course we do. We see an opportunity and we take it. And uh, we need each other. You see, I don't want to stay in Mike's shadow forever. And you need some new contacts. <laughs> Let's face it, most businesses around here, they're not going to touch you with a barge pole, are they? I could be one of the few people who could put some deals your way. Speaking of which, come on, have a look at these. What's this? Top of the range order, looks like going belly up. We're gonna be stuck with more stuff than we know what to do with it. Mike wants to get rid, so, uh, well, reckon I could swing you, what, 2,000 dozen? That cost. Now that is a good deal by anyone's book, especially for someone who can move fast. What do you think? You interested? I might be. Well, why should I trust you? Why? Because if Mike even knew I was telling you about this, he'd find me on the spot, wouldn't he? Now, you can either dub me in, or you can do a deal with me. Why don't you come inside? No, not till we sorted out the old business first. OK. I'll take it. I'll get my boys to unload the van. Not until I got your cash in my hands, you won't. I don't keep that kind of cash here. OK, I'll be off then. Nice talking to you. Uh, we'll wait. Give me five minutes, I'll see if I can sort something out. All right. the order. You counted all them boxes. I counted every pair of knickers. It's a bit early, but why don't we go for lunch? I know a nice place. Oh, yeah, I don't think so. Oh, got to go. Stuff to do. Sure. But we've uh, still got to talk about this new deal. What new deal? The samples you showed me. You said you were looking for a fast buyer. I lied. You what? I lied through me teeth. That's right. I made the whole thing up. Now, listen to me. I wouldn't do a deal with you if you were the last man alive. I'll tell you this. I intend to tell everybody I know in this business not to do deals with you either. You love Go on, then. Have a go. Come on. Get out of here. Your own mouth, aren't you? Pleasure doing business with you. You've got to go before you become a vegetarian. Don't know. You know, loads of top models and pop stars are vegetarians. The thing is, I don't like vegetables. I mean, I like chips and beans and macaroni cheese, but I can't stand broccoli and sprouts. Have you seen the film Signs? Yeah, sorry, when it first came out. Is it all right? It was OK. Aid hasn't seen it. He must have done. I was thinking of asking him. Do what you like. Go for it. Hey, Shelley's been singing your praises all morning. Yeah, why well, don't you every morning? Well, it's nice to see her so happy. Good. You keep her that way, yeah? Oh, yeah, I'll try. How's she coping? How's he coping? Doreen. She took a bit of a battering after christening. They bruise easily, the fur of sex. Well, some of them. She's threatening illegal action. Divorce. Right. So, no signs of her moving out, then. Right. Joe, Joe, where are the boxes? What boxes? The Allahan order. They were stacked in packing when I left, and now they've gone. Oh, I don't believe this. What? Well, that crook Dev, he's only gone and nicked it back while the lads have been on the lunch break, hasn't he? He's what? Hey, calm down, it's OK. I sold it. <laughs> you sold it? Count the money. What? Well, there were two. Naveen. No. Yep, full price and cash. Hey, you sure this isn't funny money? I checked every note myself. <laughs> oh, well done. You are a star. 
Hey, one o'clock, I've got a meeting with Hollands. Do you want to come? Uh, no, I've got some stuff to sort out here. Right, well, I'll put this in the bank, and uh, straight after lunch, I'm going to Scotland. And, uh, you can handle anything here, can't you? I want to spend as much time as I can with Adam. All right, well, listen, you have a good time. And you can pay the girls their bonuses now, because you are the number one man. <laughs> Oh, thank you. He seems happy. Yeah. Uh, hey, come in. Uh, yeah, we're just off for his dinner. Do you want me to walk up? Uh, no, I'm going to stay here. You couldn't do us a favour, could you? So, what do submariners do at these reunions? Oh, we get drunk mostly, and then we tell each other stories we've all heard a hundred times before. Sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is. I mean, you get to know blokes pretty well when you're in a tin can with them for months on end. You end up knowing your mates better than you know your wife. So, what's the problem? Okay. Ah, it's just we're getting on really well at the minute, and you know, I don't want to spoil it. And you talk to her about it. Well, they only rang me this morning. Yes, I know, talk to her. And I will when I get a chance. Oh, Gina, um, Joel says, can you go over to Factory straight away? What? Well, I'm working. Uh, he's had a bit of an accident, and he's asking for you. An accident? What, what kind of accident? I can't see you tonight. Because he's too risky. Besides, I'm going to toy his exhibition. Is he all right? Have you seen him? Seen him? I could come with you. No, because if people see us together, they're going to get suspicious. Hey, nobody's going to be suspicious about seeing me at an art exhibition. I love art, me. Hiya, Kirky boy! And what are you two whispering about? Uh, we were just talking about Toya's art exhibition. What art exhibition? No, it's nothing really, Les. It's just a college thing. She's one of the artists. You what? She never said out to me. No, she don't want to make a fuss. She's hardly told anyone. I mean, I only know because we share a flat. Uh, and I only know because I love art. Oh, yeah. Where is this art exhibition? <laughs> What's this? It's a picnic. To make up for not getting breakfast in bed. <laughs> An accident. I was expecting ambulances outside. You're out of breath. You know, I've just run all the way across the street. I'm sorry. In that case, I'll have to make sure you're not had a wasted journey, won't I? Now, by my reckoning, those girls have got about mm, 42 minutes of their lunch hour left. Which means you and I have got 42 minutes in which we won't be disturbed. Very nice, Richard. Well, it's done a few fouls, but it'll do for now. Yes. Now, look, I thought I'd take David Tempin bowling after school, so I'll bring him home about seven, OK? Yeah, that's that's fine. Um, will you be giving him tea at your ass? No, 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 we're staying here to the bowling. They've got cafes and everything there. Even got a bar. Oh, well, that's great. Well, I'll see you at seven, then. All right, it's very nice. <laughs> what do you think you was doing getting me involved with these people? I was doing you a favour. A favour? You're driving me under. Joe Carter has ripped me off twice now. Oh, why did I listen to you? You know nothing about the rag trade. I'm beginning to think you know nothing about business full stop. Naveen, if you were to pay when you were supposed to, we wouldn't be what? in the... This is my fault. It's standard business practice. You always pay at the last possible minute. Except when uh, Dev has set up the deal, then you end up having your warehouse ransacked by ex-cons. Well, look, if you want me to talk to Mike, if Joe Carter's been going around making bogus hey, promises hey, Dad, and... Uh, don't talk to Mike. Don't talk to anyone. You want to do something for me? Stay away. Stay a long way away. Stay out of business you know nothing about. Uh, you could tell Joe Carter if he comes anywhere near me, I'll punch his lights out. said she'd mind Bethany tonight for fancy going out. Yeah? You got a date then? No. I was thinking of asking you. Ask me what? If you fancy going to the pictures tonight. Want to see signs? Yeah. That's creepy, that is. What's creepy? Well, Candice asked me the very same thing no more than half an hour ago outside of school. We're going to catch the 7.45. Why don't you come? She asked you out? Yeah. She's already seen it. Well, maybe she likes it. Or maybe she likes me. Maybe she'd like a fat lip. Oh, I thought you two were friends. Yeah, so did I.
Hey, you look drop dead gorgeous in that. Do you reckon? Yeah. Gina, can I have a word, please? <sighs> what kind of word? In the back. Won't take long. Please, it's important. Yeah, well, I'm busy. Two minutes. The t truth of the matter is that I still have feelings for you. Okay, strong feelings. Oh, well, I don't like where this is going. No, please, Gina. Don't touch me. Look, I know that we can't go back to where we were. I accept that. I accept that it was my fault. But that doesn't mean that I've stopped caring about you. Is that it? Can we go now? Gina, you are a beautiful, intelligent, incredible woman. And you deserve better than me, much better, better than Joe Carter. Oh, change the record, Edev, because it's getting really boring. I'm worried about you. Yeah, well, I'm a big girl and I can look after myself. Can you? Can you? I'm not so sure. Well, let's see. I spent a lot of time with a lying, deceitful, manipulative man, so yeah, I think I'd know another one if he came along. Yeah? So where was Joe Carter last Monday night? I told you. I don't want to play any more games. Well, look, I'm not, I don't want to get the guy in trouble. I'm not going to go flab into anybody. But, but if he hasn't told you what I know, then he still isn't telling you the truth and nothing but. Why do you hate him so much? What did he ever do to you? Where did he say he was? In bed with a bad stomach. Last Monday, Joe Carter broke into my cousin's warehouse and he stole an order of underwear, a big order. He also stole all the paperwork for this order so it would look like the thing had never been delivered. Now, everybody knows this. The police know this. But Mike Baldwin lied for him and he got away by the skin of his teeth. You're loving this, aren't you? What would you wear for an art exhibition? Something smart or something tasty? Where is it? In the office. What's going on? Come on. Joe? Hey, talk about perfect timing. Just about done here. Tell you what, should we out for a meal tonight? Somewhere special. I'm working. So? Call in sick, surely you won't mind. But like you did last Monday. What do you mean? Well, you told me that you were sick in bed. But some folk actually think you were robbing a worries. Who told you? Doesn't matter who told me. I said who told you? So you're not denying it, then? Joe, you lied to me. I want to know who Dev told, you. told me! Dev! Oh, I'm going to kill him. I am. I'm going to flame and kill him. Where is he? I'm not here to talk about Dev. In his shop? Do you know what's worse than you lying? It's me having to hear it from someone else. Right, I'll go and find it yourself. Are you listening to me? Why do I have to hear everything second hand? Oh, come on, we can talk about this later. Who's more important, Joe? Me, I reckon. Well, you, obviously. Well, then stare and talk to me. Not now, Gina. What do you think? Oh, it's nice. Really? Yeah, you look terrific in that. Hey, does uh, Dev know these friends are yours? No, he's just doing me a favour, really. I get fed up with going to things on my own all the time. Well, you never know. If there's a nice, tasty fella at this wedding, all that could be a thing of the past. <laughs> Where is he? Who? Alahan. Oh, it's like that, is it? I said, where is he? Hey, excuse me. You're not talking to one of your machinists now, you know. He's out. You can go and check if you don't believe me. Well, where's he gone? I don't know. What do you want him for, anyway? When he does show his face, tell him I'm waiting for him, all right? What was all that about? There you go, Les. Salve. Cheers, Cheers. Uh, you're late. Yeah, we'll dock it for my wages then. Uh, what do you want, John? Oh, uh, I'll have a pint and a G and T for beer, love, please. I am feeling very generous. Have to get in my bonus today. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, love, uh, I meant to tell you I've, I've been invited to a reunion. Oh yeah. Yes, yeah, some of the lads off the subs. They're having a get together in London. It's next week. Chance to catch up with Kieran again, then, eh? Well, yeah, I mean, he'll, he'll probably be there, yeah. So are you going? Well, I, I don't know. I want to discuss it with you first. I'm just really surprised you want to see him again. I don't, but there's going to be plenty of other mates there. So how long will you be away? Just a weekend. 
OK, no, forget it. It's, it's, it's just a bad idea. No, no, no. It's fine by me. You go if you want to. No, because we don't get enough time together anyway. I probably won't even enjoy it with him there. Well, if you're sure, I'll leave it entirely up to you. Oh. Has he been in? We should never set out now. Well, has he or what? No. Has he been in? Dev. Have you seen him? No, why? What do you want him for? Well, where else could he be, Gina? I don't know. I think you've had your answer, haven't you, young man? Right. I'll be back later. And when he does come in, tell him he can't hide forever. What's between them two? Oh, just kick your nose out, will you, Les? Charming. Blimey, Vera. It's buzzing in here tonight. Listen, I'm going at ladies. Don't let anybody grab my place. Right. Well, Flaming nerve. Hey, you could stay here instead if you like it. There's going to be trouble. What? When Art Toya's launching her career as an artist? It's not like you to miss out on a bit of fun. Art is what separates us from animals. You want to get your priorities right. Well, let's go to the exhibition, then. We'll come back in here. Put it like that. You could be talking, son. Cheers. Cheers. There'll be people from the council there, apparently. What, tonight? Yeah, there's a prize for best exhibit. And Weatherfield Art Gallery's coming. Uh, you're not going to dress like that. Why not? Because you need to impress him. It's the art that's meant to impress him. It shouldn't matter what I look like. No, it's not as simple as that. Look, when you're going to charge ten grand for a dead dog or a toilet seat, you don't want him to think you're taking the mick. So? So, you dress up a bit. Makes him feel more comfortable. Well, how do you know all this? Uh, I've seen it on the telly. You see, it's all right in your studio to be covered in paint, but when you go to these exhibitions, they wear designer gear and all sorts. Look, all I'm bothered about tonight is a decent grade. Still, won't do any harm to look good, will it? Come on. What else have you got in that wardrobe? Come on. Ooh, come on. Don't know about you, but I could do with a cuppa. Why, losing make you thirsty? Oh, cheeky monkey. Well, you perked up. Listen, I only let you win because your mum said you were a bad loser. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Hang on, listen. What's that? Someone in the living room? Sounds like a radio to me. No, no, it can't be. No, it's your seven o'clock news, it's your radio. Oh. Seriously? I've never left it on, surely. Must have done. Well, I could have sworn I turned it off. Well, it was on. Oh, I don't know, sweetheart. I think your grand's losing the marbles. I honestly thought we got burglars. Better go make that tea. Yes. That's as long as I haven't left the tap on as well and flooded the kitchen. <laughs> <clears throat> hmm. Sorry I'm a bit late. Appointment ran over. How'd it go? Hmm, hard to say yet. New client? Old? A bit of both, really. It's that, uh, that long-term plan I was telling you about. I'm hoping something will come out of it soon. So what's story on uh, Joe and Gina, then? Cos there's something going off. Oh, don't ask me. Will you work at factory? Yeah. Like he posts details of his love life on Naughty's Boy. Too much in each other's pockets, if you ask me. How do you wear that out? Well, that's where a lot of couples go wrong. They want to be seeing each other all the time. Vera, what's the point of doing it if you're not going to be like that? Well, sometimes you need a bit of, uh, what do they call it these days? Space. Or else you get wound up otherwise. If some bloke asked me for some space, I'd think he were at it with somebody else. <laughs> well, that means that's the risk you've got to take. Hey, up his back. Did you find him? Oh, no. Well, you look like calmed down a bit. So now maybe we can talk. I don't think you should rush into this divorce thing, Mum. Why not? I'm not getting any younger, you know. Sooner I make myself free, sooner I can start to live again. I think that's a good idea. What do you mean? Well, I mean, you know, take some time to get over something like this. Well, it's not stop Derek. Yeah, and he's been dumped already. I mean, you don't want to take any more rejection at the moment, do you? Might take you a year or two to get back into the swing of things. Oh, you can forget about that. I could be pushing up daisies by then. Evening. Hiya. Oh, hello, love. It was your first day back at work. Yeah, fine. Right, I'm taking my tea upstairs for a long hot soak. I'll leave you both to it. Hey, one for the baffle. Don't use all that water. I'll make sure there's a drop left for you, Ashley. Don't fret. She's had all day do that. Yeah, well, you know, don't be too hard on her. She's a bit worried about this divorce thing. 
Yeah, well, it'd be for the best. No, do you think so? He couldn't carry on the way he was, Max. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Still upset him, though, you know. The thought of him selling the house that I grew up in and we spent the whole of their married life in. And what are they going to do? Well, they're going to have to, aren't they? They're going to buy their own places. She'll be much happier then. You'll see. Oh, well, I'm going if we're not going to see any action. Mm. We've got right promising, does it? We like vultures, aren't we? You have it to do, Vera. <laughs> see you, love. Right. I just want to know why you can't share your problems with me. Look, burgling a factory isn't something I want to go round sharing. I'm not proud of what I did. Well, why did you do it, then? Because there was no other way, was there? Look, I don't tell you these things because... I don't want you to think of me as some kind of common criminal. These things? Like that thing. There's nothing else, all right? Well, you see, this is where I can't trust you anymore. Well, you're just going to have to take my word for it, aren't you? Mm, first you don't tell me about being in prison, and now you don't tell me about this. Well, why waste my breath when i got Deb to do it for me, eh? <sighs> Unless we're talking now. You're not running around like a maniac threatening to kill people. Are you sure I'm all right in this? It's perfect. I've not worn it for ages, it's ancient. They'll believe anything you're telling me, that. Yeah, if I can stop shaking the will. Oh, there's nothing to worry about. That is as good as anything else in here. Do you think? Yeah. I mean, what is that supposed to be, eh? Huh? Now, this is one of my favourites. It says so much about the human condition. Really? The slow leakage. It's elemental, yet elegiac at the same time. <laughs> I mean, that's just my interpretation. Uh, oh, no, no, I'd agree with that. I like this too. It's understated, yet so full of wit. I see something different in it every time. Oh, now that is nice. I wouldn't mind having that on my sitting room wall. Yes, it's uh, tasteful enough. You could hardly call it art, though, could you? Oh, now this I'm very excited about. Toya Battersby, the artist, Councillor Naismith. Pleased to meet you. Me too. It's a terrific example of postmodern plebeian ennui. Of what? Uh, it's all about the, uh, the decline in working class culture. Uh, when you think what it used to be like, uh, community living, self-improvement, people like uh, D.H. Lawrence educating himself from nothing. The political awareness there used to be, the unemployment marches of the 30s. Well, all that's gone now. Instead, all you've got left is, uh, well, emptiness. Oh, I get your drift. Self-improvement has become self-indulgence. The inquiring mind is passive. Yes, well, speaking as a working-class man of the old school, I can see exactly what you're on about. Look at all that sloth. What was it Nye Bevan said? Poverty of expectation leads to poverty of the soul? Something like that. Very interesting. What's he called? Les's chair. Oh, good title. <laughs> hey, you're in there. <laughs> Is it that easy? <laughs> oh, no. What? How's he got here? Well, what, what am I going to say to him? Surprise, surprise! I've come to see your exhibition, love. Where is it? What's this doing here? Uh, this is it. What? My exhibition. We're an arts exhibition, not a bring and buy sale. It is. Uh, sorry to butt in, Toya. There's a buyer from London dying to meet you. Uh, hang on, pal. Hang on. Did you know about this? No. I bet you did, though, didn't you? Uh, well, yeah. So, come on, come on. What's it all about? Well, you see, this chair, it represents things. Like what? Like the uh, aspirational side of the working man. Come again? Well, this is where you spent a lot of time thinking about life and that, innit? You know, hoping, dreaming, wanting something better. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what it is. It's a symbol of hope in an empty world. Really? Yeah, that's why everyone likes it. My chair? Yeah, you heard that blow. There's a fella from London wants to meet her. A symbol of hope in an empty world. Did you hear that, Kirk? Yeah? My chair? You're a top, Walt Les. But I still don't get it. 
Why didn't you tell me? Ladies and gentlemen, we're now ready to announce the winners of the competition. A distinguished set of entries, so judging hasn't been easy, but in third place, for his pungently emotive leaking shower, Larry Brain. In second place, for the enigmatic dark grey canvas, Glenis Hilton. And finally, the winner, by a unanimous verdict, Les's Chair, by Toya yes! Patterson. Hey, hey. That's my daughter, you know. This is my old chair. It's all about me, is this? And I'm pleased to announce that the council will be buying Les's chair for permanent display in Weatherfield Art Gallery. Hey, hey, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Weatherfield is proud of its cultural heritage and will be spending £500 to stop this work of art going to a private collector. The old chair in a museum. This is brilliant. <laughs> How was it? All right. Yeah, fine. We treated ourselves to tea at the ball in Alice. Oh, thanks, man. Hey, you'll have to start watching what you eat now, you know. Why? You want to keep your place in the football team? You ask your games master about fitness and diet. Oh. Is there all on telly? Uh, never mind about telly. Start getting ready for bed. Yeah, OK. Oh, that's nice, sweetheart. Bless you. Good night. <laughs> well, that was easy. What have you given him? Yeah, it does seem a bit quiet. Really? It's not sickening for anything, is there? Not that I know of. Have you noticed anything, Richard? No. No, he's probably just working him too hard at his new school. No bad thing either. Oh! <laughs> I tell you what, I was glad he was with me when I got old. Why? What happened? Well, when we got in, I heard voices in the living room. Do you know, I honestly thought we got burglars. Do you know what? I'd left the radio on. No. Oh. It frightened me to death, I can tell you. Yeah, I bet it did. But I can swear I remember turning it off. I must be losing my memory. Well, we all do that sometimes. Yeah, I left the chip pan on once. Really? Yeah. Got watching telly, forgot it was on, went out to get a newspaper. You did? Yeah. Got back home, house full of smoke. <laughs> so you're not the only one, Audrey. Oh, well, thank you, Richard. You know I feel better for that. Well, I don't. Hope you're not going to be doing that again. Don't be silly. It was a one-off, same as Audrey. Oh. Well, that's to be hoped. Otherwise, they'll be carting me off. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Oh, go on. Life's to show. Uh. Peter. Yes, love. This reunion. Yeah. Well, it's Kieran that's getting in the way, isn't it? What do you mean? Well, just because he mucked us around before, there's no reason to let him do it again. I mean, it's daft to let him run our lives. I know, you know, but like I said, love, we don't get that much time together. Yeah, but we're not chained together, are we? I mean, and these reunions don't happen every five minutes. So what are you saying? Well, I'm saying you go if you want to. I mean, what have we got to be scared of? You don't get any old flames down there, have you? What, women on submarines? <laughs> oh, if only. Well, then go. That's only if you want to. Well... But only if you're sure. Well, yeah. How else are we going to learn to trust each other, eh? Exactly. Ah, great. Oh, well, thanks, love. So, I'll need a good divorce lawyer. I don't suppose you know any, do you? No, not me, but my dad will. Or my boy when he'll know of you. Remember what I said, though, Mum? Don't do anything before you're ready. No, she don't want to wait for Derek to put her on the back foot. Ashley, she'll do it when she's good and ready. I'm sure I'll find a happy medium. Did it ever occur to you? To what? Well, that Dev can only get to you like this because you keep things from me. If he didn't, he'd have no hold over you, would he? He'd have no hold over me either. Which is what he gets off on. Winding us both up and driving us apart. Yeah, well, I can't argue with that. Well, so then, if you tell me everything in future, then this wouldn't have to happen again. You'd have my trust and he'd be out the equation. I'd have your trust if you liked what you heard. Yeah, well, I hear it anyway. So I may as well hear it from the horse's mouth rather than it being dressed up to sound ten times worse. And what if you still didn't like it? Well, then... It'd be the end of us, wouldn't it? Just like in any relationship. But at least it'd be no lies. <sighs> Look. You don't want me to see you as a, a common criminal. So don't be one. 
He's someone I can respect. Otherwise, we haven't got a future. Well, I can't argue with that either. So is that a deal? OK. There'll be no more talk of violence. So, Mr Battersby. Oh, just call me Les. How about a picture of you in the chair? Is it OK? I mean, it's a museum piece now. Oh, I'm sure no one will mind. For the Gazette. Come on, let's get it down. Yeah, all right. Oh. Hey, my old chair, a masterpiece. I'm going to miss you, my old little comfy mate. <laughs> hey, Les, have a drink. Cheers, I think I've earned this. Les, what are you doing? Oh, 500 quid, eh? I've got a loft full of junk if you want more inspiration. Captain <laughs> Matt Brawl, Weatherfield Gazette. Oh, I do. Can I have a picture of you by the chair, please? Oh, with pleasure. Oh, that's great, great. Now, tell me, what is it about the chair that you like so much? Well, this chair is a wonderful example of plebeian ennui. Hmm. Could you expand on that? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, Forty years ago, your typical working-class man was a dignified creature with an inquiring mind who sought to improve himself. Since then, a yob culture has taken over, and we see this in the chair. The stained cushions suggest idleness. The lager and the ashtray show self-indulgence, and the tabloid newspaper low intelligence. In short, the chair shows all that's rotten about the dregs of today's society. Hey, who are you calling dregs? I'm sorry? That's my old chair, is that? <laughs> Someone created this for the exhibition. Yes, my daughter. Tell him, Troya, what it means. You're not going to have your old man insulted in public, are you? Well, it's not as simple as that, Les. It's a symbol of hope in, a, in an empty world, isn't it? Not exactly, no. You're not telling me he's right. Oh, roll on closing time. Where have you been? <laughs> Why? What's happened? Joe Carter's been looking for you. Uh, really? What did he want? He wouldn't, sir. We were hoping you might enlighten us. He didn't look too happy. Oh, poor thing. Oh, Dev, you mustn't joke about this. He looked really fired up. <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? Like, like s flames coming out of his ears? Or was it just smoke? He said he would be waiting for you when you got back, and he looked to me as if he was spoiling for a fight. A <laughs> fight? Ooh. Well, if he wants a fight, he can have one. You said you'd given that chair to a good home. I know. Instead, you made a laughing stock out of me. It was the art world I was laughing at. I don't know how you made that out. They were smirking all over their faces at me back there. Oh, look, they're the kind of idiots that had paid ten grand for a dead dog. I, I was taking the mickey out of them. You must have mentioned that stuff about dregs of society at some point. I didn't. It, it was that stupid counsellor. Oh, something like it. But I didn't mean for it to be personal. Then why did you do it behind me back? Because what he was saying is what you think of me. No, it isn't. But it was a spoof. You can dress it up how you like. The fact remains, you lied to me. You used me. You made a monkey out of me. I don't know how you've got the nerve to even look me in the eye. Two pints and two orange juice, please, shall I? OK, love. Remember what we said, right? You wanted to see me? Yeah, well, he doesn't anymore. Oh, really? Well, that's not what I heard. Spitting fire is what I heard. Leave it, Dev, yeah? But you did want to see me before. I did get that right. I think you should go. So what changed your mind? Dev, do what Gina says. I don't get this. One minute he's shouting the odds and next I can't get a squeak out see, of him. See, if you two have got something to sort out, go outside and do it. Right, calm down, Fred, calm down. Just playing it cool to impress Gina, are we? Hmm? Don't you know that she likes her men to deliver a bit more than just promises? Come here. You heard what he said, Gina. I'm not going to let him get away with that. Oh, I'm wasting my breath. Gina, wait. 
I remember everything we said tonight. Oh, I You'll never change. Just carry on lying. No, no, I have now. You just proved it. He wanted that fight. I can never trust you again, Joe. It's over. Gina. Gina! <laughs> I hate the smell of hospitals. All that time waiting, I thought you were never going to get seated. Not their fault, I suppose. Injuries aren't up to much by their standards. Mm. Listen, Sunita, I really appreciate everything you've done and uh, thank you for staying with me, but I think you should go home, get some sleep. You've got a wedding to go to. No, I'm, I'm going to phone Nimi up, tell I can't get there. She'll understand. No, come on, you've got to go. It's a big day. No, I'm stopping here. I want to make sure you're all right. There's um, a bottle of brandy over there. Would you get it? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Have one yourself. Not at five o'clock in the morning. Oh. Yeah, the doctor said that he thought I'd cracked a rib. <sighs> I'm damn sure of it. Yeah, let me help you. No, it's OK. I can do it. I'm not crippled. Though. No, thanks to Joe Carter. He wants locking up. Mm. That reminds me. <sighs> five o'clock. A bit early for making phone calls. But you're right about Mr. Carter. He should be back in jail so fast his feet don't touch the floor. I can do that, Haley. You work hard enough as it is. Oh, I like to do a bit. Anything interested in Paul? No, oh, just people desperate to lend us money as usual. Now, oh, hang on, this is from the council. Oh, oh dear. What? Oh, dear. Somebody wants to open one of those so called amusement arcades. What round here, you mean? Right next door. But in Sally Webster's old shop. Oh, yes, yes, it is. One of those horrible places which always seem to have strange oriental pot dogs in the window and even stranger young men with shaved heads and tattoos going in and out. Oh, I think you've been a little bit judgmental now, Roy. Mind you, his Ben's put off some of our customers if he's bang next door. Oh, dear, what are we going to do? We are going to object more strongly because rather than have my restaurant next door to one of those hell holes, I'd sooner close it down and move away. There's never anything to do around here. There's nothing to do and nowhere to go. Well, do you know that church you passed on the way to our house? Um, St Barnabas, I think it's called. Someone's told me they're going to start a youth club there. Ooh, wow, ping-pong and discussion groups. I can hardly contain the excitement. I'd sooner make my own entertainment. Wouldn't you, Sarah? Mm, yeah. Listen, do you want to come round to my house tonight? I'll get a couple of videos. Yeah, that sounds really good. What time? I was talking to Aidan. Yeah, well, I don't think Aidan will mind if I come round to your house. Do you? Either way, all the same to me. Cool. Well, that's sorted then, innit? We're not open yet. Yeah, look, I know. Especially not to you. Look, I have to speak to Gina. Oh. No, I just got away. Gina, just listen to me, love. There's nothing to say. It was all said last night. I know you were upset. And you had a reason to be. I admit that. I don't want this, Joe. Can't you understand? I'm finished with you, so just leave me alone. Can't be doing with it. Gina, just give us a chance. You can't go through there. You're upsetting her. Joe, just leave it, OK? I can't. Now, what's all this? I'm not having myself upset. I say I'm having none of that. You ought to be thoroughly ashamed of yourself. Oh, I'm sorry, Phil. All I want to do is talk to her, right? If you ask me, you did too much talking last night with your fists. Yeah, I know. I was out of order. Understatement of the year, is that? Brawling in my pub, a man could lose his licence. And I'm not the only one. If I understand your position with the police correctly... Now, I'm totting up the damage, and I shall expect you to pay for it. Yeah, I will, and I'm sorry, Fred. I accept your apology. I doubt if Gina will. For now, would you please let my staff get on with their jobs, OK? Yeah, OK. Just look at this. Splashed all over the Gazette. Council spends £500 on, quote, layabouts chair, unquote. Well, I know 500 quid don't go far these days, Curly, but all the same... See, what Mrs Sullivan is trying to say is there are better ways of spending ratepayers' money. Hey, let's hear your condescension, Norris. I wasn't trying to say it. I was saying it. It's impossible to please everyone. The council just can't win, whatever it does. Thanks. Thank you. This is uh, Les's chair on about, mm, right? Correct. <laughs> well, I'll say this. At least they've given <clears throat> the money to somebody we know. Yes, yes, it's granted. I mean, as a neighbour, Toya, I'm pleased for you, but, but in principle, I still say it's chucking good money away. Well, as a matter of fact... And the Gazette fact... agrees with me. Comment on page 10 here. See, look, this is a waste of public money and has to stop. I was trying to say 
that when I entered Leslie's chair into this exhibition, I was trying to do a, a send-up of this trendy conceptual so-called art. And they handed you a cheque for it. <laughs> so maybe somebody was trying to send you up. All this uproar in the paper. Well, now I'm worried someone's going to mark me exam grade down. Well, whatever you intended to, at least you've got people arguing, and that's what art is supposed to do, isn't it? I'm in enough trouble as it is. We're less. You won't even speak to me. Well, there's plenty of people around here who'd be glad to have that kind of trouble. Well, Roy thinks it's terrible, and so do I. Guys, somebody wants to open an amusement arcade next door to me and Roy. Hey, great! <laughs> oh, come on, Fizz, don't say that. Gambling machines aren't your scene, are they? Well, you get loads of lads in them places, don't you? So you know where to find them. You've got a point there, Fizz. Anyway, there's already a bookies over road. That's gambling, isn't it? Well, it's not the same thing. Like Roy says, with our cage you get your balls and fighting, don't you? And from what I heard this morning, there's been enough fighting round here as it is. Mm. Joe and Deb, you mean? Yeah. Wait till Baldwin gets to know. When's he due back? This afternoon, I think. Look at him. He's dreading Baldwin finding out. Do you know, he could be the new face in the doll cube tomorrow, eh? So where's uh, Gina today, then? Oh, I gave her the day she off. She, oh, she did come in, but she was in a right state. I didn't want to cry into customer's beer. <laughs> right, right. I'll help out today, love. But what was she upset for? I mean, it was her fella that won't fight, wasn't it? He's not her fella anymore. No, mm, she finished with him, cos of him hitting death. I once had two lads fight over me, you know. We are only 18. I used to go to this damn soul every Saturday night, above Quad Pit Wall. Anyway, it got to the last walls. Well, everybody's asked to dance then, even if you haven't pulled already. Cos those lads wanted to walk a girl home. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, these two lads wanted to dance with me. And one said, I'm dancing with her, I've just bought her a milk stout. So the other one said, just cos you bought her a drink, don't mean you own the poor cow's body, you know. <laughs> such a gentleman. Oh, romantic memories, eh, Vera? Oh, yeah. Good picture of me, innit? Never had me picture in the paper before. Yeah? Oh, I'm blazing me. I would never have let them take my photo if I'd have known what they were going to write about me. Look at you. Smiling like a lunatic. No one did he call you the laughing lodger. Are you smiling or not? But I didn't know they were going to stick the boot in, did I? And why did he keep using that word, layabout, eh? What would you sooner have had? I don't get or something. And he tracked up all the problems I've had with the law. Make me sound like a right villain. This I tell you, folks. Made a mockery of my chair and a mockery of me. How could she do it? I've got a terrific smile, my Anna. You know, I reckon I've got a look at that Russell Crowe. Oh, shut up, you twazzer. Get him in, it's your round. Yeah, well, I've taken a full account from me. I shouldn't think you'd have to push him on this. Yeah. Well, let's just uh, wait. See what happens. OK? You are going to eat those sandwiches, aren't you? Yeah, darling, I will, I will. It's just my, my jaw is, like, it's a bit painful. And I think one of my, my, my teeth's a bit loose. Uh, still nothing I can't live with. You shouldn't have to live with it. That Joe Carter's like some kind of animal. Mm. And the best place for him is in a cage. At least you look better than you did this morning. That sleep's done you good. Dev, you mustn't rush back into work. <laughs> you like fussing and washing over me, don't you? What is it, I bring out your maternal instincts? Something like that. I'll get that. Oh, Gina, yeah? Uh, he's through there. Oh, Dev. Looks worse than it is. I'll live. How do you feel? Feel? Like I was in a fight and got the worst of it. Still, the rematch will be played by my rules. The rematch? Dev, don't talk like that. Gina's right. No, I mean, don't get me wrong. I have no intention of swapping punches with Mr Carter, no. Sunita, listen, darling, you've been brilliant. You really have, and I'm eternally grateful. She's been like a mother hen. I was glad to help. But I think you should go and rest, OK? I'm sure Deidre can manage to shop on her own for one day. I'm happy to stop here. Well, darling, you've done more than enough. Right, anyway, I want to talk to Gina. All right. Yeah. I'll say bye for now. Um... I'll call you later. See ya. See ya. Well, babe, where do you want to start? 
Good afternoon, girls. Good afternoon. Been behaving yourself, I hope. We have, yeah. That's what I like to hear. Joe. Oh, hi, Mick. Uh, good trick. Oh, terrific. Adam's in good, Nick. Looks like he's going to make a scratch goal for him. Anyway, this can wait. Come on, fill me in. Tell me everything I need to know. <laughs> So, Roxburgh Avenue, yeah? Right. Hey, don't I know you? Are you, uh, Mickey Edwards, the jockey? Yeah. Have you seen me on TV, have you? No, no, I was down at Haydock a couple of weeks back. In fact, you won me 20 quid, so, uh, thanks. My pleasure. You aren't riding today, then? No, I'm visiting him, Mum. You're regular at races, then? Well, not as often as I'd like to be, but it's a good day out. Yeah, especially if you can back a winner or two. So did you go to the hospital with Dav? Yeah, but it took hours, they were so busy. Five o'clock this morning before I got him back to his flat. Have you had any sleep? No. Oh, you must be out on your feet. And you missed your friend's wedding and all. I know, it, it can't be helped. Somebody had to look after Dev. I mean, I only came away now cos, well, he's not on his own. Gina Gregory turned up. I think she's got a bit of a nerve, really, considering she's Joe Carter's girlfriend. Yeah, well, when you think she and Dev were engaged to be married, she's obviously still fond of him. I mean, he's fond of her, come to that. Don't I know it? Oh, is that a little bit of jealousy creeping in there, Sunita? That's not like you. I'm not, I'm not jealous, Deirdre. I'm just tired. If you think you can manage, I think I'll go upstairs. All of a sudden, I just want to... Crash out and forget about it all. There you go. All right, what's the damage? Uh, 7.40, please, mate. I tell you what, you being a gambling man, how would you feel if I gave you a red-hot tip instead of the fair? He's running this afternoon. Got time to get a bet on. It's a dead cert, this one, is it? There's no such thing in horse racing, mate. You know that. What I do know is that this horse is a good one. Dead genuine. It'll be trying. Hey, all the stable lads have got the shirts on it. Is that worth 7.40 to you? Nah, I think I'd uh, rather take the fair. It's your decision. There you go. I can call it eight quid. Nice one. Thanks a lot for that. Oh, go on, you can have the tip anyway. Tricky Sam in the 3.30. Nice one, mate. Cheers for that. Hey, and nice talking to you. Best of luck. Yeah, same to you. Oh, yeah, we, uh, we had a call from Rubens. <clears throat> he wanted a quote, so, uh, actually, that's the figure I give him there. Said he'd have to confirm it with you when you got back. Well, a bit heavy, this. We'll have to trim it. Especially if he plays hard to get. Well, I quoted him on the high side with that in mind. Good lad! Same scheming brain as me. <laughs> right, I'll phone him later. That the lot. Uh, well, it's, it's not business, but, well, you're going to hear about it anyway. So you may as well hear it from me. I had a showdown with Dev Allahan. He gave me no choice, Mike. What do you mean? What sort of showdown? Well, the thing is, he, he started shouting his mouth off, didn't he, about that trouble we had with his cousin. About us snatching the order back. No, you snatching the order back. Well, yeah. He told Gina all about it, didn't he? He's trying to prise us apart. You know what he's like. I mean, he was right out of order, Mike. Oh, yeah, but what did you do? I mean, uh, what about this showdown, exactly? We had a bit of an argument in the pub, and then it got physical. We had a fight. Is that how you got that? I mean, I won, in case you were wondering. I couldn't give a monkey who won. What I'm wondering is if I haven't made a hell of a mistake taking you on in the first place. What I'm saying is that uh, surely even you can now see what kind of a thug Joe Carter is and why don't you get him out of your life before he makes things worse? Just so what gives you the right to tell me what I should be doing? <sighs> You're not a saint, are you? This fight would never have happened if you hadn't wanted it to. You're blaming me? I don't believe this. Yeah, well, it's not all Joe's fault. You set out to goad him. No, no, I told you a few unpalatable truths about a guy and he couldn't stand you knowing them. Yeah, and then you needled him and wound him up and provoked Look, him. How can you go on defending him? How can you be so stupid? I'm 
I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Oh, so you've got Tony in here now. Oh, yeah. Dev treated himself to one of those widescreen jobbies, so he put his cast off in here for the staff. Actually, we're hoping he'll buy a new car next. <laughs> you see my picture in the paper today? Great, isn't it? It's terrific, Kerr, but it'll be wrapped around fish and chips tomorrow. Hi, Vic. Hi, yeah. Is that the racing? Mm. It's racing about now. I wouldn't mind seeing new wins. What's yours? Tricky Sam, it's called. I've got a tip. Turn the sound up for us, Dave. <laughs> And Tricky Sam now. Tricky Sam coming fast on the outside. Rockaby River can't find any extra. And it's Tricky Sam goes to the front. And at the line, it's Tricky Sam. Hey, the hey you won! There you go, Vic. Are you happy now? No, I didn't back it. More fool me. Oh, what do you like? Right, where's Dev and what's he doing? Well, I don't know, do I? I told you to keep away from him. Yeah, and I'd like to, only he keeps on meddling in my life, Mike. You know, this is all about Gina, don't you? All I know is every time you lock horns with Deb, the business suffers. My business! You're a good manager, Joe. Apart from the times when your brains are in your trousers, and that can't go on. You keep talking about me having it in for Deb, and it's the other way round. I'll tell you this, Mike. It's your fault I've had Deb on me back ever since I came here to work for you. My fault? Now, how'd you work that one out? Because all the trouble I've had with Dev springs from one thing. You told Dev I'd done time. You didn't have to, but you did. And he's been needling me ever since, trying to turn Gina against me, because you told him I'd been inside. All right, I admit it, that's fine. I should have kept my fist to myself, I know, but you should have kept your mouth shut. Because if you had done, none of this would ever have happened. Maybe I should. Maybe. Round, round, baby, round, round. Da -da 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 -da. I don't need no man. Oh, hiya! Hello. Why was somebody that fair today? You singing from Bam at Stairs? Everything's fine at college. My tutor loved all that stuff in the Gazette, even though it was slagging us off. He said that newspapers are always wrong and there's no such thing as bad publicity. And I've got top marks for my project. Oh, whatever turns you on. I'll be giving me sewing machines serious welly all day. Hey, maybe I should have gone in for this college lark and all. Well, it's never too late, if you mean it. Uh, no, don't think so. Well, I feel like celebrating. Come on, let's go to the Rovers, I'll get you a drink. Oh. And we'll get one for Les and all if he's in. I need to make me peace with him. Flaming councils. Well, they close Beth's crash because they say they haven't got enough money, then they go and throw 500 quid away in a rubbish old art chair. That's got nothing to do with me. No, oh, but you're a councillor, Curly. I hope you're going to stand up there at the next meeting and put the boot into whoever decided to buy it. No, I'm not, and you know why? Why? Because people have called me a philistine, out of touch, stupid. I'm telling you, it's like the Emperor's new clothes. You've got to be very brave or very innocent, or both, to point out the obvious these days. <sighs> they keep calling it a layabout, yeah. That means they're making out I am a layabout. You know, that's a very good point, Les. I mean, if it'd been a bed or, or a settee, I could see the reasoning in it, but it is, after all, just a chair. So, I mean, the worst they could truthfully call you is a city bound. It's not funny. I've got feelings, you know, like everybody else, and I'm being held up to public derision. I don't like these amusement arcades, you know. I'd tell you, when they were allowed, well, they were obsessed with playing them machines. He's had money out of my purse many a time. Sorry, we got into bad company, if you ask me. Mm. Yeah, Curly, Curly, what practical steps can we take against this arcade application? Well, if people feel strongly enough about it round here, get them to commit on paper, you know, signatures oh, yeah, and that. petition? Well, yeah, it'd give me something to work with down at the town hall. Right, well, that'll do for a start. I shall get on with that, but uh, if this fails, we shall have to resort to sterner measures. Yes, Les. Oh, yeah? What are you drinking? Nothing with you. I'm not talking to you, neither. You made me a right mockery. Les, I wasn't mocking you, honest. That's not what it looks like to me. Well, you've got it wrong. I was mocking the arty farty crowd. Oh. Have you seen what it says in that paper about me? And about my chair, which I gave you in all good faith as a loving present? Listen, this'll cheer you up. You know I'm getting 500 quid? Blood money. Well, I'll split it with you. How's that? It choked me. Blimey, Les, 250 knots. Can't be bad. Yeah, come on, Les. Stick it. It's dirty money, is that? I wouldn't touch a 5p piece of it. I, I, I 
I saw that from the start. Joe Carter is poison. I sized him up the first time I saw him. You didn't like him because you could see he fancied That me. is not the point. OK, there's some truth in that, I admit that. But I also had an instinct about him too. Look, can't you see what he did to me? Doesn't that set off any alarm bells in your head? I don't know what you're getting at. Well, you stick with that guy and you're going to be on the receiving end of his fist, just like I was. Oh, come on, Deb. Yeah, so get smart. Dump him now. Uh, otherwise, you need your head examined. Do you know what? I am so sick of you telling me what I should do and how I should do it. And you more or less tell me if I don't do it your way, then I must be thick. I make my own decisions, OK? Fine. You have it your own way. I'm just trying to help you. But let me also remind you that Joe Carter stands to be dragged straight back into jail if he gets into any trouble with the law, so don't be surprised if he's not here much longer. What are you saying? Mr Carter. He's got a nasty surprise coming. No point prolonging the inquest. Come on, lock up or buy your beer. What, in the Rovers? Yep. Uh, well, I don't know, Mike. Why, you've been barred? No, no. But, by the way, I reckon I would have been if this fight had all been my doing. Yeah, I dare say you would. It's a good point, that. Hey, now, listen, I don't want any more aggro between you and Dev. It doesn't matter what he says, what he does, OK? All right, fine. But if you ask me, after this, I think Dev's going to start behaving himself from now on. Oh, uh, can I help you? Joseph Carter. No, but what do you want? Yeah. I'm Joe Carter. We've had a complaint about you. It's been alleged that you assaulted a Mr Devendra Allahan. <laughs> what? Assault? Oh, come on, it was six at one and Joe, I... Joe, Joe, Joe! Say nothing. Nothing. I'm arresting you on suspicion of assault. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention now, when questioned, something you're later relying in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Yo! Your cabber waits. Oh, I'm just getting him some food, Les. You take your time. I'll share Kirk's. So, I don't, I don't need any. It's a long way. It's not, it's two and a half hours. Yeah, and what they charge for grub on them trains? How are you going somewhere? To uh, London Roy. He's got a submariner's reunion. Oh, you'll be all right on the underground. <laughs> you all right, Hayley? You're not well, love. I didn't sleep. Have you got something on your mind? No, just an outrageous amusement arcade proposal from the council. Oh. Best idea they've had for ages, that. Well, kids, they go to arcades, don't they, to learn about gambling? And then where do they graduate to? The local bookies. I am their higher education for their basic training. Is that is that role ready yet, Roy? Come on. I'll give you an answer. Well, I have to say, I hope not everybody is of your opinion. Is that what that letter was about? What letter? From the council. Oh, I don't know. I ain't read it yet. Council letters do my heading. We well, should read it. We could do with an arcade. Oh, all right, then. Let's have a look and see what they want. Here we go. You want me to contact them at my earliest convenience? What the hell for? I know. They want you to unveil Toya's chair. What do you reckon? Maybe. It's my chair, then, you know. I can't believe it. It's like I told you, give me that 250 quid. It's the least I deserve. So what? I will, don't you worry. The very next time I see her. Right, hey, yo, all set, Les. Aye, aye, Captain. Right, I'll ring you. Well, if you've got time. No, I will, I'll well, if you're able. Definitely. I can't believe you're letting him go, love. Bunch of sailors on the town. I'm sure you can trust him. <laughs> yeah, of course I can. Yes, thanks, Les. Of course you can. Hey, mate, hey, I'm only kidding. Right, let's be off. Oh, hiya. Uh, sorry I'm late, Roy. Listen, look, I'm really sorry. I'd no idea, honestly. There's no way I'd have hurt you. Yeah, well. What can I do? Now, there must be some at. No, there isn't. Have a lovely time. Right. Come on, put him down, love. We're off now. See ya. Bye-bye, darling. I will. Are you all right? You've not said two words all morning. Yeah? You'd tell me if there was anything, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Yeah. In your dreams. Right. Morning. Oh, morning. Oh, yeah. Go on then. What? Well, you want to see if he's okay? Go and ask him. I don't. Yes, you do. All right then, I do. But he's a pig. Pig dev. Um. 
Who are you actually worried about? Joe or Dev? Well, both. Neither, or I don't know. Just hit men fight. I mean, what does it prove her? Who's got the biggest ego? Yeah, and he's bothered about that. They are, love. Believe me. They are. I'm just going calf. All right. We don't want enough to work. Oh, yeah, we don't want to get thumped, do we? Come on. <laughs> Right, what happened? Well, I'm on police bail. They charge you? No. Uh, something. What happens next? Well, now they investigate the charges brought by Mr. Devendra Allahan, see if they have any substance. And have they? Well, we had a Barney, didn't we? I mean, about your future freedom. You're on licence, aren't you? Yeah. Well, this could put you back inside. Yeah, I know, don't remind me. Have you got a brief? Yeah. What did he say? Well, it's self defence. And that can get you off? Yeah, as long as no one can prove otherwise. I mean, it comes down to who threw the first punch, doesn't it? And who did? Afraid I, I can't remember. Well, let's hope nobody else can either. Ah, sorry to trouble you. I've come to exercise my prerogative. Why not? Come in. Hi, Roy. Is this an inconvenient time? No, 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 no. I was just off. So, uh, no decision yet, Curly, but uh, one expected. Well, hopefully. I mean, these reviews, they take time. The arcade? Uh, no, no, no. The bail hostel. Oh, yes. Good idea. Pardon? I understand they significantly impact on recidivism. As long as it's not in your backyard. Well, it's hardly room. Oh, yeah, yes, I meant a four. I said, well, I, I believe I would try to rise to that particular challenge. Well, let's hope you don't have to. So, uh, sorry, Curly, uh, mm. no pressure, but, but the sooner I find out, the sooner I'll know we're after to pursue uh, other alternative strategies. As soon as I know, you'll know. OK. See you. See you now. Bye, Roy. Right then, Roy, what's this um, prerogative? Uh, the right to lobby. Well, go on then. <clears throat> it looks worse than it is. If you say so. The answer's no. But you don't even know the question. Yes, I do. You've come to plead his case. How he's sorry, how he won't do it again. Why would I want to do that? Why? Because you're in business and you don't want to lose him. I must be getting old if you can see it coming as quickly as that. The answer's no. Look, if you drop all these charges, we can put all this behind us. No. You can't go around beating up innocent men. Oh, come on, you've got history. You've been spoiling for a fight ever since he got here. The answer is still no. You know your problem, don't you? You can't accept defeat. He beat you. Get on with your life. You'll feel bigger for it. Forget it. I met too many thugs like Carter to let him off. Look, I don't want to fall out with you, Mike, but you're pleading a lost cause. He could go back inside for this, you know. You got his future in your hands. It doesn't look very bright then, does it? No, it's Dev. No better. He's coping. So uh, I can get him. Oh, no, no. Are you sure? Yeah, don't worry. Uh, can I help you? Looking for Jeannie Gregory. Uh, that's me. Ask you a few questions, Wolf, about an incident uh, the other night. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course you can back come through. Hey, they caught up with you then. Hey. They're on the trail of a group of art fraudsters. Apparently, they go around conning councils out of taxpayers' money and passing rubbish off as expensive bits of art. Very funny. <laughs> yeah, it was. Can be right, love you. Though I don't think it was funny. I'm on 250 quid. We could have asked her for it this morning. It's not that easy. I can't ask without her feeling like I'm on the take. I've got my pride. Ah, the old double bind. The what? Double bind, as in... R.D. Lang, the psychotherapist. Oh, do you know that? He can't be in care and not come out with a load of gobbledygook. In the end, I could out-jargon any social worker any day. Well, what is it? Is this what you said? Double bind. It's when you want to say one thing, but you can't, because you've already put yourself in a position that'd make you look stupid if you did. That's it. That's exactly it. That's amazing. Yeah, well, if you want any help on transactional analysis, just let me know. Well, uh... How do you get out of this uh, double bind? Oh, I don't know. Left care before I got to that bit. <laughs> but if you want my advice, Les, you need to get somebody else to put your case for you. He said he'd ring. Yeah, they all say that. Oh, no, I'm only kidding. Of course, cell phone. You know, it's only been a couple of hours and I'm missing him already. Oh. <laughs> you did witness this fracas? Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of folk did. Only you don't seem too sure. 
pal of yours, is he, this Mr Carter? No. Well, yeah, or sort of. No, well, yeah, well, sort of. Do I detect a romantic entanglement? No. Are you sure? Oh, of course I am. So we don't mean out to you? Well, I said so, didn't I? So tell us what happened, in your own words. Well, there was a fight. Spontaneous combustion. Huh? Suddenly there was a fight. No build-ups, no arguments. Two men suddenly erupted into violence. Well, yeah, yeah, sort of. I don't know why you're being so shy, love. You were in front of plenty of witnesses. Well, ask them. We have. So, what do you need me for, then? Well, put it like this. You are a representative of this establishment, so, naturally, we look to you for an unbiased, objective account. The punters may have acted to grind, but you won't, will you? No. Sure. I said so, didn't I? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mr Carter means nothing to you. I forgot. So, carry on. What? How did it start? Who threw the first punch? I don't know. Come on! Well, it was all so quick. You're only corroborating what we already know, love. Well, Joe, then. Joe? Uh, Mr Carter. Thank you. Well, other people saw it and all right. They must have done. Well, what do you mean, must have? There seems to have been collective vision impairment that night. Fortunately, we now have your account. Thank you very much, Miss Gregory. We'll be in touch. There you go, Les. Cheers. Peter's on the phone, love. Oh. <laughs> Are you sure I don't get this free? Quite sure. Oh. Why should you? Well, you know. Local celebrity. Mm. I've been invited by the council to unveil my daughter's masterpiece. Have you? I have. Have you? Blimey, don't you listen. First I've heard. There you go, then. Well, read that. Now do you believe me? No. Charming. Oh, no, you see, this is from the housing department. If it was about you unveiling something, it'd be from the leisure, cultural and miscellaneous department. Well, uh, well, well so what does it mean? I don't know. I'm going in this afternoon. I can find out for you if you like. Oh, cheers, pal. That was Peter, stuck outside Stoke-on-Trent. Signal failure. Trains, eh? Still, at least I know he hasn't forgotten about me. <laughs> you told the truth. That's all you can do. I don't know. I might get someone into trouble. Mike? You were uh, getting <laughs> someone into trouble? Police were you. I didn't know what to say to him. They're asking questions. What sort of questions? Come on, what sort of questions, Jeannie? What I saw? What happened? They're asking who threw the first punch. You said... Come on, what did you say, Jeannie? Well, I had to tell them. That it were me? Oh, thanks. No, thanks a bunch. Well, I didn't mean to... What? Send me back to prison, cos that's exactly what you've gone and done, innit? Do you know something? I never realised you were so bitter about me. Oh, don't worry about it, love. I know Les. I'll soon get over it. No, but he looked really upset. And when I offered to split the money with him, he got right offended. Blimey. He must be sickening for some of You know. How's Les? Yeah, well, funny you should say that. Only I wanted to have a word. <laughs> Why? What's wrong? Well, he's very ill. Well, what's up? Well, he doesn't know, but he knows it's serious. Does he? How? Well, the symptoms. Why would I then? Well, they're a bit personal. Ah, oh, he's got a disease. No, 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 I mean, well, he won't really discuss it with me, you know. He, like, wants to keep it to himself. Well, what does the doctor say? We well, won't go, at least not to the medical centre where he's known. That's why he's saving. Where's saving? He must be ill. Oh, what's he saving for? For a private appointment in town. Oh, I see. Uh, and how much will it be for this appointment? 250 quid. Really? I don't suppose he's going to have that, is he? No. Must be a worry, that. Well, it is, I mean, that's why I've come to see you. You know, as a representative of the people, Curly has come a long way. Excellent. He's even prepared to listen to Richard Hillman's opposition to the bail hostel. Mm, well, that's a shame. They're a good idea. Well, I made the point that they significantly reduce reoffending. Up to 30% in some areas. So what did he say? Oh, well, Richard, well, he, he asked if we'd light one in our backyard. He, he was, of course, speaking figuratively. Oh. But it did make me think, are we right to impose our opposition to the arcade on people? Oh, yes, I think so. 
Yes, but given the circumstances, what resources do young people have round here? They hang around the chip shop and the bus shelter. Well, the answer is not to build them an arcade where they can waste their time and their money. Even in the absence of anything else? Well, that's the answer. Something else should be provided. There shouldn't be an absence. Yes. Yes, of course. Yes, you're right. Do you know what? I do enjoy these chats on social policy with you. I find them most stimulating. It's one of the things that defines our relationship, that thirst for knowledge, the exchange of ideas. Oh, good. So what's happening? A pun. You went to see Curly? Oh, yes, well, he, he's getting back to me. It's not your fault, lovely. Well, it is. I don't want him going back to prison because of me. It won't be because of you. It'd be because of him. I just don't think I could handle the guilt. And there's Dev. You're not thinking of getting back with him? Eh? No. Oh, I don't know. It's confusing. I mean, maybe you should go and see Joe. See if there's out you can do. Yeah, but would he listen to me? What have you got to lose? I've heard from Peter again. He's reached Milton Keynes now. So he's very nice. How can you tell? He's been staring at it for the last half hour. Defective train in front. Oh, when he says he's missing me. <laughs> he fell for it. Hey, they were really worried. What did you say was the matter with me? Oh, I didn't. I left it open. So you will give you the dosh tonight. Good lad, Kirk. Good lad. Does David seem all right to you? Yeah? Come straight home, go straight to his room, never talks. Thought he'd be full of his new school. You were. There he is. David? What? Here. Why? I want to talk to you. What on earth? Football. I'm meeting the guy from Henderson Fabrics about your bank. Right, OK. Now, do you think you can stay out of mischief? Uh, see you later. Can I have a word? Yeah, sure. How about a betrayal? That's not fair. Yeah, probably not. Sorry. I want to know what I can do. I don't want you going away. Really? Why? Because... Well, because I suppose I still care about you, that's why. Yeah, well... Thanks, but it's a bit late for that. You've already given them all the evidence they need. Sure. You know, the irony is that it's all my fault. I treated you badly, and you were the only woman I could ever see myself with. And I screwed it up. I don't blame you. You did what you had to do, and... I don't want you getting into trouble because of me, Gina. There must be something I can do. <laughs> it's not your problem anymore, love. We're not together now, remember? Thanks, anyway. Biscuits. So? So you can eat in your room and not come down for your tea. What's going on? No. Yeah, there is. Come on, we're all worried about you. Yeah, and you don't have to be. So what's with the black eye, then? And don't tell me football. Tell me! All right, I had to go at this lad in my class. So he's got his brother and his older mate to knock me about a bit, all right? His brother, what year? Nine. Who is it? Look, it don't matter. Just leave it, all right? Good afternoon, ladies. We're investigating an incident, an assault. Were you anywhere near the Rovers on Monday evening? No. So you don't know what I'm talking about? No. Come on, Faith. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> Police are here. They're asking everyone. Yeah, well, it's their job, isn't it? But... Don't worry. It's a matter of time now. If they'll get all the evidence they need, then, then they'll come calling. Except... They've got the most important bit now, haven't they? Good job. I'm so sorry. Hey, come on. I've survived it once. <laughs> I can do it again. Any chance you'll come and visit? I don't want you to go. I don't want to lose you. Come on, 
You're not losing me. You'll know exactly where I am. That's not what I mean. You know it. Do I? Don't play games. What? I don't want you going to prison. I don't want you going anywhere. I want you here with me. I love you. I love you. There you go. Tom, any more news from the Wanderer? Oh, yeah. I get regular bulletins now. Last year, he was outside Watford Junction. Points failure. Oh? Hey, Peter's on the phone, though. Oh. Have, you, have you seen Gina? Uh, no. Right. That's the eighth call I've taken from him. Shows his key. Oh, bored. I'll tell you, love. That journey can be like living your life all over again. I mean, you get down there, they cram you onto these tube trains, just like sardines. I mean, I've been so close to, to men that sometime I could feel my Billy turning in his grave. Well, that's what I think it was. No, give me trams any time, love. Can I have a word? Of course you can, Flower. In private. All right. I was really gutted to hear that you were ill and needed money. All right. And I don't want to see you go short. Is it serious? Uh, I'm waiting for the test results, love. All right. Well, uh, I want you to have the whole five hundred pounds. You, you do this for me. Of course. Oh, I'm sorry, love, but I'm not ill. I know. Oh. But I'd tell you how I'd feel if you were. Devastated. Beside myself with worry and willing to pay out to make you better. Really? Which makes me realise what you mean to me. And how rotten it was to put you through all that chair stuff. Do you like me? What? Darling, I love you. And you want to make me happy? Of course. Then share this money with me, eh? Please. Come here. Well, what's like a result? Is that your doing? Uh, yeah, I suppose it was. Oh, well done. Sir, but it was you what spotted the double thing. You're really brainy, you are. I reckon you're hiding your light under a finger. So how did your social worker teach you about it anyway? Oh, cos my mum. She was dead hard. She just ignored me the whole time. But my social worker, she reckoned that... Really, she loved me, but she couldn't find a way of saying it without looking sappy. Can you believe that? Yeah, yeah, I do. Oh, right. So, how is he? Oh, fine. Apparently, they're actually going to reach London Euston by tonight. Oh. <laughs> ah. Hiya. Oh. The news from the town hall... Is? ..that there is no news. Ah. You see, it's an outline planning application. I've no idea who's behind it. So there's no one for us to express our concerns? Of course there is. The council. You tell them how you feel, loud and clear. Get that petition together, why don't you? Brilliant. I will start straight away. Thank you, council. My pleasure. Right, I need Les. Ah, you all right? Hi. You know, I can be a cynic. But there's times when the milk of human kindness just overwhelms me. Really? Good. Uh, I found out about your letter. Letter? Yeah, from the council. Why they want to see you. And uh, I don't think it'll be the news you're expecting. Cooler lad. Whatever it is, it cannot knock the shine off how I feel at the moment. Well, this might. You see, they've found out that you're subletting. They're going to evict you. <clears throat> Thanks, Rita. Oh, see thank ya. you. Oh, hiya. Hiya. Hey, I'm glad I bumped into you. I wanted to thank you. For what? Well, me and Joe have made up. Oh, Gina, that's brilliant. I'm dead pleased for you. Yeah, well, it might not have happened if you haven't persuaded me to go and see him. I just hope everything else works out. Yeah, I mean, maybe the police will give up on it. I mean, Joe's not like that, really. It was only because he was provoked. Anyway, got to go meet him at cafe for dinner. See ya. Hiya, Hiya Rita. Hello. Hello. I'd book a stamps, please. First class? Yeah, thanks. So, how's the shop? Busy? <laughs> Very. Hey, well, that's what you want. There you are, love. Ta, that's right. Thanks. Just right. Thank you. Hey, Les, is it true about the council planning to evict you? Oh, so news has got out, has it? Yeah, it is. Flaming council. So what if I am subletting? What are they saying? That I should let a perfectly good bedroom go to waste? They want their heads feeling. 
It's my fault, really, though, isn't it? If I ask you for a room, they won't be kicking you out. Oi! Now, don't you go blaming yourself. It's the council's fault telling people how to live their lives. It's like living under a flaming dictatorship. Yeah. Of course, you know what happens to dictators, don't you? No. People get sick of it. And your eyes up against them, don't they? There's a rebellion. Well, that's what there's going to be here. Les Battersby's going to fight back. Good for you, Les. And you sure that's all he said? Yeah, the same as he told you that he got hit with the ball in football practice. And he didn't seem awkward or anything. I mean, he, he didn't seem like he was hiding something. Well, that, how should I know? Look, Mum, he's fine. It's not like he's in hospital or anything. Well, Sarah's right. I think we're blowing this up out of all proportion. You mean I am? Well, I'm sorry, but when my son comes home with a black eye after one week at his new school, then I think I'm entitled to worry. Anyway, I know when he's not telling the truth. Well, I'm sorry, yeah, you're right. Look, well, when he comes back, I'll try talking to him again, see if I can't get to the bottom of it. Oh, smoked salmon, eh? Somebody's pushing the boat out. Oh, it's just that uh, Peter's he... coming home today. <laughs> yeah, I know, so you keep telling us. Oh, I'm really sorry. It's just I can't wait. He's only been gone a couple of nights. I know, but it seems like a week or something. I've really, really missed him. And he has, uh, he must have phoned at least ten times a day. <laughs> Right, love, that's uh, £10, 12p, please. There you go. Thank you, darling. Thank There's you. Your bag. So, um, was this mate to visit the stew then? Oh, Kieran. Well, yeah, but he said there was loads of people there, so he managed to avoid him. Right, OK, I'll see you later. Bye. 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 I wish I had a fella that treated me like that. In fact, I wish I had a fella. Hiya. Hiya. How are you feeling today? Good. Do you want me to make a cuppa? No, when you stop fussing over me, I'm fine. Put it down to good nursing skills. Seriously, I do not know what I'd done without her. Mmm. One in a million, this girl. <laughs> An amusement arcade? Here. Oh, next door, to be precise, what used to be a hardware store. So Curly suggested that we start up a petition to present to the planning committee. Yeah, well, I'm signing it. Oh, I will, too. In fact, I'll give you a hand collecting signatures if you want. Oh, thanks, Emily. Hey, hello. I think it's awful the way young people are encouraged to throw their money away on those machines. Yeah, Did you mean it? Mean what? That you love me. Yeah, of course I did. I'm like, I thought I might put you off when I said it. You see, after Dev, I, I never thought I'd feel like this about someone again. Sorry. Sorry, I shouldn't have brought his name up. Mm. It's all right. It's not as if we can forget about him at the moment, the way he's messing us about, is it? I hate the thought of you and me not being together, you know. So do I. Why don't I go to the police and change my statement? No, I just look suspicious with you being my girlfriend and that. No, the only hope I've got is if Deb just drops the charges. Well, why don't you go and see him? You know, say sorry, mean whatever. What does it matter as long as you don't go to jail? No, he's too stubborn, Gina. He'd just really enjoy watching me grovel and then he'd go ahead and do it anyway, wouldn't he? <sighs> yeah, maybe you're right. But on the other hand, we well, might listen to you. I doubt it, after last time. I went to see him the day after the fight. And? We had a row. He told me that I should dump you and I told him to get stuffed and that if I wanted to see you, I would. But you'd already dumped me. Yeah, I know. I'm not going to give him the satisfaction of knowing that, was I? Trouble is, I, I think I might have um, made things worse. Um, David, before you shoot off, have you got a minute? It's about this school business. Not again. Okay. Come on, just hear me out. You know, um, I remember starting secondary school myself. You know, it's, uh, it's like this. I mean, everything seems big, doesn't it? Like, buildings bigger, kids are bigger. It's pretty scary, really. Suddenly, you're not top talk anymore. And sometimes, you get the odd kid that tries to take advantage of that. They think they can push you about, but you're not going to say anything. And maybe you don't say anything, because feel a bit embarrassed because you didn't stand up to him. A anyway, all I'm trying to say is that it, it's nothing to be ashamed about. And we'd like to feel that you could say something to us if anything like that's happened. Nothing has happened. That's what I keep telling you. Can I go now? Of course.
Well, I made a big impact there. Well, at least you tried. Anyway, maybe he's telling the truth. Perhaps I'm just getting things out of proportion. So you're telling yeah, me you Best Jack is to teach you a lesson? Well, you might have done, yeah. Oh, well, thanks a lot, Gina. You know, the next time you feel the urge to spring to my defence, just check it out with me, OK? Would you care to sign up? No, I don't. Jaw! Is that nice? Is it? Is that nice? Oh, who's that? Hello, oh, let's come in. Look, Curly, it's not on about that letter, you know. It's up to me what I do in my spare room. It is my house, after all. Not for much longer. Oh, that's right. Kick a man when he's down. You coppers are good at that. Hey, let's keep this calm, shall we? Now, what exactly do you want from me? Your help. There must be something you can do. Yeah, we can help you pack if you like. <sighs> Emma. It's all right. I'll go in. Look, Les, I'd like to help you. Really, I would. But you've got to see it from the council's point of view. I mean, you're a bloke on his own, using a house that could be needed for a, a needy family or, or, or a couple. He's needy, innit? And I gave him a room. What more did he want? Yeah, well, you see, officially Kirk isn't there. He's not on the rent book. Why don't they put me on the rent book, then? Because that'd be seen as queue jumping. Oh, you can't win with that lot. So what can we do? Well, nothing. I mean, you're no longer a family, are you? And, uh, well, you're not a, a couple, are you? Hey, You know, a couple. As in, uh, as in, as in sharing the same bedroom. I hope you're not saying what I think you're saying. No, no, no of course I'm not. Who is, then? Well, nobody. I'm just trying to point out to you that the council won't accept Kirk on the rent book unless he was your, um, boyfriend. And obviously he's, um, he's not, is he? No, and he's not mine either, and you can tell him that and all. Come on, we're wasting our time here. Let's go. Thanks, Philip. Hi, Kate. Oh, hello. Can I get you a drink? Uh, no, thanks. I'm not stopping. And I'm sorry to trouble you on your day off, but... I was wondering if you had any idea how David got his black eye. Uh, no, I don't know, I'm afraid. Right. Well, I think he's hiding something. He said he got it during football practice. Ah, well, at least I can tell you that isn't true. Really? Mm. I'm afraid David wasn't picked for the football team, so couldn't possibly have happened there. Right. Thanks, Ken. OK. Thanks. Hi, mate. Hi. Can I have a word? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> alone. Uh, after what you did to Dev, I wouldn't mind a word alone. Uh, let's just calm down for a minute, shall we? Just a minute, eh, mate? Listen, I think you know what kind of mess I'm in. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gutted for you. Yeah, well, it's not looking good, Steve, when even my own girlfriend tells the cops that I started it. Oh, what happened? She didn't mean it. You know what Gina's like. Looks pretty straight, doesn't she? Yeah, whereas you and me both know sometimes you have to put a bit of a spin on it, right? Where's this leading, exactly? I want you to tell the police that Dev started the fight. Well, I wasn't even there, was I? Yeah, I know, but they don't know that, do they? All we have to do is, you know, muddy the waters a bit. Just enough so they'll throw the case out. Listen, I wouldn't normally be asking you this, but you owe me one, mate. You know I kept your name out of that warehouse job. Yeah, but only because I was doing you a favour. Yeah, and now I'm asking you... I'm begging you, Steve, to do me one now, all right? No, I'm sorry, mate. I can't help you. Well, you can see how I'm fixed, mate. That's my partner's cousin. Nah, that nah, put me in a very awkward position. Yeah, not half as awkward as the one I'm in now. Thanks a lot, mate. <laughs> Too, uh, right. Have a drive here. No. Oh, oh help. Come here. Here. Yeah. Thanks. Right, so now we're open. Can I get some flowers? Suit yourself. Anyway, apparently he hasn't been picked for the football team. Poor kid, he must be devastated. No. 
But more importantly, it means that he kind of got that black eye at football practice. Yeah. So you were right. There is something going on. I suppose you might as well know the rest now. Well, it's not Valentine's Day, so it must either be a birthday or a guilty conscience. No, neither. Believe it or not, I just happen to love the woman that I'm buying for, that's all. Well, that's the first. Wife or mother? No, girlfriend. Hmm. Right, so, uh, what sort of flowers does she like? I'm not sure. Oh, uh, typical. When a woman comes in here, she knows exactly what she wants. When a bloke comes in, he hasn't got a clue. All right, well, I was thinking about buying her some roses. Oh, let's at least try being original, shall we? How about something uh, stately? Gladioli, for instance? Or, or these? There's something exotic about lilies. They remind you that life's not all run of the mill. I mean, roses are romantic, but lilies, they're passion. And that's what a woman really wants. Right, well, uh, I'll bow to your better judgment then. Lilies, it is. I'll have ten, please. Okay. You know what? I'm surprised that you managed to uh, sell anything at all with this sarky attitude you've got towards your customers. I'm not normally. Uh, normally, I haven't just broken up with my boyfriend. Oh, no, 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 sorry. It's all right. I split up with him, not the other way around. Yeah, sometimes I feel like packing in blokes all together. Ah, oh, no, hey, come on, you don't want to do that. Be a real loss to mankind if you did that, believe me. If you weren't buying flowers for your beloved, that could sound like a chat up line. Oh, no, that's... Look, I say, I don't mean to... I didn't mean to... <laughs> that's all right. I appreciate the compliment. Haven't had many of them recently. That'll be uh, £20, please. Well, do you know what? I'm sure you'll find a fella very soon who will shower you with them. Jeez. Doubt it. All the nice blokes have already been snapped up. Well, I'm sure there's plenty of other nice blokes out there who haven't. Thanks. Oh, well, that's it then. Best let my mum know she'll be doing the washing again. Hang on, hang on, not so fast. There might just be a way out of this. Not being fancy. Coming out the closet. Hey, you know, telling the world we're gay. But I'm not. You mean I've been living with you all this time and you're not. No, 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 you dip it, cause I'm not. The council aren't to know that, are they? See, all we have to do is pretend we're a couple. Then we get to keep the house. Brilliant, isn't it? Depends what you mean by pretend. Look, just write a letter to the council and tell them we are, and that's an end to it. Okay, a word. Luke, I feel terrible that I might have caused all this. But if I'd known Dev was going to be so malicious, I would have never gone and seen him. At least it did one thing. It made me realise I wanted to stick by you. Oh, well, good. So long as you got some good out of this, I'll hold on to that when I'm lying in my cell, shall I? It's not my fault Dev reacted the way you did. Look, I know you're going through hell, but why are you being so bothered to me? I thought you loved me. It's all about you, innit? That is all you're bothered about. That's not true. You don't really care if I go back to jail, do you? So long as I can gaze at you through the bars and tell you that I love you. Would you want to know something, Gina? Right now, I wish to hell I'd never set eyes on you, cos then I wouldn't be in this mess. David? Mm. Okay. Oh, why does everyone keep going on about it? Well, because they care. Look, if someone's been troubling you at school, you should have come and told me. I'm your form teacher. I don't like bullying. I'm not getting bullied. All right, then how did it happen? Then don't tell me it's football, because I know better. You've been talking to my mum? Well, you did ask me about it, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, but only because she's worried. Look, I really think it would help if we talked about this. Did you see him, then? I wish you two would make your mind up. First you're on, then you're off. Yo, you can't go through there. Hey, love. Oh, Peter! Oh. oh, it makes you want to see it in slow motion, doesn't it? To be back. Here. Oh, love the gorgeous. Yeah, just like you are, Mr. Shelby. Mm, I've missed you too much. Gina. Gina, I'm sorry. 
No, I didn't mean it. It's not your fault. None of it is. I had no right to go on at you like that. No, you didn't. Do you know what? I never know where I stand with you. I mean, one minute you're telling me you love me and then the next minute you look at me like you hate me. I've had enough jokes that I deserve better than that. You've got every right to tell me to get lost. But I do love you, Gina. Yeah, we've got a funny way of showing it. Do you think it was easy for me deciding to commit to someone again? When you've been kicked in the teeth, it's really difficult to let yourself open again. And then you treat me like this. I know, and I hate myself for doing it, but it's just the strain of everything that's going on. I mean, I've got no excuse for taking it out on you, I know. But I don't know what I would have done without you to get through all this. I, you're the only thing that's been keeping me going. I've got no right dragging you through my mess. Deb's right. You deserve better than me. Wait. I don't care what Dev thinks. You're ten times better than him anyway. I just want us to stop fighting, that's all. I'm on your side, you know. I know. Does, does this mean... I won't let you down again, I promise, love. We'll get through this, you know, if we just stick together. Yeah. I just, I just wish there was something I could do to get Dev to change his mind and we could put all this behind us and just be happy. I'm going to go and see him. Try and persuade him for drop charges. Do you think he'll listen to you? I don't know. It's worth a try, though, isn't it? I don't know what I'd do without you. Go on, then. What have we got so far? Read it out. Right, right. Dear sir, I am writing to you about number five, Coronation Street, what I rent. The Gazette was wrong when it said Kirk Sutherland was my lodger. In actual fact, we are a couple. Of? No, just a couple. Oh, right. It doesn't sound very romantic, though, does it? <laughs> You'll be asking me to propose to you next. Shh. All I meant was, I've got to make it sound convincing. Yeah, yeah, of course we have. How about committed couple? Nah, makes us sound like a couple of nutters. Loving couple. And we want you to put his name on the rent book. Oh, oh, hang on. Please keep this to yourselves, because there are a lot of people around here who are a bit... Uh, right, how do you spell prejudiced? P-R-E-J-U-D-I-C-A-D. <clears throat> nice one. Cheers, Les Battersby. <laughs> Is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, no, no, that's all right, sir. Right, this should do the trick. I'll copy it out tonight and post it tomorrow. Yes, yes. Well, I don't suppose it's a social call. Come to lay into me again, have you? No. I've come to ask you to behave like the civilised human being that I know you are and, and to drop these mm. charges. I'm not the one who needs a lecture on being civilised. I see. So you're doing this because it's morally the right thing, are you? Yes, I am. You're doing it to get back at me more like. You just want to hurt me, don't you? No. You couldn't be more wrong. I'm doing this to help you. You've seen what his temper's like. Do you want to end up like this? Don't be so stupid, Dev. He only did that because you pushed him to the limit. You just can't see it, can you? Well, fine, you think of what you want to think. I know that at least if he's in jail, he won't be able to hurt you. If you really cared about me, you'd know that him going back to prison would hurt me more than anything. David, I need to talk to you. No, oh, I'm going to my room. Hey, you stop right there. Your mother's talking to you. Why didn't you tell us? It's no big deal. I can try again next year. I'm not talking about the football team. I'm talking about this lad giving you a black eye. Somebody had to tell them. They knew the rest anyway. You won't tell Mr Barlow, have you? No, but I'm going to. No, Mum, I don't want you to. Don't be daft. Lads like that need dealing with. No, you don't understand. You're just going to make things worse. Then they'll think I've grasped on them. Well, all right, but I'm going to ask him to keep a closer eye on you. Aye. Oh. Great. 
and let everyone think I'm some kind of a baby. I knew this would happen. Why couldn't you just keep your mouth shut? David! So you really love him? Yeah. Why don't you want him to go to jail? It's a bit of a stupid question. No, come, on. come on. You can tell me. Hmm? Is it for yourself because you don't want to lose him, or are you thinking of... Um, Joe? Both. No, you see, now, darling, that isn't good enough. Because what I'm asking you here is who you care about most, yourself or him. Him? It'd kill him, go back inside. Fine. I'll drop the charges. Do you mean it? You... If you drop him. What? If you love him, you'll leave him, because that is the only way he's going to walk free. It's up to you. Hi, hello. Oh, hiya. Uh, I'm just giving out a bit of a clean. Great to school, are you? Yeah. Oh, I used to hate school. My mother used to say, best years of your life are at school. Well, she were wrong. They were worst years of my life. Yeah. Still, you'll be leaving soon, won't you? Be able to get a job. Nice car. I'm going to university. You are? Whatever for? To study. I want to do law, be a lawyer. A lawyer? Do you know, I never realised I live next door to middle class. <laughs> Think your mother would give them nets a bit of a clean. <laughs> yeah, I'd best get on. Hey, better get free legal advice now, won't I? Oh, I say. I can't believe Dev would say that. Of course he would. It all makes sense now. It's what he's wanted all along, devious pig. Dev's not devious. He does care about you, you know. No, he doesn't just doesn't want to see me happy, that's all. When we split up, I bet all he wanted was for me to move away and find another job. But I didn't, did I? I stayed around here, got on with my life. Found someone who I really care about. You know, proved I could exist without him. He'd do anything to split me and Joe up. So what will you do? Will you finish with Joe? Well, why should I? Why should I be manipulated by a conniving pig like him? Ah, oh, and here's the pig himself. See that? I, uh, I just want to say something to you that I forgot to say last night. Right, can we take this inside? No, there's no need. It's need to do it all about our little chat. I just want to say, you must be so desperate to hurt me. I mean, can't I be happy? Does it needle you that much? You could drop these charges like that, but no, no, you've got to have your demands, be all smarmy and oily. Do you know what? You're pathetic. Have you finished? No, no, I haven't. <gasps> drop dead. <sighs> <sighs> Would I be right in thinking that things are on the up at work? Hmm? Well, you've not mentioned any problems lately. Unless you're hiding them from me. I don't want you hiding things from me. No, no, no. Things are on the up. You could say that the dark clouds of financial worries are thinning out. Oh, God. <laughs> at least. David! Do you have to make so much noise? There's no cereal. There's plenty of cereal. Well, not the type I like. Well, would you like me to make some toast or some eggy soldiers? Soldiers? I'm not six. I know you're not. Then why act like I am? Pardon? Asking Mr Barlow to look after me at school. It's like some of Mary Poppins. If you're being bullied... I'm not being bullied. No one's calling me names. No one's giving me Chinese burns. I just got thumped. Exactly. You're being picked on. You know, maybe I should go to the school myself, talk to the head. No, Mum, you can't. It's no big deal, please. I think perhaps you ought to let David sort it out himself, love. Really? As long as you promise to tell me if anything like this happens again. Yeah, of course I will. Johnny, love, I don't think you've left me any home meal. Oh, hang on a minute, there they are. <laughs> oh, sorry. OK, see you, love. See ya. He's not been well. Who's not been well, love? Gina. Johnny, the bread man. He's not been well. Doctor says it's stress. 
It's funny that, isn't it? You wouldn't think being a breadwinner would be that stressful. He wants to try being a bookie, then he'd know what stress is. Yeah, I'll run in a pub, I could do the holiday. Hey, two weeks in Mexico, eh, hey, love? Hey, come with me, I'd take you away from all the years on my donk. <laughs> oh, isn't he lovely? Flowers <laughs> one day, sombreros the next. Oh, Gina, isn't he lovely? Mm. What's up with you? You've not spoken two words this morning. No, I'm fine. I've got gun to and glasses out. Bet it is a love thing. Not everyone's as lucky as me, I have a little tink. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't believe you. It's true. She was going on and on at me and I forgot to ask for any. You know what she's like. What does he want? Dinner money. Ah, oh, isn't it sweet how Sarah's such a mother? <laughs> what makes you think I've got any to give you anyway? All right, then, I'll start. Oh, hang on. Hey, did you see that film that was on last night? Yeah, well done. I reckon I look a bit like Sandra Bullock. What do you think? Mm, maybe I'd darker hair. What film's this? Oh, you won't have seen it, it was on too late for you. See, Sarah's not allowed a TV in her room because she might wake Beth in it. Oh, but my dad's bought me one of those TV comedy things where you can watch videos in the room. You're yeah. welcome to come round whenever you want. Yeah. Right, there you go. Ta. Is that him? Yeah. Adam White? What about him? It's the one gave David a black eye. He's year nine, David's only year seven. He's a little thug. Yeah. We'll see how he fares when he's dealing with someone in year 11. How do you mean? I mean, I'm not standing by while some scally is my girlfriend's brother. All right, you lot, let's be having you. Yeah, hello. So, you didn't see the fight begin? Well, I didn't need to. Because everybody knew it were on the card as soon as that Joe Carter started going out with Gina Gregory. And, well, that Dave, do you know? They were jealousy written right through him like a stick of rock. You see, what's his is his. Getting back to the fight. Oh, I'm surprised nobody were killed. Crime of passion, that's what they'd have called it. Man, G likes an audience to death. So you'd say Mr. Allahan was a violent man? Violent and jealous. Thank you, Mrs. Duckworth. So do you want me to uh, give evidence in court? I shouldn't think so. Oh, pity. Hi, Vera. Can I leave these for Roy, please? Uh, yeah, what are they? Uh, they're just signatures for his petition. I mean, mostly from patients from the medical centre, but the odd celebrity that dropped in, in Tom Cruise, Jar Jar Binks. You are? Mm, we're intergalactic at the surgery, you know. Oh, Jar Jar Binks. Thank you very much, Mrs Douglas. Oh. Oh, ah, Mr Carter. <sighs> what brings you round here? Just inquiry, sir. There you go. Bye. They never say goodbye. Hey. The customers, they hardly ever say hello or goodbye. They just plonk the baskets down and give me money. Well, so long as they give you money. Well, it's as if they don't see me. The reason why I took a job with you rather than go to a supermarket was because I wanted to work somewhere where I could get to know the customers. Look, people around here, you don't want any kind of relationship with any of them. Take my word for it. Some of them are nice. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. We're here to provide a service. That's all. That's how they see us. I mean, we're here if they need a, a pint of milk at quarter to nine at night. That's it. That's our purpose. What's your purpose? To make money. Hmm. What's my purpose? To help me make money so I can leave this place as soon as I can. You used to be settled here. You used to be. I suppose this all comes back to Gina. No. It all comes back to me. What I want out of life. I mean, I never started out wanting to be a... A grocer. You know, an opportunity arose, I took it. But this isn't where it ends. This isn't even a, a chapter in my autobiography. What about you? You must have ambitions. Yeah, some. Mm. What, you still want to be working in the shop in ten years' time? Depends. <clears throat> On? Who owns the shop? If it was somebody I respected, like being with, <laughs> well then, yeah. <laughs> like being with? I don't have to drag myself out of bed every morning to work with you. Mm -hmm. I'm flattered. You should be. Let me tell you something about me, right? I like the best. I like the best clothes, the best food, the best wine. I've got the best shiner. <laughs> and you, darling, you're the best. Oh. You're the best assistant I've got. And Gina? Gina was the best girlfriend I ever had. Did uh, get a word with you about David? Uh, what about him? Well, 
it's probably best if I'll tell you anyway, she's making a mountain out of it as it is. My, what's up? Uh, he's got himself a black eye. I mean, you know, some kid had a go at him at school. I mean, I don't think it's anything serious. I just thought you ought to know. I mean, it's something and nothing, you know, kids are like. Right, OK, well, I'll have a word with him. I suppose it's time for me to take him down to the gym for some boxing lessons. That's what my dad did with me. <laughs> anyway, I finished up not charging her for the first colour. Um, Gail? Gail, are you listening? Hmm? Oh. Um, what were you talking to Martin about? Well, I was just telling him about David's black eye, that's all. He said he's going to teach him boxing. Boxing? Oh, I don't like the sound of that. He'll turn into a thug or end up brain dead. Well, calm down, girl. He's only going to teach him a few moves. You know, help him defend himself. I think it's a good idea, don't you, Audrey? No, well, I don't see why not. As long as he doesn't start wearing gold jewellery and saying, in it all the time. <laughs> what? Don't you think I've got my finger on the pulse of modern youth? Man, that of work, you have to keep ahead. Do you know, every time lovely David Beckham changes his hairdo, I have a stampede. Mind you, it keeps me young. We're going to the photographers this afternoon. Mm. Look at the contact sheets. Are you coming? What, this afternoon? Yeah. Goodness knows how they're going to turn out. Do you know, I'm beginning to regret I wore that blue suit. I'm going to turn out like Margaret Thatcher. Uh, I can't, really. I've got a meeting. Oh, that's a shame. Well, can't you just come for a bit? Well, I'd love to, but it's really important, you know. It's part of my financial recovery plan. OK. What time will you be home? Do you know, I've got no idea, really. I mean, take your time. I'll tell you what, you know. Take Audrey for tea afterwards. You know, on there. Oh, oh, that's lovely, Richard. Police have been sniffing round again, you know. Do you think our relationship will survive on visiting orders and phone cards? I won't come to that. Won't it? Why, have you been to see Dev? Yeah. I went to see him last night. Well, why haven't you told me? Well, because there's nothing to tell. He's not budging. Well, not even a bit. Well... Um, Jeannie, you've got to have another go for me, please. I can't go back inside. You don't know what it's like. I'll crack up, I know I will. Listen, if anyone can get him to back down, it's you. I've got a lot of faith in you, you know? Gina said you were in here. Oh, do you like them? Who's bought you them? You did your daft thing. Oh, did I? Oh. Well, I thought it was stupid keeping them all at the flat, cos I'm here most of the time, so I nipped home at lunchtime to get them. Yeah. Oh. Left half of them at home. See, that way I can see how much you love me all day long. Oh, I love you an awful lot more than that, Shell. <laughs> Where to then, mate? A snooker all on Moses Street. Thought I recognised you. Picked you up the other day, didn't I? Oh, yeah, I gave you that tip. Did you back it? Nah. Why, right, did it win? <laughs> By a distance. You could have been quids in. Won three grand myself. You're joking. Are you going to hit him? Do you want me to? I don't know. I could do, but bounce isn't the answer. I've got other plans. Adam White, I believe. What do you want? A word. What about? David Platt. Who? Year seven. Walking around the black eye. What about it? Heard of the food chain, White. Get lost. See, you're part of the food chain. So am I. You thump David Platt. I thump you. Only I'm not going to thump you, White. I just want to tell you something you need to know. If you touch him again, I'll come looking for you. If I come looking for you, I'll put you in hospital. See? I told you I wasn't going to thump you. You might give black eyes, but I break bones. Now, this is a serious warning. The most serious you've ever had. And the only one you're going to get from me. Nice talking to you. How did you learn to be so scary? Oh, you know, you hear things said, they have an impact. You're brilliant. Hey, you all right? Was that lad having a go at you? Just leave me alone!
There you go, mate. 6.30. Tell you what, which do you fancy? Tenner for the fare or a hot tip? <laughs> How hot? Hot enough to pay for you and some nymphette to go on a Caribbean holiday <laughs> for a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's hot. So you'll take the tip? Uh, nah, I think I'd better take the tenner. Please yourself. Nice one. See you around. Hey, are you supposed to give us the tip anyway? Idiots. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Oh, my, my, Mr. Critchley. Didn't expect you to have your form. Shame you can't remember all your assignments so easily. Not my fault if my home life's so miserable I prefer having detention with you, is it, sir? I blame the government myself. Yes, I'm sure you do. Good. Right. Well, well done. It's good to see that you've all taken your career options seriously. I shall read through all these and attempt to find the appropriate location for you to do your work experience. Yes, Sarah? Sir, I've already sorted mine. I'm spending the two weeks at Bethany's creche with the childminders. Good, good. Well done. Yes, Aidan? What did you do when you left school, sir? Did you get a job shifting trolley straight away, or was yours a slow climb up the career ladder? Actually, I went straight on to university studying English and modern history, graduated with a Bachelor of Arts, was taken on as a personnel manager with a big steel company. Then I went into teaching, spent some time running a mail-order warehouse, was part of Weatherfield Social Services, and owned and edited my own local newspaper. Blimey. Yet yeah, you ended up here, sir. Yes, because it's where I want to be. You know, you can have any job in the world, but it's worth nothing if you don't enjoy it. Don't get job satisfaction. And you get job satisfaction from being here? Well, I wouldn't be here if I didn't. I see that you want to be Prime Minister, Aidan. No, sir. If you look again, sir, you'll see I want to be the Prime Minister's husband. That way I can go to all the best parties, get the best service, and spend all my wife's money while she's running the country. <laughs> Push your chair back. Not everything will land in your lap so easily. Now fill the box in again. Surprise yourself and me by writing down what you really want to be. You only get one chance, don't waste it. He's in the back. Right. I see you right at work. Well, everyone's entitled to a break. What have you come for? Another slap? Sorry about that. That's nice to know I can still stir a little passion within you. Yeah, well, you don't. No, what? Just... What? Hatred? Loathing? I overreacted, and I'm sorry. Please. Now, what is this? Contrition? Well, what is it you want? I mean, do you want me to beg you to drop the charges? Is that what I have to do? No. no, I don't want you to beg. What I want is for you to wake up, realise what you're doing. He asked you to come and see me, didn't he? Didn't he? I mean, that's the sort of guy that he is. He sends a woman around to sort out his problems. Is no, it... you will let me finish! You said what you had to say this morning when you slapped my face, and now it's my turn. You know, what we had, you and me, was something that I've never had before. I was closer to you than I have been with, 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 with anybody in my life. I loved you. I got to know the real you. And then I made a mistake. And I'm still suffering because of it. Now, I've been thinking a lot about you today, Gina. I've already seen your heart break once. I just don't want to see it break again. But if Joe went to prison, me, I would break. No. I've moved on, Gina. I'll never again have what we had. It was my fault. You were just a victim. Don't be a victim again. 
So who is in charge of planning permission then? Where's he in? No, no, it's all right. I'll call back again. Yeah, you do that. Come on. Mate. Third of February, Sarah. Eighteenth of April, Gail. Twenty fifth of December, David. Oh, Audrey. No, nineteenth of December, Richard. Aye, aye. On the Prozac, are we, Audrey? Paracetamol. Do not exceed stated dose. Hmm. Help, champ. It's a lucky shiner. Ooh, that's a beauty. You should have seen the first black eye I ever had. Although, it looked nothing in comparison to that one, of course. Yeah. Yeah, this one's going purple round edges. Yeah. You having a spot of bother at school, then? Not what I can't handle. Yeah. Big shock, though, isn't it? What? Changing schools. I mean, you were top dog at Bessie Street, weren't you? And now you're right down the pecking order. But don't worry. It took me ages to settle in when I was your age. Yeah? Yeah. It's all part of growing up. Do you want to know another part of growing up? Not if it's going to embarrass me listening to it. No. It's knowing when to say you need help. Now, I know you think I'm second only to Spider-Man and the greatest ever person league, but I'm not a mind reader. But I am here for you. Whenever you need me. Do you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. But like I say, this I can handle. OK. See you around. See you. What did you put in your box? Entrepreneur millionaire. No, it's true. That's what I want to be. That's what I'm going to be. I'm not going to work eight hours a day in a dead-end job for peanuts like my dad, am I? There's your friend. It's hard. I hardly see him anymore. He still sees you. How do you mean? Oh, he's always looking at you. Catch him all the time, following you around. So we've got photographs of you stuck up in his bedroom. Stalker. It's all right, really. to come back with me, sweetheart. I'll be fine. It's no bother. It'll be squinting through my glasses. I mean, you thought those pictures would have been a bit bigger, wouldn't you? Yeah. The contact sheets, ma'am. Oh. They're meant to be small. Oh, really? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've usually got my headache tablets in my bag, actually. Oh, well, that's odd. I'm sure I'll put the alarm on. That can't have been. On the side by the sink. Okay, you sit down. I've got to get my eyes tested, you know. I've been meaning to do it for ages. You'll be fine in a bit. Oh. There's Richard giving us money for a treat. Well, we can still go somewhere. Can't be bothered, do you mind? No, of course I don't. I'll ring Richard, tell him I'm stopping here for a bit. Pizza in the freezer, he can give the kids. Will he be home now? Ah, uh, I'm phoning his mobile. Oh, you wouldn't get me going one of them mobile things. Sometimes I like to be unobtainable. Richard likes me phoning him. Uh. <sighs> the thing about these mobile phones, they've all got such long numbers. I mean, I can only just remember your home number. Oh, Richard's is easy. Switched off. Must still be in a meeting. Hi, Richard. It's, uh, it's Look, I'm going to stay at my mum's for a bit, so I should be home in about, what, well, say a couple of hours? Hope the meeting went well. I'll see you later. Lots of love. Bye. How are you feeling now? A bit better, actually, thank you. I'll make an appointment with that optician. That'll sort the headaches. Well, you kick your shoes off and I'll put the kettle on. Oh, lovely. Oh, 
Oh, and I've got some biscuits from that shop in the precinct. Belgium chocolates. Where are the biscuits? In the larder. Oh, no, Gail. No, I tell a lie. I put them in the tin in the cupboard. I thought I might be able to resist them more if I didn't see them every time I went to the larder. Ooh, they look nice. Mmm. Yeah. Can you imagine a life without chocolate? Mm. Go on, tell me all about it. Nothing new. Just men. Oh, men. Uh, anyone in particular, or just the whole lot of them? Dev. Well, thought it'd be either him or Joe. You won't let go of me. Well, it's not down to him, is it? You're with Joe now. You do want to be with Joe, don't you? Not, not Dev. Oh, I don't want to be with that lying, deceitful... Oh, pff. Sounds like most of the men I've been with. And they say women are complicated. Not complicated about me. Faithful bloke, fridge full of cream cakes. I'm happy. <laughs> Dev thinks Joe's all wrong for me. That he'll only end up hurting me. Love, you can't go through life without getting hurt. And he probably will hurt you. He is a bloke. But he said he's only thinking of me. Oh, <laughs> that's good of him. Shame he didn't think about you before, isn't it? Don't listen to Dev, Gina. He just can't stand the thought of you getting on with your life with a cracking-looking fella. Follow your heart, love. Have you finished with that vanilla? Is it this Saturday Candice's party? What party? The party she was talking about. Oh, no, you weren't there, were you? Is Candice having a party? Yeah. She never told me about it. Didn't she? No, she didn't. <sighs> Come out with us tonight. I don't want to. You can't have any more essays to do. You're always writing essays. That's because I want to get good grades. <sighs> I've not got an essay. Uh, well, why not, then? Look, I'm going to this club in town. You say you're a student, it's a quid a pint all night. What? So we'll just get leg assault night and I'll watch you getting off with some blonde. <laughs> or some redhead, or some brunette. Hey, and you might even pull. Do you good? <sighs> nah, don't fancy a club, but I'll do a few drinks with you. Oh, come on, mate, you need to get out more. Get that Sarah out your head. She's out of my head. It's been months. So she's out your head? Then why have you still got a picture in your jaw? That's my jaw. Yeah, well, I needed a clean pair of socks. I never go in your jaw, do I? Well, you won't find much if you did. I keep anything risky, well hidden. Come on, mate. Right, my turn. <laughs> Since when has it been your turn? You don't know how to kit box. I've been holding these cushions for you long enough. Come on. OK, changing the subject. Ready, go. Come on, hit it, you wimp. Do me best. Kick it. <laughs> that is pathetic. Come on, think of something that annoys you. Someone or something that gets you. Better. Come on, you can do better than that. Think of that block that Sarah dumped you for. That aid. <laughs> oh. Not bad. I'm still not sold next door. <laughs> well, what do you think? It was always after all he could get, wasn't it? Well, just before he left, he came round and he asked me if I'd like his old gardening shears. I thought, how nice, you know, neighbourly. Then he said he wanted seven quid. Place next door to Oh, is it still not round today? There was a couple of men in suits round yesterday. Date agents, I suppose. Oh, well. I'm surprised. Richard have not considered buying it and knocking through. I mean, you could do with the space. Yeah, well, um, we haven't got money for that sort of thing at the moment. Oh, is he anywhere near sorting his little financial hiccup? Oh, yeah, he's sorting it. It's just, um, well, I don't want him spending any more money on the family so soon after the wedding. Anyway, let's be off. Oh, yes. See that my lot haven't damaged each other? Oh, my darling, yes. Well, I'm going to have a bath and an early night. Are you sure you're all right? Oh, I'm fine. You don't mind me not driving you home? <laughs> no, it's only a couple of stops on the bus. Off you, go. you go run your bath. All right, my darling. Hi,
believe Oh, no. Oh, no, come on. You've got to tell me now. I can't wait for tonight. It's quieter in here. So you've seen him, then? Yeah. Yeah, I have. And? And... Oh, what's the point? He won't listen to sense. He doesn't care. He's just playing some stupid game. How do you mean? He told me that he'd drop the charges if I drop you. You what? What? Well, hang on. When was this? A couple of days ago. And you didn't say anything? Why, Gina? Because I was upset. <sighs> Who the hell does he think he is? I don't know. I don't know if I saw him. It's emotional blackmail. I've got a good mind to go over there and smack you one again. Yeah, and how's that going to help? It made me feel a lot better. And it'd knock that cocky smirk off his face. Yeah, and get you in even more trouble with the police. But I'm sorry. I tried my best. Can I have an hug? Yeah, come here. I don't believe it. You again. Look at the draw, mate. More like you grabbed the job before anyone else could. Hey, why would I want to do that? Because you think I'll give you a tip on the GGs? <laughs> well, now you come to mention it, you know. Get me home in ten minutes and you're on. Uh, no, we haven't got them yet. No, we were just looking at the contact sheets, you know. Yeah, yeah, they were very good. Good of him, he's got his eyes shut. Well, don't suppose that'll matter. Probably cut him off when they get divorced. Cut me out the photographs, will you, Audrey? Let's see who has the last laugh. Let's see. <laughs> tell me, Candice, and I don't appreciate you inviting my boyfriend without me. You, you're supposed to be my best friend. No bother today? Nope. Oh, that because no, Mr Barlow had a word with that lad and oh, uh, sorted him out. No, it's probably because Aid said he'd knock his lights out if he touched me again. Aid did? Hmm? It's great. Everyone now knows I'm untouchable. Right, well, I'll ask my mum and um, I'll ring you tomorrow. Yeah, he is here. Candice says hi. Oh, hi. Right, bye, Candice. Mum, it is all right, isn't it, if um, you look after Bethany on Saturday night because Candice is having a party? Yeah, I'm sure it is. Aid, is it right what David says about this lad at school? No, you won't be having any more trouble from him. Well, I don't think violence is the answer. I didn't lay a finger on him. Not my style. 
Well, I suppose I should say thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Hey, your family's my family. <sighs> oh, you look worn out. Busy afternoon. Yeah, you could say that. Oh, what's that on your sleeve? Where? Looks like marmalade. Oh, oh, one of my meetings was in a calf. Must have been someone seat or something. Do you want a party for your birthday? No, no, I'd rather spend the money on a new pair of shoes. But it's your 18th. Look, I've never much rated birthdays. You know Jehovah's Witnesses? You know they don't celebrate them. Or Christmas. For years, I thought we were witnesses. I mean, we didn't go to church or knock on doors or out, but my mum, she used to tell us we were, so she didn't have to get us any presents. See, so birthdays, they don't really mean that much to me. That's sad. Oh, is it echoes like? See, Toya, the way I view life, every day is special. Are you coming to Rovers? Yeah, in a bit. I've just got to drop this book off for Todd. I've seen a bit. Oh. You lucky swine. It's got nothing to do with luck, me old son. Yeah, well, I know it's not skill. I've seen you try to make sense of form. <laughs> 200 quid, though. Not bad, eh? You had a tip, didn't you? Maybe. Nothing. Mickey Edwards. Cute. He's a jockey. He gave me a tip instead of a fare. What, he lives around here, does he? Yeah, Needham's Lane. Ah. Keep me in on the old radio. <laughs> no, then. you won't. He's my fare. Uh, well, then you shouldn't keep good news to yourself, then, should you? Right, so long as you don't go broadcasting it. No, would I? Hiya. Oh, yeah. Your mum let us in. Oh, hiya. Oh, yeah. Brought you that book. Oh, thanks. Uni stuff. Concentrate better out here. What are you thinking of studying? Law, hopefully. Never get grades. Great. Can't wait. Get away from all them deadheads at school. Well, don't make the mistake I made. What's that? Pick a uni that's far away. Then you've got to stay in uh, halls or flats. I stayed at home too long. Stops you making friends. I can't wait to get away from here. You're that bad. Me mum's all right, but she always treats me like a kid. Yeah, it's hard being youngest, isn't it? My older sister, Leanne, she were like your Jason. Left school, no qualifications. It makes it harder for us. All the expectations. I'll be the first Grimshaw to go to uni. Oh, I had that. The first Battersby. You'll be all right. Are you? What? All right. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, it's just all about finding your feet, innit? Being your own person. Yeah. That's what I want to be. Well, we could go into town, go somewhere no one knows us. No, I've told Tyra I've been here. So? So she's me mate. And I'm your boyfriend. Yeah, my secret boyfriend. You know, really, we should have our own code so we can say stuff to each other and no one will know what we're talking about. What, like James Bond? No, like, right, if I said something about my friend and her fella, it'd be about us. Like, if I said, oh, I got a phone call off my friend and she's meeting a blind date outside the cinema at half eight, and then I'd say to Toya, I'd say, Toya, do you think that's a bit late to be meeting a blind date? Then she wouldn't know it was about us, hmm? But I'm not having a blind date. No, my friend is. Which friend? Because I only know Toya and it can't be her because you were talking about her. No, no. I am the friend and you are the blind date. It's cold for meet me outside the cinema at half eight. Oh, great. What are we going to see? Oh, no, we're not really going. Why am I going out with you? Is that cold as well? So, you ended up at Joe's then? Yeah. So, is everything all right, or not expecting Dev to come calling, or any more fights, are we? Dev can get lost. Like you said, I'm, I'm gonna follow me out. Good. Well, come on then, give us a smile. Well, it's a start. I thought you were having an early night. Well, I was, then Valerie phoned and invited me over there, so. I was just driving to her house and I passed this garage and, Richard, I saw your people carrier on the forecourt for sale. Are you sure? Yes. I recognise the number. I mean, whoever stole it must have passed it on. Where? I mean, where is this garage? Oh, on the way to Swinton. You know, by that big interchange. So I've just turned the car straight round and come back here. What a coincidence. Well, well, we don't know for certain it is our car. Yes, it is, it is. I recognised it. Come on, I'll show you the garage, then you can phone the police. Audrey, I mean, I, 
Thanks. I mean, it's brilliant news. It, it, it's just that I, I don't see the point in going up there now. I, I'll go up in the morning. You don't believe me, do you? Oh, of course I do. I, I just don't see any point in, in rushing around now when it'll keep till morning. Yeah, he's, um, he's had a busy day. We'll check it out in the morning. <sighs> All right. Well, I'll call you first thing. Oh, there's no need, you know. I know where the garage is. If it's all the same with you, Richard, I'd like to come. Hmm? If only to prove that I can tell one red people carrier from another. Work experience? I don't see the point myself. Well, it gives them a chance to experience real work environments. Yeah, well, if I had a kid working for me for two weeks, well, I'd just give them all the rubbish jobs. It's like having a personal slave for a fortnight. Yeah, well, we hope that most employers will use the pupil's time more effectively. Yeah, yeah but come on, they wouldn't, though, would they? I mean, Shelley's right. Imagine if he had a kid working for him, he'd have him darting under them sewing machines, picking up bits of cotton and everything, wouldn't he? You're dead right, I would. How old are these kids, anyway? Fifteen. Then they shouldn't still be at school. When I was 15, I was running two market stalls in a radio repair shop from my bedroom. Now, that is real work experience. Yes, but not many young people today have your drive, though, do they? Oh, you're right there. You want to see some of the school leavers at the job centre try and palm off on me? Brain dead. Now, you can't tell me that that last year at school did them any benefit. They should be turfed out when they're 15. Save the taxpayer a wad, that would. <sighs> we are soon, or what? In a bit. Why, where are you going? James wants to go to this bar in town. Well, you say you're a student and drinks are a quid all night. So the girls are absolutely hammered. That's the way Kirk can pull them. Uh, not, not that I want to pull them. Of course you do. That's why we go there. Hey, I'll get you a math student. They're not fussy. <laughs> you are? Oh, well, it's this theory I've got. You know, with girls who go to university, some are easier to pull than others. Hey, what are you studying? Media communications. Oh, mm, no, you're well out of his league. See, he has to go for the ones that don't get out much, you know, like your maths and your science lot. You're more uh, like a drama student, more picky. Mm, but what about uh, English literature? Yes, they are prime. All that racy stuff they read, take them home. You won't get much sleep. Oh, <laughs> fascinating. You should write a thesis on it. Thesis? Oh, it's a long essay. I'm doing one at the moment on consequences. What's that? how our actions affect the people. People we know and strangers, uh, how decisions or actions we take have a knock-on effect. Yeah, that's like a friend of mine. She was in this pub and this fella just tipped his pint over her. He did what? He threw his pint all over her. I mean, the police reckon he had a psychiatric problem. <laughs> what are you doing? You crazy, what are you doing? for? Oh, you said, <laughs> he had a pint tipped over her. So? Well, I thought hey, what's know. going on? Uh, nothing, nothing, we are just messing around. Well, get yourself cleaned up. Right. Fucking idiot, what did you do that for? I just thought, you know. I know what you thought. Am I forgiven? Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> You're playing the case, that lad. <laughs> hey, can I have a word in the back with Gina? What now? Please. Yeah, all right. Gina, you've got five minutes, mind. All right, all right. yeah, thanks. Well... As much as I hate to admit this, I do think he has got a point. You're right, I have. Unless they want to stay on and get qualifications to become a lawyer or a doctor, they should be out of work. I'll tell you what. Why don't you come and talk to them and tell them what it's really like in the workplace? <laughs> don't tempt me. No, I'm serious. If you think you're up to it. Well, chat to a load of kids. If you can do it, I'm sure I can. All right, when? This week? Uh, yeah. Yeah, right, well, why not? Oh, great. So you let the likes of him talk to people like Aidan Critchley. You must be mad. You haven't got long. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've, um, I've been thinking about what Dev said. Oh, don't thump him again, please. I'm not going to thump him. Maybe... Maybe his proposition, it weren't such a bad one. You want us to finish? No, no, of course not. Well, staying out of prison means that much to you that, that you'd happily dump me. Just hear me out, will you? Go on. Dev said he'll drop the charges if you finish with me, yeah? Yeah, that's what I told you. So, let's make him think you have finished with me, then he'll drop the charges. Well, I couldn't. What do you mean, lie? Yeah, we pretend we're over. Then once he's gone to the police, 
and show him just what an idiot he really is. If he thinks he can manipulate me, I'll show him. But I hate lying. Gina, I'd lie for you. I'd do anything for the woman I loved. Would you? Yeah, I would. Question is, would you? Here you go. Yeah. Aren't they great, these? They used to send you that one with roses on. Oh, my auntie Maggie, she's soft in the head, but she put 20 quid in. <laughs> what did you get for your mum? Oh, no. <clears throat> she must have sent you a card. Well, I told you she wouldn't. But it's your 18th. She wouldn't care if I was 118. Don't waste her money. Oh, I don't believe that. Look, she's forgotten she'd ever had me. She couldn't. Couldn't she? I am a quiet little thing. I just fade into the background. <laughs> but, Fish, you've come of age. So? So, it's an occasion. It's once in a lifetime. You, you don't have to tell me that. Yeah, well, yeah, it's her loss, isn't it, eh? Yeah, too right. Oh, look, Roy and Ellie have sent you one. Oh, they've they baked me cake and all. Yeah, but I'm surprised when you see it. Oh, I love cake, me. Oh, there's loads of cream. Right, are you ready? Where are we going? We are going for my birthday breakfast. Full English on the house. Come on. <laughs> Two o'clock. Not having second thoughts. What about turning a bunch of kids? How successful I am, you've got to be joking. Well, the rough element be more interested in your car than you. It might be sensible to leave it here. What, a self-made businessman arriving on foot? Oh, I don't think so. You could get street cars to take, yeah? I'm only going to be there an hour. And you're telling me my car's going to be wrecked? Ah, I didn't say that. Schools are a waste of taxpayers' money. And I did say that. Or you can hang around as much as you want. I've got a factory to run. Listen, all we have to do is pretend for a few days. A couple of weeks at the outside. What, so Deb thinks he's split us up? <sighs> so that I don't go to jail. Then we just carry on as before. <sighs> yeah, well, I don't like deceiving people. Would you rather come and visit me in strange ways, Gina? No. No, I know you wouldn't, because most girls dump their fellas the minute they get inside. I saw it all the time. Yeah, well, I wouldn't dump you. But you'd let me go to jail, right? No. So you'll do it? <sighs> is there any other way? Not unless you can think of one, G. What's he telling me? I've got to look Deb in the face and lie to him. Yeah. I'm not sure I can do that. Come on, it'll be easy. Think of all the times he's lied to you. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. I knew I could rely on you. <laughs> it's what being together's all about, isn't it? <laughs> See you later. So, uh, pick me up about 12, all right? I'm going to Swinton anyway. I'll go past the place. What, the car showroom? Yes. Oh, I'll come too. We don't need three people to check out a number plate. Well, you need me to pick out the car. I think I'll be able to recognise it. Richard, I spotted it. I want to be there when you call the police. Yeah, me too. There's thousands of pounds riding on this. Well, the insurance is going to pay out the money anyway. But they never give you what it's worth. I mean, if you don't find it, you're the loser. Well, I'm definitely going, cos I know what I saw. All right. 12 o'clock, but let me do the talking. Who's that for? Dev. He's popping in on the way to the Salford shop. I know he won't have had any breakfast. Dev can look after himself, you know. You don't need to fuss. I don't. Yes, you do. He's your boss, not your friend. He was good to me when I needed yeah, him. Yeah, and that's as far as it goes. We're on the payroll, Sunita, and that's the way bosses like it to stay. You've got the wrong idea. Yeah, just a few words out of place, look at him in a certain way. Only takes a little thing to upset the equilibrium, you know. What equilibrium? I'm not making a play for Dev. I think you'd be very foolish if you did. Well, thanks for the advice, but he's a good friend, that's all. Forget the fry up. I want it now. Victoria sponge for breakfast. Yeah, I like the candles. It's her birthday, Roy. She should do what she wants. Yeah, especially as my mother doesn't love me. I know what you're talking about. No, we were only saying... No, no, forget the candles, Roy. I'll light them later. Just cut me a big piece. <laughs> do you know, this lacks vitamins, also protein. It consists almost entirely of carbohydrates and fat. Go on, go on, ask me if I'd rather have a piece of that cake or see my man walk through that door now. No, don't bother. Calories win every time. That's why 
it was, next to the blue one. There's a red one over there. Uh, <clears throat> That's a, just a different make. Are you sure this is the right place? Yes, this is the only car showroom in the street, Gail. Well, th there is another one around the corner. That's where the car was, Richard. Well, it's not there now. Well, they must have moved it. Why would they do that? Oh. Girl, I don't know, clean it, to service it, take it oh, for a test man. drive. There's no need to get excited. Oh. You know, we should have come last night. What if it's already been sold? Well, if it has been sold, I I I'll find out. You two stay here. But we don't want to antagonise the salesman. Don't let him spin you a yarn, Richard. I won't. Not served one hot pot today. Still early, bar's quiet. No, no one's hungry. I can't even shift the sandwiches. I'll ask Deb if he wants one. Drink might give him an appetite. All right. Hello, <laughs> oh, Steve. Joe. Hiya, Shelley. You'll serve anyone in here, won't you? We're licensed to sell drinks to the public now. I don't want any trouble. No, you won't get any from us. I'll take these across. Oh, look, he's got a servant now. Doesn't matter what he's got, just keep the gob shut. I'd be well within my rights to ask you to leave, Joe. No need. I'm on my best behaviour. I've got more to lose than Dev has. I'll keep him apart. Just make sure you do. Ooh, so what, Stephen McDonald's your bodyguard now, is he? And if he is, what's it to you, Dev? There, mate, it just seems like you can't make a move without him. Dad, finish your drink. I'd listen to her if I were you. She makes sense. Really? No, you haven't got much sense hanging around with him, have you? If you're trying to antagonise me, then forget it. I've got nothing to say. It doesn't matter what you say anymore. Doesn't it? No. Well's moved on. Yeah, it certainly has. you soon know by how much. Yeah, you too. What made you think I fall for a line from Gina? Hmm? I don't have to take this. I can get a drink somewhere else. Happy now. Very. It's um, Mr. Hillman, isn't it? That's right. Don't forget a face, do you? Well, I try not to. <laughs> uh, sold my car, I see. It sold itself. The new buyer picked it up this morning. Um, someone local? No, from the other side of Manchester. He's been looking for that make and model for months. A friend spotted it. Stroke a look. It often happens that way. Are you looking for a replacement? I am, yeah. Something smaller, I think. Um, a year to 18 months old. I'm, uh, I'm not really interested in anything on the forecourt. Uh, you got anything else? I certainly have. Come sit down. What's he giving him? Well, it could be anything. <sighs> Tell you what, we need to get the name and address of the person who bought the car in. Well, we won't get them. I mean, thief would give false details. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I suppose he would. What you were saying earlier, have you ever fancied your boss? I was talking in general terms. I know, but you've worked for loads of people. There must have been some nice ones. <sighs> there were. But if there's one thing I've learned, it's to know me place. No office romances, no eyes meeting across filing cabinets. When I worked in an office, my eyes were firmly on the keyboard. All the time? All the time. I shouldn't really be serving you this without proof of age. Tell her how many candles were on my cake, Roy. Oh, 18. Oh, well, there's only nine now, she had half of them. <laughs> no, I didn't. Show me birthday cards first. That'll prove you're old enough to consume alcohol. I've been consuming alcohol ever since I got the first smell of my mum's breath. Well, she'd have to have some that's strong after giving birth to you. Hey, Mum, she didn't mean it. Will you just knock off being so sensitive? Who's sensitive? Uh, have you seen Kurt today? Oh, I haven't seen him, Lord. I uh, believe you're going back to school, sir. Yeah, for an hour. That's as much as a teaching profession I can take. What can you learn in an hour? More than you'd ever learnt the whole time you were there. Well, I only went once a term. I'll let Andy do all the brainy stuff. Oh, trust me, it's getting the thicker with the family. What do you mean? You're one of the weakest links yourself. If you weren't, you wouldn't be bringing up the rear at the dole queue. Why don't you zip it, Zippy? Have you seen Kirk? Why do you keep going on about Kirk? What, do you fancy him or something? Listen. I'm more than fancy him. I'm seeing him. You seen Kurt? Are you kidding? No. We've been keeping it a secret for ages. But I don't know why. After you get past his dopey grin, he's all right. Are you having me on? No. 
Well, well, if you're seeing him, then how come he's not here? Because I didn't tell him it was my birthday. Well, why not? Because if he knew and he didn't send me a card, I'd have to stop going out with him. Yeah, but he can't send you one if he doesn't know. I tell you, I want a birthday and a cake and a boyfriend and I want them all on the one day. He can dump me tomorrow if he likes. Hey, who says he's going to dump you? My mum did. Yeah, well, well, you knew you weren't going to get a card off her, didn't you? Maybe I knew I weren't going to get one off him either. I bet he does know it's my birthday. I bet somebody's told him. He's just like her, isn't he? He just doesn't care. Sure, Carl. Oh, I'm going to speak to that salesman. What do you think I've just done? He's just shown me the papers. Yes, well, I want to see them for myself, Richard, please, because I know that registration number was the same. It wasn't. Th they were similar. There was one number out. What do you mean? Ours was a V595. That was V596. No, this was V595. Good gracious, it's an easy enough number to remember. You showed me the documentation. We saw you look at something. That was the sales record for the car. They sold it first thing this morning. Oh, I don't believe it. Anybody can make a mistake. You only saw it for a couple of seconds. You said yourself you needed to go to the optician. Gail, it was the right make, it was the right colour. They registered the cars in batches, Audrey. That's why the numbers were similar. Most people wouldn't have noticed. Most people my age? Most people any age. Oh, we should have come last night. We'd have seen it then. We didn't need to see it. It was the wrong car. Well, I suppose it must have been. I doubt whether the car's even in the area. I mean, whoever stole it would have driven it miles away by now. Some car thieves steal to order. Oh, that's luxury car. It's any car you can make good money on. Audrey, the car has gone. It's probably halfway to Russia by now. The best thing we can do is forget it. Well, you all know about Mr Baldwin and why he's here, so without more ado, I shall hand over to him. Thank you, Mr Barlow. Have you come to tell us how successful you are? Yes, I am very successful. How do you measure success? I measure success against money and luxury goods, both of which are at my disposal. Yeah, and he didn't get it from mouthing off, so shut it. That young lady has a point. Carry on. Well, my story is very simple. I started with nothing, I worked very hard, and now I've got what I want. Fascinating. Take it or leave it. I'm interested. Yes, yeah, so am I. So how did you begin? I started by selling stuff in street markets, anything I could get my hands on. Knockoff? No. <laughs> I was smarter than that. The knockoff merchants were soon behind bars. I was never far away from the bank. A fairy tale. It's a career path open to anyone. It doesn't matter how many exams you got behind you. What you need is hard work and a bit of luck. Take you further than any bits of paper. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now, come on, this is easy. Someone asked me a question that's difficult to answer. Oh, Kirk, Kirk, listen, uh, Fizz is 18 today. Fizz who? Fizz that you're going out with. I don't know what you're talking about. Buy her a present. What? She didn't get anything off her mum. Oh, I. Look, it would make her smile if she got a gift from her boyfriend. Yeah, but... You know... What? Well, it's embarrassing. Look, she's told me she's going out with you. I know that, but... I'd... But you're not bothered about her? No. Uh, yeah. You've been using her? No. Yeah, you have. You're ashamed of her. That's why you've got to keep it a secret. Do not forget I said anything? People like you make me sick. All I'm saying is you've got a choice. If you want to go ahead and pass your exams, that's fine. Won't do you any harm. But if we leave school now, we'll own a factory like yours. You'll either own it or work in it. For slave wages? No, for the game rate. I wouldn't mind working in a factory. Well, I would. None of my girls arrive in the morning in a jag. I do. Well, do you like smart cars? Show me a red-blooded man that doesn't. Well, what's your favourite? Ooh, anything British. Uh, over three litres, uh, leather upholstery, luxuries fitted as standard. Cool, it's got you a bomb. It does. I pay cash. 
So do you have a Swiss bank account then? <laughs> I wish I had. All right, well, I'm afraid we have to stop there. Mr Baldwin's a busy man. But he's taken time out today to come and talk to us and give us an insight into a world that I, for one, know very little about. So let's thank him in the usual way. Thank you, and thank you very much. There is just one thing. I don't want to see any of you lot queuing outside Underworld for jobs. You can do better for yourself than that. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. My pleasure. What about when you worked over there? Didn't you fancy Mike Baldwin? No, I didn't. Oh, come on. I bet he was a right ladies' man in his time. Uh, I'd better get on. Hey, the jockey wants a cab. Mickey Edwards, the jockey. I'll go. No, you don't. It's my turn. So you've told them about him? Yeah, so. Well, you said you'd keep your trap shut. Well, there's no wrong with the workers being involved on the deal. It's not going to affect the odds, is it? Well, it is if they go passing on tips to everyone they pick up. Hey! We're not that soft. Anyway, you can't go. I'm ready and waiting. Yeah, well, me too. Uh, you go to the airport. I've got a customer screaming. Mickey's usual place. Yeah. Where's that? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? McKay, Terminal 1, go! You were lying earlier. Was I? Unlike me, ma'am, I can always tell. Well... There was never a red people carrier on that forecourt. And if there was, the registration number was nothing like ours. You see, the thing is... You didn't want to upset her. You're right. Th that's the reason I made you both wait outside. I mean, I go past that place a couple of times a week. I mean, if you had been there, I'd have seen it. So, what were you talking to the salesman about? Cars. <laughs> What else? <laughs> so thoughtful of you, Richard. Thank you. For the record, if they had just sold a blue people carrier, maybe that's what she saw. Well, it's come to a pretty pass if she can't tell the difference between blue and red. Well, we're all entitled to a little bit of confusion at times. At times? My mum's head's been in the clouds for years. <laughs> hey, you could go now, you know. Deirdre's finished work, and Dev will be at the shop on his own, won't he? No, he won't. Sneeta will still be there. Yeah, but she's not going to be there all night. I'll tell you what, ask Deirdre what time she finishes. Well, she's talking. Gina, if you're going to do this, you may as well do it now. Yeah, well, can't go anywhere till Shelley gets back anyway. I believe your debut went well. <laughs> oh, it was a doddle. I don't know why these teachers complain. Well, you're not given to modesty, but actually it went better than you realised. Did it? Apparently, you generated an animated discussion on the relative values of uh, academic versus vocational curriculum. Oh, yeah, I'm sure I did. Whatever that means. Well, what it means is you had kids like Aidan Critchley, who've been a bane of my life for months, interested at long last in what they might do when they leave school. Uh, he was a loudmouth man. All he was interested, really, were cars. Yeah, well, he lapped up everything you said and regurgitated it word for word. Yeah, he was probably glad to hear someone talk sense. You see, uh, you school teachers, you only know about red pens and blackboards. Now, if it's the world of work you want explaining to you, then you need me. Someone like me. You know what I mean? Oh, it has been brilliant, you know, <laughs> in spite of Kurt not turning up. Yeah, well, he didn't know it was my birthday, did he? Hmm? No. Yeah, hang on. Happy birthday. Oh, happy 18th birthday. Oh. There you go. Oh, thank you. This is fantastic. Oh, sorry it's late. I hope you like it. No, it's great. You haven't seen it yet. <laughs> oh, perfume. Just what I wanted. <laughs> it's steady on you. You'll kill him. How did you know what to get me? Oh, well, I asked Les. He said the one thing not to get you was a deep, fat frail. <laughs> That's to borrow the money off him and all I'm skin. Oh, you went into debt for me? Yeah, but you're worth it. Am I? Oh, yeah, I am, aren't I? <laughs> oh, thank you, Kate. Thank you. <laughs> Hiya. Hiya. Uh, listen, I've not come in for groceries. I, I, I wanted to see Dev. Oh, he's gone home. Anyway, I thought Joe was the man in your life. He is. What if you stay with him and he goes back to jail? He won't. Well, that's not going to happen. It might. 
Dev's a passionate man. He means what he says. Yeah, well, I wouldn't call him passionate. I'd say devious, more like. He's not the only one. He was entitled to report what Joe did. He put him in hospital. Yeah, well, so what? Dev doesn't care who he hurts. He's only trying to stop Joe from messing up your life. Yeah, well, I can take care of myself. Anyway, Dev's out for his own interests, not mine. His card's marked. What do you mean? See, if I tell you this, you've got to promise, mate, you won't tell anyone. I won't. Me and Joe are going to stop seeing each other. Then, when Dev drops the charges and the police lose interest, we get back together, come in here and tell Dev. You mean you've planned it? You're going to lie to him? Yeah, well, I mean, he started it. Oh, that's, that's dishonest. And it's cruel. Not long ago, you were going to marry Dev. Yeah, and didn't I have a lucky escape? Joe is twice the man he ever was. I not cross the street for Dev anymore. But for Joe, I'd do anything. Why all he does is tell you lies. All right, he wasn't completely honest with me at the start. But we know where we stand with each other now. At least he didn't manipulate me. No, 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 that's Dev's territory. Sounds like you're the one that's manipulating Dev. Listen, Sunita, he's getting no more than he deserves. Dev's the victim in all this, and you're ganging up on him. You don't know the half of this. You mean I don't know what else you and Joe are planning? No, I mean you don't know why we're doing it. Oh, it's easy enough to work out, isn't it? Joe's jealous of Dev. And you're on the rebound because months ago, Dev took a quick look at Karen MacDonald. I mean, who can blame him? She's very attractive. It wasn't Karen MacDonald. It was Deirdre Rashid. And he didn't stop at looking. What? You heard. Dev likes to handle the goods. Hey, I bet he has it off with every one of his shot girls in turn. Yeah, probably next on the list. He had an affair with Deirdre? Yeah. Yeah, last Christmas, when he was still engaged to me. Anyway, it probably wasn't much of an affair. Too short and sweet. He couldn't have. Well, he did. And why not? I mean, she works for him. She's fair game. So what do you think about your precious boss now, Sunita? Oh, it's a card from the photographers. Photos are ready. Smash in. Have I got a clean blouse? Well, I haven't washed one. Try your bedroom floor. Mum, Bethany put crayon on that one. Bethany, I bet it were you colouring I Love Aid all over your maths book again. How many times have I told you that dirty washing goes in the linen basket? Well, they're going to be the last photos we have of you without a number underneath. Police are wanting to interview David the Troll Platt. Don't see why we have to have these flipping photos. We all know what each other looks like. Mum, what am I going to do? Look minging as usual. These photos of our happy, loving family. Would you like me to pick them up? No, it's all right. I'll pick them up after work, take them round to me, ma'am. Why don't you get Audrey over here? Then we can look at the photos together. Mm. Good idea. Mum! Oh, it's too late to wash one. You'll just have to pick the cleanest or, uh, should I say, the least dirty. Oh, hi, ma'am. No, everything's fine. <laughs> So have you told Richard he's got his eyes shut on half of them? <laughs> All right, love. After work. Bye. Morning. Oh. Coffee? No, Ta. I came back for my shoes. Hey. Okay. Uh, my shoes. I left them. I came back just now. Oh. Yeah, I've been up for an hour. Oh. Yeah, I thought it must have been you that stayed last night. Me? Of course not, no. All oh, right, well, it must have been someone else who went to the loo at half three and left the toilet seat up then. Uh, yeah, uh, good one. Yeah. See ya. Hiya. You all right? Liz, <coughs> tell Kirk that uh, denial isn't just a river in Egypt. You are? Oh, all right. <laughs> Gina. Oh, yeah. I thought you'd kill. Yeah, well, um, <clears throat> I had an early night. Yeah, but Deb, what did he say when you told him? I haven't. Oh, what? Oh, he wasn't there, John. I don't know what I'm going to say to him. Just that we're splitting up, that's all. Yeah, I'd rather tell him to go and take a running jump. Yeah, I know, but look, all we have to do is convince him. As far as anyone else is concerned, we're just cooling things off, aren't we? Yeah, we shouldn't have to be doing this. We don't have a choice, Gina. Either we agree to split up, and I'm back inside. Will we still see each other? 
Yeah, yeah, if that's what you want. Why don't you? Oh, genial love, yeah, of course I do. Mm. Ooh, hello, young lovers. I hate having to lie. I know, sweetheart. It won't be for long. Just to assure he's dropped the charges, that's all. Mm. <laughs> oh, they're, uh, they're interviewing Shelley. She said they were coming. Right. Well, just as long as she doesn't drop me in it anymore. Listen, I'm going to have to go. When are you going to go and see Dev? Well, sometime. Today, I don't know. OK, all right. Don't worry. It'll all work out, OK? Just making our own, are we? Sorry. Hey, uh, have you got out for hangovers? Celebrate your birthday too well, did you? Well, they reckon you can't take it when you get older. <laughs> Eighteen's hardly over the hill. So when did you go over the hill? Well, I, uh, I like to think I haven't quite reached the summit yet. Still up for a bit of fun is our degree. <laughs> Must be hard for you, though, you know, being with a much older bloke. Well, uh, Ken's very young for his age. Bet you could still fancy something young and fit, though. Oh, of course I could. Question is, would they fancy me? Hmm. Watch out, Kirk Deidre's on the rampage. Gone. Sorry. Joke. I got out for hangovers. Not your birthday, no. Hey? Oh, no, I was drinking, my les. You can't half put it away. It was your birthday, though, weren't it, Fizz? Did you get everything you wanted? Yeah, I did, sir. See yeah. ya. Please do, yeah? Oh, I'll not bother. I'm feeling better. Fresh air. Listen, uh, have I done something to upset you? No. Like what? Well, I don't know, but if I have, just say. Don't be daft. You're like a mother to me in here. Well, I'd have preferred big sister, but, uh, ta. Max seen it, so it's Richard. Hi. Is Audrey there, please? Uh, she's in the middle of a poem. Uh, no, no, I'll tell you what, it doesn't matter, no. Um, could you just remind her to come round ours after work to look at some photos? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Bye. Hey, that looks important. Oh, no, just the rest of his life. Not special. It's the unions I'm considering. Well, what are you thinking of? Belfast, Exeter, Aberdeen, Rismuth. Where's that Wales? Oh, <laughs> don't ask for a job at streetcars, love. Why well, is there nothing closer? What's wrong with Manchester or Liverpool? No, I just fancy these. Yeah, and why would you want to stay around here? Well, I'm just surprised he's not looking at local places. Don't you want him to stay? Actually, I'd rather he got right away. I mean, if he's going to study law, he ought to do it in the best place he can. Um, there was Aberdeen as well, wasn't there? Five-year course in Scotland. Hey, did you never fancy going away to uni? Not when I applied, no. Uh, now, though, I wish I had. Ah, I hope you're listening to that. You see, it's all about a new start, away from home, new people. Let's face it, it's absolutely nowt you to stay around Weatherfield for. Excuse me. <coughs> is it just me, or is, is there something wrong with her today? I'm glad she's been off with you as well. I mean, we, we haven't, like... Forgotten her on her birthday or no? I don't think so. No. Well, why don't you ask what's wrong? Well, I tried earlier. Yeah. Why don't you? Me. Because <laughs> I don't really need to go looking for any more trouble at the moment. Thank you. You know, Richard rang the salon, make sure I didn't forget to come. Oh, if I'd have done that, you'd have accused me of nagging. Oh, <laughs> listen, you don't get many men that are that thoughtful. Well, you can see that by the photos. I mean, look how he's looking at you. Except the one where he's got his eyes shut, of course. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh here they are. Hi, sweetie.
Peter, come and look at these. Look how bonny Bethany is. Is David not with you? Uh, no, he's at Roy's with Martin. Oh, well, Hi. yes, and that's another thing. Thank you. At least uh, Richard doesn't ruin the photos. Gwen, that's horrible. No, what I mean is, well, he really seems part of the family, doesn't he? Oh, don't let David hear you say that. Where is Richard, anywhere? Ah, uh, he's working. He's with a client and rang to say he won't be long. Oh, oh Sarah, look at that one. Look how I like you and Beth look. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sir, make your jump, sorry. <laughs> no. No, I've just come to read your electric meter. Uh, I, I was just going out. It won't take a second. Uh, the alarm. Uh, I've just set it. Uh, I'd better switch it off. Yeah, we don't want the police coming on a wild goose chase, do we, eh? No, no. Uh, come in. There you go. There's your meter. Thank you, Gina. I'll get these. Oh, That's thanks. okay. Yeah. Never say no to a free drink. Oh, one day in the classroom's <laughs> driven you to that. If I can keep a factory load of stroppy women in line, there's no way I was going to be driven to drink by a few kids. Does she think she's God's gift or what? Deirdre? Yeah. Um, you notice she flirts without with a pulse and trousers. Um, no, no, actually, I haven't. Look at her. She's going to have her tongue in his ear in a minute. No, oh, no, they're just best mates. Oh, actually, no, they're not. Oh, yeah. They had an affair years back when her and Ken were first together, before she ran off with that waiter. Peter told me. She makes like butter wouldn't melt. Oh, come on. I mean, she's not exactly in the same league as your boss, is she? All the women he's had lately, and he's still getting into fights over Gina. Dev's an attractive man. He's like any other bloke, though. Keeps his brains in his trousers. And there's always women who'll take advantage. Hello. Hiya, Peter. Can I get you one? Oh, I'm staying over with your dad. Uh, no, you're right, thanks, No, she would have finished that sentence with then don't bother coming home after. It's a night off, so we're going to stay in place. You don't have to. Coming from someone that knows all about this, Sunshine, I go now. Any further delay and... Oh. Yes, point taken. Right, you ready then, madam? <laughs> He's very well trained, isn't he? Gina, love, are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. Have a nice night. Bye. See ya. See ya. Sure. So you told me the police today. Uh, yeah, they came to see you, John. Right. So, uh, what did you tell them? Well, what I saw, that you started a fight with Dev. Joe, I'm really sorry. Well, you had no reason to lie, did you? Oh, come on, love. No, she didn't, Joe. So, are you ready for a career change? Yeah, I might take it on as a retirement job like you have. Oh, you were only there for one hour. Just imagine spending all week with that lot, never mind all year. Well, imagine trying to keep my girls in line day after day. It's like wrestling with a greasy pig. Oh, right. Well, in that case, I have no problem taking on one of my kids for a week or two. Hey? Aidan Critchley, fan of your various cars. I'm trying to sort out work experience, and he really needs to go to someone who can keep him in line. Nah. With his attitude, Janice and those girls, they crucify him. Oh, worth a try. No, seriously, it's no place for kids. Especially at the moment. I mean, if the girls aren't playing up, we're getting visits from the boys in blue. I tell you, it's one nightmare after another. Oh, well, never mind. The thing is, I can't bribe you. It's your round now. <laughs> the weekend starts here. Give us a pie, Gina. Uh, right, love you. I'll be back in a minute. What is wrong with you two? Nothing. We're just not letting on to everybody, that's all. And whose idea is that? You know, both of us. Are you ashamed of going out with him or something? No. And he's not ashamed of you? If I'm in better not be. Well, then. Well, then, what? He was like this with me and Spider, you know. He wanted us to keep it a secret. He was that much older than me and thought that people wouldn't understand. I just felt like he didn't want to admit we were together. No, it's not like that. Maybe not, but when we did, you know, go public, it felt fantastic. I hadn't realised how much I'd hated what we'd been doing. Yeah, but once people know, then it puts pressure on, doesn't it? You know, with his mates and my mates. I'm your mate. Yeah? Yeah, of course. Look, I'm glad you've seen someone. Why should anyone think different? So, 
you reckon we should let on to people then? I think that's what I've said. Right, I'll talk to him about it. Well, go on then. You're a grown woman now. Oh, yeah, I am. Out. Hey, you, my place now. Well, she's not talking to me, Sunshine. But I'm waiting for the pint. Not anymore, you're not. What do you want? Have you seen him yet? No, I haven't. Anyway, I'm working a double shift. You don't know, you know. This car's outside the shop. When do you break? Well, I want to get something to eat then. Anyway, I still don't know what I'm going to say to him. Gina, this time tomorrow, I could be in the cell. I mean, Shelley's already gone and told the police that I started it and all, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Being selfish. No, look. It's OK, I understand. Luke, I'm off in an hour. This means everything to me. You do know that, don't you? Yeah. Got to go. Lots of thirsty punters to serve. All right. Oh, I've read about stuff like this, you know. Like what? A chick seen a bloke in a bar. She can't wait to get him on her own so she can jump on him. Chick? Right, you. Sit in that chair. Ooh, bossy, I like that. Now, stay. Hey. Right. Are you ashamed of me? You what? You heard. No. Well, why don't you want anyone knowing about us? You don't either. Kirk, Toya caught you coming out of my bedroom this morning and you still couldn't admit it. What about you? You've not exactly been shouting it from the rooftops. Yeah, well, I just don't like being ignored in public. OK. We'll go back to the rovers and we'll walk in together. And do we get a snog and all? Yeah. Yeah? Well, why not? If I can have that pint. Er, uh, yeah, go on then, but not just yet. Hey. Well, don't people usually shake hands on a deal? Come on. <gasps> and don't I draw all over the pictures. <laughs> no, that's the best. Yeah. At last! Oh, oh, you be here soon. Sorry, I got held up. Mm, that long-term scheme I told you about. Uh, and here's you telling me not to believe. <laughs> hey, let's have a look, then. Whoa. Well, you chose the one with me eyes closed. <laughs> The ones where you weren't, David was picking his nose. No, I won't. I don't eat. Now, come on, this is the best one of every Potter. Oh, wow. <laughs> Am I not the luckiest man in the world to have a family like you lot? Eh? Mm. Hey, it's Kurt Vinny. Uh, yeah, earlier on. Oh, he's supposed to meet me here. Do you know who he is? Uh, no, sorry. Tell you, you were in Fizz room, weren't you, when he came in? Uh, yeah, I think he had um, somewhat to sort out. Hey, perhaps he scored with Big Red. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. He couldn't score if Giggs was providing the passes <laughs> without the goalie. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't fancy Fizz, would he? Actually, they did leave together. He would. Well, you did. <laughs> yeah, but... Hey, what's wrong with Fizz? No. Well, she's not going to fancy him, is she? Hey, are the police going to take any action over that fight between Dev and Joe Carter? Handbags at dawn? Hardly a fight, was it? Mm, bad enough for Dev, though. Ending up at our place. Yeah, Deirdre said it was a deal between you and Dev that went wrong. Complicated, but uh, same old story. Bottom line, it was about a woman. Yeah, a younger generation, eh? Can't see two men fighting over a woman. Yeah, it's pathetic. Oh, I forgot. I said I was going to meet him. Right, go and meet him. You can bring me a drink over. Uh, uh, yeah, of course, yeah. So, uh, you and her going out? Oh, how did you guess? <laughs> sort of. How long? Um, a bit. Right, slide one you, eh? This is all right, you know. This is all right, laugh. Why don't you tell me he was desperate? You could have took Monica out for a walk. I'll <laughs> get him. You did. Yeah, well. Let's walk out of order and get us a pint, both of us. Sorry. Two pints, please, Gina. Well done. You're right. Do you feel better? Now it's all out in the open. Well, yeah, partly that, and partly because we've just had half an hour in the flat on our own. <laughs> 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 Little tackle bridge! <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you want to lift her candy, oh, says my darling. Oh, no, I just need to tie her out a bit before bed. She likes to push the buggy herself. Oh, well, she'll be running rings around you before long. <gasps> oh, I've left my washing in the machine. I've got to get it dried. Bye. Mwah. Bye. Bye-bye. Hiya. Hi. Listen, me mum were well out of order, having a dig like that. Yeah, well, she was right, though, wasn't she? 
I mean, about getting away. I know I would if I had the chance. You will do. Well, with a baby. Going to school soon herself. Lucky if the furthest I get is there. You could go somewhere local, like Toya's done. I rather earn some money. How's your David? Well, after the black eye, back to being cocky as usual. Never mind. Yeah, Aidan had a word with the guy that hit him. Yeah, I saw. Threatening the kid who hit David. Guess he nowhere does that. Yeah, well, it worked, didn't it? it Please, my mum for once. Flipping action man. Yeah, well, you know what they say. Actions speak louder than words. See ya. I just don't think this is going to work. Listen, he has to. He's got to believe that you and me are finished. So I just go in there and say, me and Joe are finished. And he says, all right, I'll drop the charges then. Yeah, it works for me. Listen, Gina, love, all you can do is try, all right? I just don't like lying. Exactly. He knows that. So we'll believe whatever you tell him. Are you two reliving your youth or something? You are. Well, you're like a couple of teenagers. Every time I come round the corner, you're snogging. I'm sorry, you're jealous of something. Just had to apologise for you. Do you too. Sarah, you upset her, you know. Oh, and like she hasn't upset you often enough. Anyway, I remember what I said. Big world out there, Todd. And it's full of lasses with plenty more to offer you than Sarah. I might have a baby, but I'm a sweet little thing, really. Platt, you deserve much, much better than her. Is everything all right? Of course. Why shouldn't it be? Well, if you're sure, I'll see you tomorrow. You said your good nights to Dev, then? Well, I've told him I'm going, yeah. We ought to get a revolving door fitted just for his women. Oh, very funny. Is he in? He's in the back. Are you still going to do what you said? Well, I don't have a choice, do I? Not if I don't want Joe going back to jail. Mm-hmm. Got a minute? Sure. I did what you wanted. I told Joe that I didn't want to see him anymore. Good. Good, and uh, how did you take it? What? I mean, did he cry, argue, protest? Yeah, but you've got your pound of flesh. I'm not putting sauce on it for you and all. And how do I know that you're telling me the truth? Well, I don't know. Look, it's what you wanted, and I've done it. Now, will you call the police? Gina, you I trust. Him? Ha! Ah, so how do I know? How do I know he hasn't just persuaded you to give me a story? I'll drop the charges, it's all back on again. Well, what can I do? Nothing. I'm trusting you, so you'd have to trust me. And when I'm sure I can really believe it's happened, I drop the charges. Deal? How long? Until I'm satisfied. I'm not a fool, Gina. So please tell your friend not to treat me like one. Do you know what frightened me? Frightened you? Ruining the photos. I mean, the rest of you, you're also photogenic. Even Audrey and self-focus. <laughs> I'll tell her you said that. But usually I can't look at myself without thinking how bad I look. This time, must be your good influence. Mm. It'll be for Sarah. It usually is. I'll get it. Can I help you? Is uh, Miss Dillman here? Uh, yeah. yeah. Richard, it's the police. For you. Richard Hillman? Uh, yeah. I'm uh, PC Dowler, Weatherfield Police. I came before. Yes, I remember. It's uh, about your wife, um, ex-wife. Patricia. A uh, body's been found. We believe it's her. Y you found Patricia's body, but how? I, I mean, where? I thought she was in Australia. She never arrived. That's why we came before. You came before? But I don't understand. I mean, how can someone have found her body? As I understand it, it was a man walking a dog. Where? 
Well, the information I have is that a woman's body was found in a canal about three miles from her home, with your ex-wife having been reported missing. A canal? I'm sorry, Mr Hillman. I do realise this is a shock. Yes, yes, I am. Um... So, well, what do you want me to do? We'd like you to identify the body. There's, there's no one else otherwise. Well, if she's been in a canal for some time. Well, she hadn't, apparently. I mean, I don't know the full details, but the woman's age and appearance do match your Patricia Hillman's. Well, do we know how it happened? I don't, I'm sorry. Inquiries are still going on. Oh, this is so sad. Poor, poor Patricia. Is tomorrow morning convenient, Mr Hillman? <sighs> yes, of course. That's the least I can do. Why didn't you tell me before? It was our wedding day, sweetheart. And I, I honestly thought it wouldn't come to anything. That it, that it must, be, must be some awful mistake. She was supposed to be in Australia. Well, you heard the police. I mean, she never got there. What I don't understand is, if, if she's only just died, where's she been all this time? Well, I suppose... I suppose that's something we'll never know. That's if it was Patricia. Oh, it will be. I, I don't think the police would have put me through all this if, if they weren't sure. I just feel so guilty. And why should you feel guilty? Because... Because I'm so happy. And poor Patricia's dead. I'll get you a brandy. That'd be nice. Because I remember switching the washer on before I went to work, but I didn't hang it to dry. Oh dear, I mean, did you go home at dinner time? No, Archie, oh, I'd have remembered. Well, we all forget things, mix them up. I mean, I'm always calling Norris Mavis all the time. <laughs> Trouble is, the answer's to it. <laughs> now, why doesn't that surprise me? <laughs> now, oh, you know, it's just a, a senior moment, though, that's all. It was like me getting in the car tonight. I couldn't remember where I was going, so I cut my losses and came to the pub. <laughs> ah, I know you're trying to make me feel better, but no, there must be another explanation. It wasn't burglars are out. But burglars who hang you washing out. But you've got an alarm. And... Yes, and before you ask, yes, I did switch it on. Well, perhaps it were Gail or Sarah. Have you asked them? No. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. It'd be Gail. What if somebody sees me walking around? I've just got one bald chin. Like who? Unless you're thinking of joining the Masons. So come on then, is this going to hurt me or what? I just wanted you to know why I used your razor. Ow! Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, you big soft. Oh, don't really hurt me. You blokes oh. are so pathetic. Oh. They bang their elbow and they need a splint. You know, women give birth in the rice fields of China and they're back at work an hour later. And that's after the equivalent of shoving a bowling ball through the nose. Oh, right, point taken. I'll go out and get your razor tomorrow. Ah. Oh. Well, actually, there's no need. I've got my own. It's just more fun using yours. Ooh, look at the air on that. Yeah. <laughs> Are you coming to bed, then, oh, bald one? Yeah. Yes, if I can walk, I'll come to bed. Oh, give me flowers a bit of water first, will you, love? The wilting. Yeah. Hey, I know how they feel. <laughs>
Andy and answering your phone. Mm. Oh, I can't see you. Yeah, I was getting worried. Do you want a drink? No. Sure. No, I'm all right. Oh, he's got me so paranoid. Checking there was no one in parked cars or lurking in doorways. Hey. Well, you know, I'm watching. Well, come on, you're not serious, eh? No, I won't put it past him. He even came out my flat back way just in case. So come on. What did he say? Did he go for it? Well, apparently he trusts me. Oh, that's great. Yeah, but he doesn't trust you, so he said we've got to wait and see. Wait and see what? I mean, if we're not together, there's not to see, is there? Joe, I did what you asked, and I did what he asked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now all I'm doing is telling you what okay, he said. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Calm down, sweetheart. Yeah, well, right? I feel like just telling him to get stuffed and that he can do what he wants. No, you see, that's exactly what he wants you to do. Because then he can blame you for getting me sent back down, can't he? You wouldn't want that on your conscience, would you? Hmm? No. Of course I wouldn't. Well, I tell you, I can't wait to get away. Ah, well, I must say, I envy you, you know, I... I love the cruises, all the dressing up for dinner and that. <laughs> well, it's all right for men. One dinner jacket. I've got long evening, cocktail, spares for Mavis. Spares for Mavis? <laughs> you make her sound like an old banger. <laughs> Funny you should say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Audrey. Oh. No more adventures with your laundry overnight? Now, that's a question you don't hear asked every day. <laughs> no, thank goodness. Well, I'd have left it out, just in case whoever hung it out to dry came back to do some ironing. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you're going to be all right? Everything's going to be fine, don't worry. Richard's ex-wife's been found dead. Oh! Well, they're not arresting him, are they? Ma'am, he's going to identify the body, that's all. Oh, that's a relief. Well, Richard doesn't see it like that. He's very upset. Well, yes, yes, of course. Listen, I know this might sound a really stupid question, but did you hang my washing out yesterday? No, why? In that case, I really do need a cup of tea. Come on. Morning, girls. Oh, just the man. Well, I'm glad somebody's pleased to see me. Well, don't get comfy. Job, Dawson's. <laughs> uh, no, get one of these two to do it. They're busy. Yeah, looks like it. Les, Vernon, you can't do Dawson's, can you? The fishmonger. Oh, sorry. <laughs> two things, Eileen. One, I'm on a break. And two, I'm the boss. Well, you're the only one available. Sorry, boss. Right. Well, does somebody want to tell me exactly what's going on here? Do you want to share your tips with us? If I had any, I would. Oh, well, maybe the fishmonger will have a couple. It's, uh, just in here. I, uh, I need you to look at the woman here, Mr Hillman. Take your time, and then let me know if this is Patricia Hillman. OK. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm sorry, Mr Hillman, but formally I need you to tell me I'm sorry. Uh, yes. This is uh, Patricia Hillman. Th that, that's my ex-wife. If I had a tip, I'd share it with him. Why wouldn't I? Well, maybe you wouldn't like to see your friendly neighbourhood bookie going out of business because the entire street's on to a winner. Oh, come on, Peter, you know it's every punter's ambition to see his bookie squeal. Oh, well, you should have been there last night, shouldn't you, sweetheart? Yeah, leave it. What was this? 
No, nothing. Let's just that one was a sadist. Let's just leave it at that. No, I was just demonstrating what women go through for the men. You see, hey, I say, Steve. Even though I run a confidential business, I don't think Vic would mind me telling you that that's uh, that's the only winner he ever backed. Cheers. Thank you. Now, would you mind telling Les, Eileen, and Vernon that as well? well I just think you're going to another bookies, isn't it? Oh, that's all right. I don't mind you being unfaithful as long as I don't have to pay out. Mm. You're talking to Vic or Shelley then? Now, why would I be unfaithful to a man who's going to cook me chicken curry tonight and do the ironing and then clean the flats? <laughs> you let Karen hear a single word of that. Is she serious? No, is she serious? Yeah, I don't like clutter. Because if you've been on a submarine as long as I had, mate, you'd understand. <laughs> hey, Peter, you've been on dry land for a long time now, son. No, come on. You get a grip. You come out with me and Steve tonight and tell your woman here to get home and make you suffer. Hi. Right. You've not got a girlfriend, have you, Vic? Now, here's me thinking it's because you had the aroma of a half-cured kipper, but it's because you're a male chauvinist, Vic? Yeah, I didn't want to say anything about this smell here, mate. <laughs> I don't want to say it. Yeah, well, I had to take the fishmonger to market, didn't I, before? With two trays of I don't know what in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mind if I borrow this, do you? No, I don't mind. Why don't you go and sit over there and read it? <laughs> You've been gone a long time. I was worried about you. Sorry, love. I... There are all sorts of formalities. Oh, dear. Questions. Yeah, but no answers. But it was Patricia? Yeah. Oh, Richard, oh, I'm sorry. Tea? Please. Sit down. This has been awful for you. I do feel a bit wobbly. Oh. And did they tell you anything? I mean, how it happened? No, not really. I mean, they don't know. Oh, dear. Did they mention foul play? No, but... I'd never even thought of that. Did they not interrogate you? I mean, when someone's murdered, they usually say it's by somebody they know. Ma'am! He was identifying the body, that's all. I, I just told them the truth, you know, that I hadn't seen Patricia for months. I hadn't heard anything from her. Nothing. They seemed to be perfectly happy with that. Good. And that's an end to it. <sighs> Looks like it. Ready for these chips, Vernon boy? Well, dear, mate, I need to put a brick. Bertie's dream. That'll do. Mickey! Yeah, it's a hot one, is it? Yeah? No, I'm getting caught up listening. Bertie's dream. I won't tell a soul, mate. Yeah, I'll see you soon. Was that who I think it was? Might have been. Bertie's dream! Running Monday. Oh, oh, we're in the Monday. <laughs> oh, we're in the Monday. Hey, Eileen, my sweet. It's Bertie's dream. It's going to become Peter Barlow's nightmare. Is this one of yours? No, it's not Mickey's. We had it ourselves. Right. Oh, right. Well, I better go and invest some of my son's inheritance. Look after the radio, Vic Club. <laughs> we're in the Monday. Oh, we're in the Monday. Oh, not Barlow, but about to come and rob you. <laughs> Gina, how are you? What do you care? Okay. Have you spoken to Carter? Well, if I have, does that count as still seeing him? In which case, you get him whipped off to jail. I just wondered whether you'd uh, talk to him about a conversation we had yesterday. Dev, you told me to finish with him. I finished with him. That's all there is to it. Is it? We didn't leave us a choice. No, I didn't, did I? You're enjoying this, aren't you? Just trying to get the right result from a bad situation, which is to get that guy out of your life. Why do you think this is any of your business? Why can't you just leave me to get on with my life? Because I care about you. No, you don't. You only care about yourself. Just leave me alone, and Dad. Gina. So, the last time you saw Patricia was when she was wanting you to buy her out of the company? Um, yeah. Smithers in your tea. Please. Uh, you're driving. No, I can get a cab. It will make sure you do. Do you know if she cashed the cheque? Well, I'd have noticed if she hadn't. Maybe somebody was after her money. Pardon? Well, you hear about it, don't you? I mean, con men, vulnerable woman on her own. Patricia wasn't the kind to call vulnerable. She's still finished up in the canal, love. Ma'am, it was an accident. There's only you thinking about murder. And on the subject of mysteries, tell Richard about your washing. I don't want anybody else laughing at me, thank you, Gail. What's happened? Gail thinks I'm going mad. Why? <laughs> no, I don't. My mum's washing was hung up to dry and she can't remember doing it. I said there must be some logical explanation. And because I can't give her one, I'm going to Lally. Well, I don't think that's very fair, love. I mean, that, that must be very worrying, something like that happening. Thank you, Richard. 
You're the only one that hasn't found it hilarious. Gina, can you give us a hand? We're busy out. What was up? No. Is it? Is it Joe? Oh, Dev, the old flaming mess. Oh, Gina, love. I've got both of them on at me, and I don't know what I'm going to do. Can I have a few minutes? A few minutes? You can't work in this state. You'll even put that lot off the beer. I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. I've only got one bloke, and look how he drove me to tears. You've got two. <laughs> look, love, I, I think you should go home. Buy yourself a tub of ice cream, take the phone off the hook and lock the door and don't answer it. It's meant to be your night off. Oh, you'll do the same for me one day. Anyway, it gets Peter out of cooking. It'll be dead chuffed that you can have a kebab and a tin instead. <laughs> Hello, Barlow's Bistro. Oh, I love how are you. Yeah? Ah, oh, you're joking. What, all night? Oh, come on, what about the meal? Yeah, I suppose it'll save you. No, look, love, if you've got to work, that's it, you've got to work. <sighs> OK, and you? Yeah, no problem, bye. Bye. There you go, love. You know, I could kill him for getting you into this state. Yeah, well, that's all this started. You trying to kill him? No, how all this started was him coming between you and me. I mean, right from day one, oh, he was stop one. Stop it, Joe. You're as bad as him. I don't want to hear it anymore. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's just. It's just that man, he, he gets to me. So, uh, What exactly did he say? Just that he wanted to be sure and didn't want to be taken for a fool. Well, look, I've been thinking about that and I've got an idea. Go on. Well, what if you thought you wanted to get back with him? You have got to be joking. Yeah, well, listen, just hear me out. If you do, if you just tell him that it's him you really want to be with... After all this? Gina, it's the only way. It's the only way to stop me from going back inside. Listen, love, you love me, don't you? Hey? Well, you know I do. Then please, Gina, I know how you feel about... Having to lie. But Gina, it's me only hope. Dramatically, the show will now move to the night outside in torrential rain and full of nitrogen. So you're gonna end up with beautiful shiny leaves. Bertie's dream. We are talking winner here, aren't we? We'll have back to each way, Les. Right, I've done it to win and all. Well, Eileen, it's a bet, you know, not a guarantee. Not solved the mystery yet? No. Do you know, I've had absolutely no sympathy at all from my daughter. But Richard, with all that he's got on his mind, you know, he's been so thoughtful, so supportive. It must have been terrible identifying that body. Yeah, well, it's uh, never easy, you know. Even when you're no longer with somebody, you know, they, they might have divorced, but, well, they'd have been happy ones. Well, he seems to be bearing up all right. And uh, I'll have a malt, please, uh, make it a large one. Are you celebrating? Actually, I uh, had to identify my ex-wife's body today. Now, some men might celebrate that, but... Uh... Oh, Richard, I'm so sorry. Oh, you want to know, love. I'm just... Uh... I'm just phrasing a glass to a memory. Oh, that's so sweet. Why can't there be more like you around, eh? Look, uh, I, don't, I don't suppose you yeah, remember yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, actually, uh, um, do you want to come in? Yeah. 
Hey, you managed that lot this time, then. Yeah. Yeah, oiled it. Yeah, uh, I didn't expect you'd still be open at this time. No, we're not. Oh. I'm having a nightmare. Yeah? Well, do you want me to wake you up or let you sleep? It's a wedding tomorrow. We've done all the bouquets and table decorations, and the bride's mother was supposed to tell me she'd change her colour scheme, but she forgot until this afternoon. Oh, nightmare. Exactly. Anyway, uh... No, just passing. And I just wanted to say, you know, the flowers I bought last week and lilies, they were, they were great. Good, good. So, uh, you, you meeting your girlfriend? No, no, she's uh, working as usual. She's put manager, you see, so it's not the best job in the world for nights off. No, must be um, difficult for you. Yeah, well, it is, because it's that's my local, you see, so, I mean, I don't like to go in there too much when she's on duty. So, uh, where do you drink? Oh, I drink all over the place. Uh, what about you? Do you know any uh, decent places? A few. Yeah? Well, OK. I don't suppose you fancy uh, showing me one tonight, do you? Tonight, I'm, uh, I'm busy. Oh, yeah. It's the nightmare. But you must allow yourself the odd evening off, eh? Yeah, sometimes. Then I tend to go to, you know, the, uh, the library bar on the high street. Yeah, so what time do you finish? So what's that, six-ish? Seven. Uh, gives me a chance to get changed. Right, well, I could be there on Monday night. I could, too. Great. It's, uh, Peter, by the way. Oh, Lucy. Yeah, I know. Your name's outside. <laughs> now, unless you know what you're doing with gypsophilia, I, I'd better get on. OK. I'll see you on Monday, then. Yeah, yeah, you will. Great. Can't believe you're off out tonight when I'm working my socks off. Yeah, only bowling with the lads, though, love. Oh, by the way, that reminds me. Can you remember that shirt I bought a couple of weeks ago? Have you, uh, have you seen it anyway? You're not wearing that for bowling, are you? No, but, you know, we might hit a casino after and uh, they're very strict on the dress code there, that's all. Mm, you get about a bit these days, don't you? There's reunions and bowling out casino. Wish my life was that exciting. Hey, listen, anybody who's lucky enough to be living with me has got more than an exciting life. <laughs> don't flatter yourself. What are you saying? Are you saying I don't turn you on anymore? Hey, hey, get, don't be daft. Listen, you made me late for work. Well, I can wait. Oh, come on, get off. Oh, will you lend me a tenner? Till later. Yeah. No problem. Here you go. Yeah. Cheers, love. You're a doll. Have See a lovely ya. night. OK. Right, and don't forget, I need you to do a big shot for me today. I'm nearly out of everything. I've left you a list and some money on the table. I was going town today. So, do it while you're in town. Oh, what about Todd? Uh, Todd's at school, I'm at work, which leaves you all right. <sighs> I suppose. Oh, good lad. And as you're being so gracious, I'll do you a favour. Bertie's dream. Hey. Running tonight, I don't know which race. Vic's jockey gave it to me, he's not been wrong yet. <laughs> you having a flutter? I'm having a good flutter. Hey, great, thanks, Mum. Yeah, well, just keep it to yourself, all right? For you, oh, a brown envelope. Now good ever came in a brown envelope. Here we go. Oh, great. Just what I needed. What's up? The Flaming Council are sending an housing officer around. What for? To discuss our relationship. What do you mean, our relationship? The one I wrote and told him about in that letter I sent him. Are oh, you joking? Oh, no, I'm not here. Have a look for yourself. So they're coming round to check and see if we're a... a couple. Oh, well, we've had it then, haven't we? We're as good as evicted already. Sarah won't be long. She's just getting ready. David gone? Yes, his mate's called for him earlier. Oh, he seems a lot more settled now. He is, and uh, and I'm grateful. But will you promise me that if there's any more bother, you'll come to me before you step in? There won't be any more trouble, Mrs Hillman. No, if there is. OK, if that's what you want. Hi, Aid. What are you doing here? I thought you might need some help taking Bethany to the nursery. Oh, well, Richard's already taken her, but thank you anyway. Thanks, Richard. Oh, that's not fair. Right, best get going. Yeah, I don't want to reimbile those bad books again. Or anybody else's. Remember what I said about David. No problem. Bye. Any problems? Oh, no, no. She was as good as gold. Well, thanks for taking her. It gives Sarah a break. Well, I was happy to have something to do, to be honest. Want a coffee? OK, yeah. Fit one in before I go to work. Uh, is that wise? What? Well, work. You've had a big shock. Maybe you should give it a miss today. Well, yeah, I'd rather be busy. Well, I can understand that. Anyway, life has to go on. I know how much it's upset you. Yeah. Funnily enough, it has. 
My funny. You live with someone that long, you're bound to feel the loss. Yeah, but I didn't love her. You did once. Maybe I did. But my life's with you and the kids now. And as the Greeks say, life is for living. So let me grab that coffee and get off and earn some money so we can all live well. You're a good man. I don't deserve you. Hey, listen, I'm the lucky one. Never thought I'd find anybody who loved me as much as you do. Good job you were wrong, then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't disagree with that. <laughs> He's uh, dead about. Why are you looking for him? Don't know. That's a funny answer. Yeah, well, it's a funny situation. He's gone to the cash and carry. I don't know when he'll be back. Right. Right, OK. Do you want me to tell him you were here? No. No, no, you're all right. I've, I'll see him some other time. Do you fancy a brew? <sighs> well, will I not get in your way? I'm hardly rushed off my feet, am I? Has he said anything to you? Jeff, why has he withdrawn the charges? I wish. Did you tell him you'd finished with Joe? Yeah, for what good it did. So what now? Well, I'm going to try and get back with him, aren't I? Dev? Of course, Dev. Gina, just how far are you prepared to take this? I don't even want to think about that. I just want to make sure Joe doesn't go back to prison. This is so not like you. It's dishonest. Well, what choice do I have? I don't know and I don't want to know. What? Gina, I work with Dev. I see him every day. Please don't involve me in this. I'm only telling you. Well, then don't. Yeah, but you're my mate. Which is why I'm telling you not to do this. Well, if I don't, Joe goes back to prison. What else can I do? What you're doing is very dangerous. Just hope he's worth it. Kevin? Hello, Kev. Got a day off? No, no, no. I'm uh, organising work placements for some of my pupils. Oh. Got anyone decent? Well, I might have. I've got a lad who's very keen on cars. Oh. Might I like him? Um, well, he's popular with his peers. And does everything the teacher asks, no doubt. <laughs> well, not quite everything. <laughs> All right, I'll give it a whirl. What's his name? Aidan Critchley, and he could start on Wednesday, if that's OK. All right, I know him. He went to girls' wedding, didn't he? All right, tell him not to be late, otherwise he's blown it. And it's going to be hard work, you know. Not standing around chastling all day like that lot. Thanks, Kevin. I owe you. Well, so we hear you look like somebody stamped on your budget. <laughs> the housing boat's coming round from the council. So? So? I'm not supposed to be living there, am I? Oh, they can't do out. Except to fit the pair of us. What? What have you done wrong? Well, Liz has fell well behind with the rent. It's not supposed to take in lodgers. Well, what are you going to do? I don't know. Our Maria's gone and my mum and dad won't have me back. Oh, you'll find somewhere. Neighbour? Living over there with less. I never thought so at home anywhere in my entire life. Hey, I'm really looking forward to it now. Well, I'll have to practice a few steps. All right, Mavis, I'll see you then. Hey, and don't take too much stuff, OK? Bye, love. Bye-bye. Is uh, she all set for the cruise? Yes. Bought a whole new wardrobe, it sound of it. <laughs> oh, Audrey, <sighs> I was going to pop round at lunchtime. Is there any more news on Richard's ex-wife? It was her. No. Yeah, he formally identified the body on Saturday. She'd only been dead a few days, apparently. Did they tell him what had happened? I don't think they know yet. Uh, I thought she was supposed to be in Australia. Well, it's all a bit of a mystery, actually. Richard is so upset. Oh, I'll bet. It must have been a terrible shock. <sighs> Does make you wonder, though, doesn't it? I mean, one minute she's rounded our girls, fit as a fiddle. The next, she's on a slab in the morgue. Is, uh, is there any indication it was an accident or natural cause? No, as I say, it's still a bit of a mystery. Well, talking of mysteries, mm. did you ever get to the bottom of what happened to your washing till the day? Oh, that! Oh, <laughs> the only thing I'm thinking of is that I must have done it myself and it went out of my head. <laughs> oh, well, we can all do that anyway at our age. I'm forever finding myself in a room looking for something, only the trouble is I have to clue what it's supposed to be. Oh, yes! Then you go back into the room you've just come out of and it comes straight into your mind. Well, that's it. <laughs> it seems to be an inevitable consequence of being over 50. Oh. Sorry, Rachel, I can't agree with you there. I can honestly say my memory hasn't been impaired by age in the slightest. Well, you're the lucky one, then, aren't well, you? Not? See, I put it down to a sensible diet and an active mind. So what are you saying? 
that the pair of us live on chips and sit watching telly all day? No, 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 but if you make positive efforts, you get positive results. Oh, I'd better make a positive effort to get back to the salon, otherwise they'll think I've gone to Lally and I'm wandering the streets. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Audrey, love, and thanks for popping round and bringing me up to date. It's OK. I'll see you, love. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Well, you certainly know how to make a girl feel good. But what have I done now? Well, you know how sensitive she is about her washing. Yes, well, maybe it's not a washing she should be worrying about. Uh, what exactly do you mean by that? But it's very strange, isn't it? Richard Illman's ex-wife turning up dead like that when she's supposed to be in a foreign country. If you're thinking what I'm thinking you're thinking, you better keep it to yourself. Remember what happens when you open your mouth too wide? Oh, don't worry, Rita. That was just a comment between a colleague and a friend. Mm. I intend to be the soul of discretion on this and every other issue to do with that man. She's been telling me about your night out. Has she? Mm -hmm. Hey, you're a lucky man to have a girl who don't make a fuss when a bloke wants a night out with the lads. Oh, you don't have to tell me that, Harry. Mind you, I have to take a bit of credit for that for myself. I've got a real talent for picking a winner, me. Hey, I'm not a race horse, you know. I know, but if you were, believe me, you'd be a thoroughbred. <laughs> Aye, and a winner and all. Now then, Harry, I say, shall I can see I've got a bit of competition on here. Aye, and the slightest hint of neglect, I'll be straight in, I'll tell you something. You know what, you've got no chance, mate. <laughs> oh, well, anyway, he deserves a night out. Just for being the perfect boyfriend, don't you? You say I told you, Harry. No chance. Yeah, don't mean I won't stop trying, though. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I hope you're going to be lucky tonight. I hope that don't mean what I think it means. No, you daft apers. And don't be putting ideas into his head. No, he's going to the casino, aren't you, after you've been bowling? <laughs> casino, eh? Well, just you watch your step, young man. Odds at that sort of game are pretty high. You can lose an awful lot in a very short time. <laughs> no, you don't have to worry about me, Harry. I'm an old hand at this game. I think I've sussed the odds all right. Ah, sorry to break in. Can I have a word, Aidan? Have several if you like. It's about your work experience. Yeah, well, I've no secrets from these two. They know I don't like work more than an expo. Well, you have to do something. Yeah, I know. So I fixed you up at the garage. Garage? That's right. Well, it's very nice of you, but I'm no grease monkey. Oh, I don't know. From my recollections, you seem to have shown more than a passing interest in other people's cars. But I've got no overalls. Mr Webster will provide you with the overalls, and he'll expect you to work. It's not just an excuse to skive. Hey, I might not like work, but I don't skive. Good. You start Wednesday. So you better get an early night. I think we all had. You are still planning on the salon, Candy? Yeah. So I'll be just on the road from you, eh? And uh, remind me, Sarah, you're... Uh... I'm uh, working at the crash. Ooh, the crash. Sounds like fun. <laughs> good, good. Anyway, I best get going. I've got to look after Bethany. Right, well, I might see you later on, then. Unless you fancy doing something, Aid. Eh? Don't look at me. I'm off with my mates tonight. Might see you later, then, eh? Brilliant, Sal. Cheers. Hello, Jay. Hello, mate. Busy? Oh, yeah, steady. Why, what's the problem? No problem. Just come for the bet. We've got the money. Don't you worry about it, sort of thing, this. And this is? Straight from Nelson's mouth. Bertie's dream? Yep. Hey, £10 win. Where'd you get that tip from? Why, oh, what's wrong? It's just that everybody who's been in on it, I suppose I can make out. Well, we all can't be wrong then, can we? Hey, Jeff. Investing in the family firm. Oh, yeah. Hey, expecting big dividends as well. See ya. Thanks. See ya. Cheers. Hey, I'm glad you're back. I think we've got a problem. Yeah, well, what's wrong? That's a lot of money on one horse. Yeah, which one? Bertie's Dream, the evening meeting. Yeah, and how much? A couple of hundred. Bertie's Dream, now. Nah, there's no real form here to talk of, Sal. So just a row of duck eggs and fifth at Newcastle. Yeah, but still, maybe you should offload some of that money off with another brookie. Oh, what sort of people's been back in it? Locals? No strangers, big bets. No? No? Ah, oh, we'll leave it then. I'll stand it. I'm feeling lucky. And if it wins, it's going to cost you a fortune. Yeah, and if it loses, which I'm sure it will, it's going to be a very profitable day. Oh, by the way, Sally, you're still all right to handle this evening? Fine, yeah, I could do the extra money. That's if you've got any left to pay me. Have a nice time. Oh, yeah, I'll try. Sita? She's on an errand. Back in about 20 minutes. Right, OK. Actually, it isn't Sinita I couldn't see. It's you. That's nice. I hope so. Listen, Dev, I just want to make sure we can still be friends. No, of course we can. You know what, after everything that's happened? Gina, I'll always be your friend. I know it was my decision to finish with Joe, but 
Actually, I've been thinking. I mean, in fact, it was you that opened my eyes to it, and, well, you were right. I just don't want to see you hurt. I know. The thing is, I only started going out with Joe in the first place, met you, jealous. <sighs> really? I know, it was stupid. The whole thing was stupid. I didn't think you were taking me seriously no, enough. No, no, I'm taking you very seriously, which is why I'm trying to get you away from him. Yeah. Well, I am now. Which is very good news, right? It's just... It's hard, Dev. You know, admitting you were wrong. Yeah, but if you've done it, then that's the, that's the hardest bit. Look, why don't you let me take you out for a drink? Serious? Deadly serious. Right. Okay, then. If you're sure that's what you want. I'm sure. just found. And? They don't think Patricia's death was suspicious. So it was an accident? Well, it could have been, but... But if it was, I mean, what was she doing down by the canal? Not suicide. I don't think we'll ever know. The only thing we know for sure is that she went in the canal and she drowned. Oh, Richard, I'm so sorry. They'll be releasing the body in a few days. I, I just can't help think that, that it was my fault. Your fault? How could this have anything to do with you? Well, I wasn't on the best of terms with her. You can't be blamed for what happened. Now, the least I can do is make sure she has a decent send-off. I'll get in touch with Archie Shuttleworth and organise the cremation. You sound pleased with yourself. And why not? No reason. Well, it might be. Are you going to tell me that? I might. Well, please yourself. <laughs> I'm taking Gina for a drink tonight. Oh? <laughs> oh? I mean, is that all you got to say? Oh. Well, I didn't know you two were especially friendly anymore. There you are, then. Well, do you think it's a wise idea, you know, retreading old ground? <sighs> Come on, Sunita, be pleased for me. You know, the only reason she went out with Carter in the first place was to, to, to make me jealous. Is that what she told you? Yeah, that's what she told me. Look, what is this? You got a problem with me seeing another woman? Go out with who you like. It's nothing to do with me. Yeah, but you're my mate. I want you to be pleased for me. OK. Yeah, so say it. Say it. Say you're pleased for me. I'm pleased for you. Oh, yeah. Oh. You. Oh, come on. <laughs> you stick us another whiskey in there, please. Yeah, please. Oh. You can see anything you like. I was, uh, stood there wondering whether uh, you'd remembered. Why would I forget? Hey, nice shirt. Yeah? Oh, thanks. Right, can I get you a drink? Yeah, uh, spring water, please. Oh, no alcohol. I like to keep a clear head. Maybe later. So, I was surprised when you came in the other day. Yeah, I found your card and flowers, so... Oh, yeah. Did your girlfriend like them? Yes, she did. She loved them. Just my way of saying thanks for letting me go away for the weekend. What, on your own? Ah, well, we've had a... Had a difficult time lately, you know. Is that why you came to see me? No, no, it's not. I, no, I love Shelley, I do. But you came to see me. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Well, here's to spontaneity then. Cheers. <laughs> Archie. Oh, well, hello, Richard. Uh, I wonder if I could have a quiet word. Well, yeah, of course you can. Yeah. Um, not in a professional capacity, I hope. <laughs> well, uh, well, actually, yes. Um, oh. It's my ex-wife. It was her body the police tracked from the canal. Oh, I'm so sorry, Richard. I, I heard about that. Um, I wonder if you would mind arranging the, uh, the cremation for me. I mean, there would be no need for a service. She wasn't a religious woman, and there's no other family except for me. Oh, just leave it in my hands. Uh, have the police released the body officially yet? I, uh... I, I don't actually know that. Ah, oh, well, you've, you have no need to worry about that at all, no. Uh, I'll see to everything, and uh, we'll come to some sort of mutual agreement as to the date, you know, once I've sorted it. 
Well, the earlier the better as far as I'm concerned, Archie. In, in fact, if you could push it along as quickly as possible, I'd be more than willing to meet any extra expense. Oh. So, the whole of the Royal Navy can be divided into skimmers and deeps. Yeah, skimmers on the surface, deeps underneath. And isn't there just the slightest hint of mockery in that division? Oh, yeah, they were uh, very shallow, the lads on top, you know. Ah, but not so the submariners. Whereas we were more, you, you know, you're thoughtful, more intelligent, sort of. <laughs> right, well, even on shore leave. Ah, uh, yeah, best not talk about that. So do you miss it? No, I don't miss it. No, it's a young man's game. You telling me you passed your prime? No, no. Oh, well, I won't say that. I bet there's still life in the old sea dog yet, eh? Oh, yeah. I think you can safely bet on that one. And what have I did? As a bookie, you'd have to accept it, wouldn't you? Well, then that depends on the risk. Well, there's always a risk when you gamble on something. Isn't that what makes it exciting? I can't believe it's out of time. The problem? Well, I mean, but we did say we'd just have one drink. I think we should stick to it. OK. Didn't realise we'd been talking for that long. Time flies when you're enjoying yourself, doesn't it? It does. And I, I have. I've, I've really enjoyed myself. Thanks. So it sounds like the evening's over, then? I think I really should get back. If that's what you want. Best all round. OK, well, we can share a cab, then. Yeah. Busy night. Yeah, I must have my feet. How are you doing for glasses? Actually, I'm getting a bit low. Want me to collect some up for you? Oh, would you? Oh, you little darling. Anything to help a lady? Oh. What time does this race start? Not long, no. Great, because we're going to make a killing on this. Fix horses always come up trumps. Well, maybe you should ask him for some tips for tomorrow, then. Eh? When the housing officer comes round and kicks me out. Don't even worry your head about that, because I've got the job sussed. What, is he not coming? Oh, aye, he's still coming. But they won't be kicking either of us out, I can tell you. How can you be so sure? Because the council don't split up couples. Couples? Well, we're not a couple. We will be when he arrives. All we have to do is camp it up a bit and convince Joe Muggins we're lovers. Well, you got to be joking. Well, it's either that or eviction, mate. Hey, up, Shelley. Two racing channel on. We've got that horse makers all a fortune. Hang on a minute, love. Just let me finish serving this gentleman. Well, don't hang on too long. It's only five minutes. We don't want to miss it. It's a big crowd, lad. Thank you, Michelle. Quiet. It don't matter, does it? A fella always picks you a winner. Listen, pal, no race is a certainty. You can still lose. Oh, we better not if you want to get out of here alive. And yet, we'll want to use Mr. Blabbed about it, cos I only told you's lot in the office. Yeah, but not as fast as Bertie Street. Just in time to see this lot lose a fortune. Yeah, I didn't realise we'd be staying. Nice, nice to meet you. Sure to everyone, the lining up. Just hang on a sec, mate. Thanks. Well, Lucy, what a great evening, what can I say? So you are going home? Yeah, uh, just afraid it has to stop. Doesn't have to, if you fancy a coffee. No, I should get back. It's up to you, no pressure. <sighs> yeah, no pressure, mate. Are we going on? OK, mate, yeah. Here you go. Keep the change, fine. Put the coffee on. Don't be shy. Hey, look, I can't, I can't stay long. Oh, it's a great flat, Lucy. It's, uh, interesting. Is that a polite way of saying you don't like it? Oh, no, I do. I do like it very much. It's, uh, it's fascinating. Well, it's not much, but I've tried to make it my own. Yeah, I can see that. Hey, look at this. I used to have a hat just like this when I was a kid. I did. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> That's from Peru. I went there once when I was younger. Well, I've never been to Peru. I've been to Brazil. I went to Rio. Let me tell you that, 
it's a great city. Yeah, I keep forgetting you've sailed the seven seas. Yeah, but I didn't see much of it from where I was, did I? No, I suppose not. So, uh, I painted that. I did, in fact, uh, all of these are mine, except for, except for that one. Well, you'd never mentioned it. You never told me you were a, an artist. Was, well, was an art student. Yeah, I did a year and a bit at college, but I had to leave for personal reasons. Oh, that's a shame. You like them? Yeah, I do, I do like them. I mean, you know, I don't pretend to know anything about them, but I, I do like them, yeah. Just a gut reaction? Yeah, if you like. I think that's the way more people should look at things. There's too much talking in this world. Yeah. Hey, look, Lucy, you don't mind me looking around your flat like this, do you? No, no. Help yourself. Uh, I'll put the kettle on. Ah, the coffee. Oh, so it was a genuine offer, then, the coffee. You disappointed? No. Not if it's good coffee. Oh, it will be good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't doubt that. So, uh, all this, it doesn't frighten you off, then? No. I'm intrigued. By what? By your lifestyle, your conversation, everything. I've had a great night. It's not over yet. Crunching halfway. It's Warm still John Gallagher. Is it? 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 Is Get in! Get in! Go on, push through, push it! Come on, you three! Push it through! Get in! Come on! Go on! Get in, son! You've got this! Push it, push it, push it! Come on! Push it, push it! Push it, push it! Push it, push it! Push it, push it! Reckoning one then. Enough. Well, Peter Barlow, eh? I never feel sorry for a bookie. <laughs> so, where are we going? Well, I thought maybe we could go to a club. Mm. Won't get much chance to talk in a club. I thought maybe pick up a takeaway, go back to the flat. Yeah, Just getting going in here now. I'd like now better than to stay here supping till I'm senseless, but we've got that council waller coming. We need something sorted. Well, couldn't we sort it in here? Of course we can't. This stuff wants moving. Hey? We're supposed to be gay. Look, I'm telling you, I'm not happy with this, Les. It'll be all right. Just you and me, a couple of cold cans in front of the telly. Now, come on. Oh, go on, have another shot. Oh, it's all right, Lynn. I've got one here from Kevin. Uh, so when's this next pickup for Mickey Edwards? <laughs> yeah, well, actually, that one won't from Mickey. That was one of mine. Get on. I'm telling you, it's right. I didn't get to see Mickey, so I'll pick one myself. Who cares who picks them? As long as they win. Aye, <laughs> come on, Vic. Give the little man his due. You couldn't pick that in a thousand years. I'm telling you, it was mine. Mm. Oh, uh, gin and tonic, please, love. And make that a double. Come here. You oh. are a real cracker. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I've always been telling them to listen to his mum. Hey, and now I believe her. Keep the change. Thanks. Yeah, it'd be a different story if it had lost. Aye, that goes for both of us. Oh, yeah, sorry. It's all right. We're in the green, isn't it? Yeah, but he's bound to be pig sick, isn't he? Nature of the job. You win one day, you lose another. Best go and give him a quick ring, though. Let him know. It's great coffee, this. What did I tell you? Yeah, me, I normally drink instant. Oh, I always prefer the real thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I suppose you can't really beat the real thing, can you? <laughs> oh, sorry. Would you mind if I take it? Yeah. Oh, I love. Um, yeah, not bad. I I'm really sorry. I didn't want to ruin your evening. It's just I thought I'd let you know. You know that horse, the one Vic was tipping. It won. Yeah. Some you win, some you lose, eh? Where am I? Well, I'm in the. Uh, I'm in the bowling alley. Love. Where else? Yeah, it is. It's it's quiet because I'm in the gents at the moment. Oh, <laughs> so 
sorry, I didn't realise. That's OK. Oh, yeah, all right, love. No, no, don't, don't worry. It's not going to break me, is it, Shell? OK. And you. Bye. It's your girlfriend. Yeah. So you're going? No, not if you don't want me to. I think you could do with a drink. I think you're right. So how does it feel to be back? Yeah. Yeah, it feels nice. Yeah? Good. Well, I'll get the wine if you get the plates. OK. Remember where I keep them, then? Of course I do. Quite like old times, huh? Yeah. Mm. Shall I have to shop? Yeah, sure. Uh, it's fizzy. It's champagne. Well, I seem to remember that you like it. Yeah, I love it. Right, so why don't we indulge ourselves? It's been a long time. They couldn't have dark hair. Hello, Hello. Grant. Mm, can I ask you a favour? Yes, you can. Can I do work experience at the salon instead of Candice? Um, what's brought this on? Well, I don't much fancy the crash, and I have Bethany all the time. Mm. I have to admit that's true. So what do you think? This wouldn't have anything to do with a certain boyfriend being taken on by Kevin, would it? Kevin's taken Aiden on. <laughs> Oh, a nice try, my darling. Not very convincing. Seriously, I didn't even know he had an interest in cars. Never mind about cars. What about Candice? She's supposed to be your friend. Oh, all's fair in love and war, Gail. You know that. So you'll take me on? Of course I will. Look, I've got no choice, have I? You are family, after all. Mind you, you will have to tell Candice. So, uh, so what is that stuff, then? A fancy one. Oh, I don't know, you know, it looks lethal. It's Grappa, I brought it back from Italy. Yeah? You get about a bit, you, don't you? Oh, not enough. You do, you get about more than me. So, will you risk it? Hmm. Why not? Try anything once, me. Salute. Salute, the way you speak the language and everything. I try. Cheers. Oh, it tastes, that's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Is that a bit much for you? Ah, oh, what is that stuff made of? I don't know, pip stalks, leftovers, I think. Well, it's uh, it's certainly distinctive. You can get a posh variety, but I prefer the basic stuff. Yeah? You're an unusual girl. You think so? Yeah, I do. You keep surprising me. I like surprising people, particularly people I like. Yeah? I've got your flat, Lucy. I haven't seen it all yet. Yeah, well, I don't know, maybe next time, eh? You're going home? Yeah. I think I should, don't you? You'll miss the full tour. Look, Lucy. Well, you don't take any prisoners, do you? Look, you're free to leave any time you want. Yeah, I don't want to. Too much, you'll get rid of it. Well, gays like football. No, Kirk, they like footballers, not football. Well, there must be some gay footballers. Yeah, well, of course there is. They're among the blokes all day, aren't they? Oh, and them records. Have a skeg through and get rid of that thrash and that hard rock stuff. Hey, I might have an old village people LP somewhere. Here we go, let's see what we've got in here. Here we go. No, no, no. Yeah, there it is. I thought so. Put that on show. Hey. And some of me barbarous Dreislands. You know, it's a pity. I got rid of my mum's old Beverly Sisters 78s. I hear you're very keen on the Beverly Sisters. Who's the Beverly Sisters? Don't go asking questions like that. What's it gonna look like if you come up with some daft like that when that council bloke comes? They're gonna know we straight, straight away. Hey, up, look at this. Hey, what do you reckon? Does it suit me? Will I pass? <laughs> hey, will I get away with it? You fancy me, don't you? Hey, you fancy me, lad. What's going on? Well, we're just practising. What for? Uh, you, you tell them. No, you tell them. R I'll tell them then. Uh, we've, we've told them we're living together, so, so we don't get evicted by the council. 
you are living together. Uh, as partners, boyfriends. And don't you say anything. Is that what you've told them? Well, it wasn't my idea. Hang on, right. You say you've actually told them that you are a gay couple. Yeah. Only descending someone now tomorrow to uh, suss us out. Well, if they see you poncing about with a feather duster, they're going to rumble you right away. Do you think so? You live in the dark ages, you do. Ah, well, that's where you're wrong, see? I've got my village people helping out on show and my Barbara yeah, Streisand. Shut up and let me think, right? If we're going to convince this bloke, then we've, we've got to do it properly. Any regrets? No, I don't. It's great. So what's wrong? Well, it's just that I don't normally do this, you know. What about Shelley? Shell? No. She's steady as a rock. Yeah, maybe that's what she thinks about you. Yeah, with good reason. Because I usually am. So why me? Well, you're special. You're different. Oh, I don't know. Don't ask me. Do you find me fascinating? Yeah, I find you fascinating. But I don't want to hurt Shelley, you understand? Good. Break her heart if she knew I'd done this. Oh, so you're not going to tell her? No. Well, what she do not know, it's not going to hurt her, is it? Well, that is a typical male response. No, I mean it. If I told her, it wouldn't be for her. It'd just be me, you know, shedding me guilt. Oh, so you feel guilty? Well, well, yeah, I do a bit, but, you know, I don't regret it. Well, that's good, cos neither do I. You've got to seize these moments when they come. They're few and far between. Ah, oh, come on. Good-looking girl like you, you must get loads of offers. Well, none that I want to take. Come on, then, so why me? Well, I fancied you. Mm. Thought there might be hidden depths. Is that before or after you knew I was a submariner? See? <laughs> <laughs> you make me smile. <laughs> You're a great girl. And you are my deep. You think I'm deep? Oh, yes. Or you wouldn't be here. Do you really want to be a hairdresser? No. I want to be Britney Spears, but common sense is telling me that I'll have to sell for something less. How's that? It'd be dead boring. You know, just cutting people's hair, listening to the problems and gossip. No, nah, it's a bit of a laugh, really. And with aid down the street, that's got to be good. Actually, there's something I've got to tell you. You're not going to be working at the salon because your brand's asked me to do it. You what? I am family. You scheming little cow! You ain't even interested in the salon to get found out that was working down the road in the garage. Sorry. And me being interested in hairdressing and all. Oh, the only thing you're interested in is my boyfriend. Your boyfriend? Maybe not for much longer. Well, you're not going to see much of him, are you? Stacking shelves in fresh goes. Cow. If you're really going to convince this bloke that you and Kirk are an item, you've got to get this rubbish out of your head. What do you mean, rubbish? Well, it's about being a couple. Not camping it about with a feather duster. What we've got to work on is a backstory. What's that? Well, you need to know where, where you met, what colour eyes he's got. Eyes? What's eyes got to do with it? No, come on, what colour eyes has Kirk got? I don't know. I don't spend all my time looking into him. Well, you'd know if you were in love with him. But I'm not in love with him, am I? <sighs> yeah, but I thought you were trying to convince this bloke that you were. Oh, yeah, well, for him, yeah. Right, so what colour are they? <laughs> Don't bother, Leslie Blue. Hey, they're the same as mine, so that's easy enough to remember. Right, so now we need to work out uh, where you met. Oh, well, that's easy. I met him in the Rovers. OK, good. Uh, does that mean I can still leave me uh, village people up here, me Barbara oh, Streisand? Oh, just forget village people and Barbara Streisand, will you? Gay people are just like anybody else. So no more camping it up or mincing about. It's what went through your mind the very first time you met him. That's what we need to know. I thought Les was scruffy. Well, that's good, coming from you, tatty head. Oh, she has so I told her. All right, calm down. We've got our work cut out here. It's great to be spending time with you again. Yeah. You don't know how pleased I am. I mean, after all the stuff we've been through, it's incredible. Yeah, it's great. You think so? Of course I do. I wouldn't be here if I didn't, would I? You know you mean a lot to me, don't you, Luke? Yeah, I know. And I just kept hoping through everything that's happened that I meant as much to you. Well, of course you did. You know I've always found you attractive. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, we'll drink to that. Actually, I I'm all right. Uh, come on, I'm not going to take advantage of you if that's what you're worried about. Uh, OK, then, come on, then. She could never resist the bubbly. <laughs> um, don't want to spit any. What's happened to you? 
into all the football stuff. Get in the cupboard. Well, get it out. I'm sure lots of gay people are football fans. Hey, what about me quo record? Shall I bring men back out or not? Hey, I should leave them where they are, Les. <laughs> oh, this is great. This is just what we need. What is it? Hey, it's you and Les at the painting party. Well, let's have a look. <laughs> well, you can't use that. No, you can't. It makes us look as though we're... Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh. What are you doing with Janice's photo? Ah. They're making you look like a couple. I Brilliant. can't believe they're going to use that. Brilliant. <laughs> well, it fits anyway. There you go. Just the job. Right, come on, Fizz. Let's get off. You going? Yeah, we've done all we can here. It's up to the pair of you now. Oh, and remember, you've got to get your story straight. It's the fine details that matter. Bye-bye. See ya. Fancy a cup of tea? Yeah, go on. You can be mother. Thanks, Harry, love. Must have taken a right hammer in tonight on that horse, your bloke. Yeah. Unless, of course, he laid it off. No. Tommy stood the lot. So you'll be putting in for some overtime then, eh? Uh, I don't think so. I've seen enough of this place already. Yeah, well. Soon be home. <sighs> yeah, and I can't wait. So do you always wear a tie? Why? What do you think it's too formal? Mm, not necessarily. So what, what do, you, do you think I'm uptight, eh? Maybe just a little. Mm -hmm. Well, that's probably because of all those years before the mast. No. Conning Tower. Sorry. Mm. I'd like to have seen you in uniform. Oh, well, play your cards right. Might even bring it round for you. You'd have to want to see me again to do that. Oh, yeah? And I'd have to want to see you. So do you want to see me? No. <laughs> yes, <laughs> very much. Very funny. But no strings, no expectations, no big declarations. Just fun, yeah? Yeah, sure. It's just fun. Oh, all gone. <laughs> Another bottle. I'm all right, actually. What on earth are you doing? I'm washing up. Now, darling, I didn't get you around here to wash up. Yeah, well, you didn't used to mind. Well, I'd rather we were drinking champagne. <laughs> OK. I really enjoyed tonight. Yeah. Yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. We used to be so good together. You think we'd get those times back again? I'd like to think we could. Really? Yeah. Good. That's just what I wanted to hear. No, Dev. I'm sorry. I think I better go. No, don't, please. It was stupid of me. Uh, it was stupid. I didn't mean to be offensive. No, I know, I know. It's all right. I just think it's a bit soon, that's yeah, all. Yeah, darling, and I understand. I understand, OK? Uh, and I just want you to stay, have another drink. I've been so looking forward to this. Oh, Dev. No, I swear it won't happen again. Yeah, I know. No, and you believe me, don't you? Yeah, I just still prefer to go. Can we call me cab? No, there's no need for that. I mean, I'll, I'll run you home. Dev, you've been drinking. Please, just call me a cab. <sighs> right. You've got the story, yeah? Yeah. Will you stop looking at that television? Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Look, this is crackers. I'm off to bed. I'll be up in a minute, love. Hey? Well, you're in with me now, aren't you? I hope you're joking. There's no point in going to your room anyway. He's not in it. Why? Tyre and Fizz moved all your stuff into my room to make it look more convincing. Well, I'll sleep on the sofa then. Oh, sorry, I'm watching telly. Well, you'll have to switch off then, won't you? You don't want to go to sleep. And I want to watch telly. Oh, come on, let's be fair. Look at us. Anyone would think we were man and wife the way we're going on. Yeah, well, we're not, so don't get any ideas. Don't you worry, love. You're not my type. Oh, yeah. You all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine, yeah. So... What happened? Did he manage to get Dev to drop the charges? It's not just going to happen like that, Joe. I mean, we're going to play this one by ear. I mean, I start going on about dropping charges and he's going to smell the rat in it. Yeah. Yeah, I know, you're right. So, um, what did he do then? Well, we went for a few drinks and then we got a takeaway and went back to his flat. And then, then he made a pass at me. A pass? Well, that's good. It means you were convincing. Yeah, well, it didn't feel good at the time. In fact, it was horrible. I mean, I'm lying to him. <laughs> I know, I know. Look, I'm sorry. I... I'm sorry you haven't to go through all this. You don't get it, do you? You just don't understand what it's like. Gina, love, I don't like this any more than you do, you know? I mean, I don't like seeing my girlfriend with another bloke. I need to know. 
How far are you prepared for me to go? How do you mean? I mean, how convincing do you want me to make it? <laughs> as convincing as you have to be, I suppose. So what are you saying? You want me to go the whole way? No, no, of course not. But, I mean, he's got to believe that you and me are split up for good, hasn't he? And that you want to get back with him. So all the way, then? Do you know that? I can't ask you to do that. But that is what you're saying, isn't it? I can't go back inside. <laughs> It'd kill me. Yeah, no. Hiya. You're home early. I thought you were going on to the casino. Nah, the others went. To be honest, I didn't fancy it, you know, not after your, your phone call. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I didn't mean to ruin your evening. Oh, you didn't? No, I, uh, I enjoyed it. Oh. Well, it's nice to see you anyway. And you. You're, um, not too tired, I hope. Not too tired for what? I don't know what you mean. I think you do. Hey, look, love, let me just grab a quick shower. No, no, don't have a shower. Just come to bed. Look, come on, look, I've been bowling. Oh, well, all right, then. Don't be too long. No, it'll be two minutes. <laughs> oh. Peter. Yes, love? I do love you, you know. Yeah. I love you too. 